Hi guys, I want to invite you to join the Patreon where you will get some benefits as well as audiobooks that will not be uploaded on YouTube. Chapter 1 In a small, dark room, a dozen children slept on a three-tiered bunk bed. All the kids were between 11 and 13 years old. As war orphans from the battle against demons, they all felt like family. They huddled close to each other, but none slept soundly, to the point where they couldn't even take their hands out from under the sheets. They've finally fallen asleep. A candlelight suddenly flickered to life on the wall to the left of the bunk bed. The boy pretending to sleep on the far left was completely dazzled by the candlelight. He huddled under the quilt in frustration and kicked the boy on the right. Ouch! The boy who received the kick furrowed his brows and, in his dreams, kicked back at the boy on the left. This led to a series of kicks throughout the top bunk, with each child returning kicks until one particular boy who had started it all opened his eyes. Well, it seems not everyone is asleep. Damien muttered quietly. He rubbed his knees, which had been kicked from different directions, and sat up on the bed for a few moments to fully wake up. Damian, hurry up, or that old man will pluck out your eyes and sell them at an auction. A sleeping child murmured these words upon sensing a slight movement on the bed. Upon hearing these words, Damian took a black band tied to his hand and wrapped it around his special eyes, as he had observed for some time. The wound on his forehead, still open, sent slight stings of pain, ultimately dispelling his drowsiness completely. He quickly jumped out of bed, put on the servant uniform hanging on the wall, opened the cabin door, and hurried out to a place where trees that seemed to reach the sky surrounded him. Close to the servant's cabin was a long, curved hallway with wooden flooring. Further ahead, there was a door every few meters on both sides of the hallway. Under the wooden structure connecting to a huge old wooden house, there was a corridor lined with walls where a chandelier did its best to dispel the coldness. Damian, noticing a bit more light, looked over his left shoulder at a slightly glowing silhouette. At that point on his body, there was a strange hardcover book the size of his palm. Hasn't this strange thing disappeared from around me yet? Maybe it's not just my hallucination, and it has truly cursed me for cleaning that old wizard's things. Damian shook his head, feeling increasingly depressed. All these events, which some might consider magical, had started since he traveled to a parallel world a few days ago. The book had been floating around his shoulder since he was tasked with cleaning the old wizard's books, who lived in that tower like many others. Damian had asked the other children if they could see the book, but it was invisible and intangible to them. Like any fantasy book, Damian sought help and consulted his imagination for an assistant, a god who could stand by his side, an angel, something called a system or a chip. But he received no response and ultimately could only attribute the existence of something magical as a hallucination caused by the wound on his head when he woke up in this place. Damian had assumed that the reason he woke up in the small body of an eleven-year-old boy was that this child died from the fall and the blow to his head. Awakening in this place and taking the life of an unfortunate orphan who lost his family at the hands of a demon like the rest of the children in this place. When he discovered the book on his shoulder, he thought it was a curse or hallucination, but now the hallucination shouldn't last so many days without disappearing, and the curse should somehow cause him noticeable harm, shouldn't it? But now, regardless of whether it was an illusion or not, Damian had his own things to do and no time to study or speculate all the time. The place where he found himself is a tower of wizards. Since he traveled to this parallel fantasy world, Damien has never left this tower. Additionally, as a servant here who had been rescued from the war, he woke up around four in the morning every day and mopped the floors of the corridors from the eleventh to the thirteenth floor. There should be no obvious dust or garbage stains left otherwise, his body would be cut up and used as fertilizer for flowers, as the ugly old man of this place, better known as the housekeeper, said. The task of cleaning the corridor must be completed before the candlelight changes from a dim yellow to a bright white flame. Otherwise, if that ugly old man notices him or any of the wizard apprentices in this tower, they might hit him or use him as an experiment for their terrible spells. All those wizard apprentices looked strange, had very bad tempers, and were, most of the time, very impatient, as if death were chasing them every day. 
The owner of the body Damian was in was killed by a wizard apprentice who was practicing a wind spell. Damian's body was thrown from a tremendous height and was almost discarded as trash when it didn't react. Fortunately, he had woken up, and the moment he left the service room with his face still stained with blood, even the old man who was the guard at the tower entrance thought he would die in the coming days. But after confirming that he was still alive, the housekeeper immediately assigned him a job, and Damian was sent to work before he had time to recover from his injuries, and that happened until today. After remembering what he had to do, Damian first went to the service room next to the guard's room to fetch a mop, a bucket of water, and a trash can. He placed them on a small cart table and pushed them forward. It is said that these wheels have been enchanted with a mute spell to avoid bothering the extremely irritable wizard apprentices. Damien had carefully observed the patterns two days ago but found nothing except a slight headache. As for the bandage over his eyes, which was special to enable him to see even with his eyes covered due to his special light blue pupils. He had received certain memories that a wizard apprentice was annoyed by his eyes because they reminded him of the sky, so he gave him this black bandage to cover them up. Of course, Damien now believed that these wizard apprentices were more than just spoiled idiots. Yawning, he walked towards his new day of work in the beautiful, dark morning. Arriving at the place, which was a semicircular hallway, Damien noticed the numerous doors every few meters on the left and right sides. There were numbers that Damien concluded were Roman numerals on the doors of the rooms, and he didn't know what function they served. The body Damien had awakened in was considered illiterate, but after a few days of exploring the new things in this world, he began to regain some common sense and broken memories belonging to this body. While cleaning the eleventh floor, Damien heard crying behind a door. Every time there was crying, the candles on both sides of the door would sway gently, making the shadows larger, which gave an eerie feeling. Damien tightened his grip on the mop handle, and that cold shiver woke up all his drowsiness. He quickly pretended not to know anything about what was happening, as if he hadn't heard anything, and quickly finished mopping the floor. There's a weird bug on the twelfth floor who likes to throw trash outside his door. Hairs, torn papers, unknown pieces of meat. Damien, who had received memories and been doing this same job for five days, had grown accustomed to cleaning up these strange things. After a while, he gathered all the trash with the small shovel hanging from the side of the trash can, and when he turned around to take out the trash, he heard a faint creak. He quickly turned around and saw that the door behind him had a crack, but nothing could be seen in the darkness behind the door. Damien immediately felt every hair on his body stand on end his hands trembled slightly, and he wanted to flee, but he also feared that the wizard apprentice in the room might think he was being rude. He had only traveled through this strange and terrifying place for a few days, and what he was taught most was to maintain the utmost respect and humility towards all wizard apprentices. Damien was now just an eleven-year-old child without skills and with a small body. The powerful wizard apprentice could kill him with just a few movements of his hands. As for the wizard, well, given his condition, he still couldn't even see him very often. Damien waited in fear for a while. There was no movement behind the door. Time was running out, so he remained vigilant about what was behind the door, mopping the floor while closely watching the crack in the door. Finally, the door had closed again. Damien's tense shoulders relaxed slightly, and the cart table, pushed by his arms, descended to the tenth floor. As someone who is twenty years older than an eleven-year-old child, Damien is much more sensitive to things around him. Even if you are originally very rough or careless, when you arrive in a strange world where wizards and demons exist, you will choose to be more careful. It is said that the last servant in charge of cleaning died on the tenth floor. Damien also cleaned this place two days ago and found nothing unusual, but this floor in particular still made him feel uncomfortable. That kind of fear that, even though nothing happened, still made his hair stand on end and his fingers couldn't help but tremble slightly. Damien lowered his head and dragged the cart table with force, using physical work to dispel the unease in his heart. However, what he feared most happened. As he passed the third door, Damien's front right door suddenly saw a bright red puddle of blood seeping out from underneath. The blood was bright red, thick, and had a strong rotten smell. At first glance, it didn't seem good. The blood flowed to the center of the floor and finally stopped spreading. According to the butler's request, 
Damien must clean up any obvious mess. He tightened the mop in his hand, clenched his teeth, and prepared to take a step forward. At that moment, the hardcover book on his left shoulder suddenly flew towards his chest and opened with a bang. Damien froze it was the first time this book had interacted with him in this way. He was amazed. Did this book sense that he was in a life-threatening crisis and take the initiative to help him? Damien looked at the blood on the floor with his peripheral vision, focusing most of his attention on the book. The black book froze on a blank page, and a few lines of words quickly appeared. Era calendar of the great mage flam, unknown year of the silver moon. When you were cleaning the tenth floor of the wizard tower, you saw a puddle of blood coming out through the closed door. Although you are afraid of dying and being turned into fertilizer, you erase that fear from your heart and move forward to clean the blood. But the floor is very difficult to clean, and you wonder why it's so hard to clean the blood off the floor. You looked down and realized that the blood was continuously coming out. You tried to keep cleaning the blood, but without realizing that the blood was toxic, you lost consciousness. The next day, you are found dead in the wizard tower's trash room. Damien's legs softened, and he almost fell to his knees on the blood. He leaned on a mop and looked at the puddle of blood with persistent fear. It turns out that this book is like my guardian angel warning me of a death crisis. In this terrifying and gloomy place, before I find a practical way out of here, it's really a very practical tool. Damien never thought that this book floating next to him would have such practical methods. What value would this object have in the hands of wizards? Damien carefully pushed the cart, trying to avoid the blood at that moment, the hardcover book in front of him changed again. As you were afraid of blood and the unknown, you decided not to clean the floor. In the morning, the housekeeper called you because the floor was dirty. That same day, new fertilizer was added for the greenhouse flowers, and you will complain about your bad luck. Damien, who was about to leave this floor, froze, looked at the blood-covered floor, then at the book beside him, and realized that no matter what he did, he would die in terrible suffering. So, what the hell does this useless book need? Chapter 2 Make Your Choice Damien stood there like a fool, staring at the words this old book had given him as a warning of what he was about to do not in one, but in every valid option that led to his death. He was pondering, but he didn't have much time to think about what he could do because time was running out. The morning was about to come, and before the candlelight turned into white light, Damien had to return to the first floor. If he left now, Damien knew he would become flower fertilizer by the next day. Was cleaning up the continuous blood that spilled beneath the door an option? The blood kept pooling as if whatever was releasing that blood had numerous liters on its body. Was asking for help an option? The children sleeping with Damien were afraid of his different eyes they all seemed hostile toward him, so no one would come to help him. Besides, both those children and Damien were common orphans no one had the capability to assist him. Was finding the housekeeper or the guard an option? The guard never moved from the door of this wizard tower, and as for the housekeeper, she never appeared in the morning, and Damien didn't know where to look for her. All the allowed activity areas for him were from the 10th to the 13th floor, besides the lower floors. But there was no way out of his situation. Damien now tried to calm down his breathing softened, and all the fear left his chest. Fuck this it's not like I can do anything else. Damien put the mop back on the cart table and straightened his messy clothes. He walked to the door at the other end and knocked three times in a row. In the silent hallway, these three knocks were very clear. There was calmness in his face, and despite being nervous due to the circumstances because of his age, he showed nothing more than that. Just as Damien raised his hand to knock three more times, the door in front of him opened slowly. Damien held his breath for a moment. A slim figure appeared from behind. It was a woman, dressed in a black nightgown, with a plump but not obese figure, and the skin exposed outside the clothes was very fair. Damien wasn't in the mood to pay attention to silly scenes, especially when he was about to die, so he concentrated his thoughts on what he had to do. All he felt was fear, but despite the chances of certain death, he didn't allow himself to show any emotion on his face. Still, even though he had no expression on his face, his teeth trembled slightly, and his face, which should have been normal, had a certain condition as if it were rotten. 
Over his rotten area, she had some strange apertus a truly strange thing that Damien couldn't explain in simple words. What's wrong? The woman's red lips were slightly parted, and her voice was quite pleasant. Miss Damien's voice was very abnormal. He took a deep breath to calm his impression and said, there's a huge pool of blood constantly flowing from the room across. No matter how much I clean it, the blood keeps coming out, and it's about to dawn, but if I don't finish cleaning this floor by then, they'll turn me into fertilizer. The woman looked at the blindfolded and black-haired boy, then glanced at the blood in the front room and smiled strangely. Then she looked at Damien once more and asked, why should I save you? Damien obviously wouldn't know such kind and helpful people in this place. Miss, what do you need me to do? I can do anything you need life is so beautiful, so I don't want to leave without doing something meaningful. Damien was an orphan, a servant, and a child who could be replaced by others who would be more than willing to take his place in this tower, so he wasn't qualified to impose conditions. The woman held his chin with her thin fingers and said, I need a live experimental subject, but I haven't earned enough credits recently to request one. If you volunteer to be my experimental subject, I'll help you solve that problem. Damien narrowed his eyes behind his black blindfold he turned his head to his black book flying to his left. Seeing that it showed nothing, he breathed even more relief. Damien was very weak right now, so he could only trust the black book floating by his side to survive without it, he would blindly bet on death. I'll do it. The woman raised her red lips, very satisfied with Damien's decision. A few seconds later, she turned aside to let Damien enter her room, then she left and did something unknown. Damien was now in the woman's room. He found that this place was much larger than the room where a dozen children like him lived, and it was also quite diverse in terms of uses. As far as Damien could see, there was an oil lamp lit in the room, very bright and steady on the ceiling. It should also have a magical effect that makes the whole room very warm. On the long table in the middle of the room, there were many accessories and materials that he didn't recognize at all. The most striking thing was the crucible on a small stove in the middle, with a pot of black liquid bubbling in it. Have you seen it? That's exactly what you'll help me with. The woman with the rotten face entered the room at some point. Damien looked back and saw that the door was closed. He didn't know if the blood puddle outside had been solved, but he also didn't need to know because first, he needed to survive this to tell the tale. I need you to put your hand into the crucible, take it out, and tell me how you feel. The woman pulled a chair from the corner and placed it on the opposite side, where she leaned back, crossing her legs, waiting for Damien to take the initiative to do his part of the deal. Damien knew he had no negotiating power, so he simply didn't waste time begging for mercy, rolled up his non-dominant sleeve, which was his left, and plunged it directly into the bubbling black liquid. He didn't dip his finger first for fear of causing the woman's displeasure. Ow Damien took a deep breath, thinking that his hand would burn in the next moment. But it wasn't burned at least he didn't feel the burning sensation instead, what he felt was an intense cold. A chilling cold spread along his arm. Damien was so cold that he started trembling. You can take it out now. Upon hearing the woman's voice, Damien quickly withdrew his hand, fearing that the longer it stayed in contact with that liquid, the worse the consequences would be. But when he saw his hand, the breath he had just exhaled due to relaxation was sucked back in due to shock. All the skin and flesh of his left hand had disappeared. All that remained of Damien's left hand was a skeletal hand, as clean as a mannequin in an art room. The most terrifying thing was that Damien felt no pain at this moment. Hoo hoo. Damien continued panting due to the lack of air, holding his left wrist with his right hand while both hands trembled together. And when his left hand trembled, it made the sound of bones rubbing against each other. The woman in front didn't comfort the fear in the child's eyes. She stood up and looked at this result with an indifferent gaze. The new wolf has good gastric juice. Tell me, how does your hand feel right now? Very cold but it doesn't hurt. Damien endured the fear and cold, giving the best explained answer to the crazy which next to him. It also seems that I can control it. As he said that, he moved the fingers of his left hand. It's a bit difficult, but it works. Not bad at all. The woman smiled, apparently satisfied with the answer Damien had given her. 
She searched and then picked up some elements from the materials on the table in the middle of the room and threw them into the crucible casually. The crucible emitted two rays of white vapor and then returned to the silent state it had just been bubbling into. That seemed to work well. The woman leaned back in the chair again, lifted her chin toward Damien with interest, and pointed to the crucible. Now put the other hand in. Damien nearly peed himself upon hearing that, but he knew he would be asked to put the other hand in again obviously, the first attempt had been a failure. Repeating the process was natural, but still, Damien wanted to think that it wouldn't happen because of the same reason he had used his non-dominant hand. But now that he had been asked, Damien, without any expression, lowered his left hand and then placed his right hand over the crucible. Ah, uh, Damien suddenly felt like his whole arm was frozen. His right hand, buried in the black liquid, felt nothing. That will do. Upon hearing the woman's voice, Damien immediately withdrew his right hand. What was reassuring was that, after all, this time it wasn't a skeletal hand that was shown. Not only that, his palms, which were originally covered in scars and calluses from the work he had been doing for a long time, also became soft again and returned to their natural white color. Without waiting for the woman to ask what he had felt, Damien said, hey, the sensation this time was even colder. Damien tried to stop his teeth from chattering but couldn't. It doesn't hurt. I can manipulate it perfectly. As if to prove this, Damien stretched out his fingers and lifted them so that the woman in front could see them clearly. The woman smiled again, this time obviously happier, and Damien could see this woman's white teeth. You really surprised me. The woman stood up and even clapped twice. She walked to the other side of the room, took a glass bottle from the cabinet, and handed it to Damien, who was still trembling. Drink it. Seeing Damien's somber expression, she mocked how this child tried to appear more serious in a situation where he clearly felt fear. Don't worry, this is not a test it's a potion that will help you recover. Chapter 3 Damien extended his trembling right hand to receive this potion of a strange color. It's just that his right hand was extremely stiff, and his left hand was unusable because only bones remained. Upon seeing this, the woman didn't hand the glass bottle to Damien instead, she uncorked it herself and handed it over. Damien, amidst fear and nervousness, raised his head rigidly to take the medicine. Regardless of the situation, Damien discovered that it felt incredible for a woman to give him medicine. Well, in this case, it would be a somewhat beautiful woman this wouldn't be a complete blessing. But that potion is truly useful. After consuming all the liquid from the potion, Damien immediately felt a cold stream flowing from his throat to his stomach moments later, his trembling ceased, and his hands gradually regained mobility. Shortly after, his right hand felt warm, and his entire body slowly recovered. He felt an itch on his forehead. Damien raised his hand, touched his wound, and discovered that all his old wounds had disappeared. But if something was wrong, it was that only his left hand remained bony and showed no signs of recovery. I'm afraid your left hand won't be able to recover with your current physique, the woman said, placing the glass bottle casually on the table and saying, of course, this would change unless you become an apprentice mage. Damien smiled bitterly. Miss, I'm just a simple servant. A servant, that's interesting. How about this? The woman smiled strangely and said, if you're interested, I have an opportunity that could change your life. Of course, it depends solely on you whether you dare to participate or not. Is that what I think? Damien's eyes behind his black bandage gleamed with traces of surprise. Yes, a test to become a mage. Damien nodded. I would be willing to do anything maybe if I have talent, I could become a mage. Oh, he he he. The woman wasn't surprised by Damien's choice as a living subject for the experiment it could be seen that he had good willpower and courage, and although he was also afraid, he could maintain some calmness. These are the qualities an apprentice mage should have. Damien waited for the woman to finish laughing before continuing to ask, Miss, if you help me become an apprentice mage, how much will it cost me? What value do you have to be an apprentice mage? The woman's tone suddenly changed again. Damien was startled but gradually calmed his excitement. After working as a servant in this place for a few days, he couldn't wait to rid himself of this lowly identity. 
That's why he was so excited at the moment and even wanted the other party to set conditions immediately. But the woman's rhetorical question immediately made him calm down again. Currently, he has no value for the other party to give him a trial spot. Damien fell silent, but he didn't give up on becoming an apprentice mage. He believed that the woman in front of him wouldn't mention the trial opportunity just to mock him. He had to wait for the other person to make the offer. Do you really want to become an apprentice mage? The woman asked again. Even if the outcome is to end up like me. Her upper body suddenly leaned forward the cover over her decaying skin swayed from side to side and her eyes showed a deep coldness that made Damien understand what she had endured so far to be where she was. Damien occasionally encountered apprentice mages, but none seemed as terrifying as this woman. But only she had asked him that question. I think I do. Facing the woman who was so close to him, Damien replied softly but firmly. Rather than worrying about becoming fertilizer for flowers at any time, it's better to die in search of strength to be able to live freely in this ever-expanding world. All right. The woman nodded, showing a certain degree of satisfaction. In the next two days, a new group of apprentices will be sent for a trial. As expected, seven or eight of them must have died on the way as usual only a few of them. Thank you, miss. Call me Sindra. I'm a second-class mage, Sindra. If you can pass the trial to become a mage, remember who gave you that opportunity. Understood, master. My name is. It's not necessary. Sindra interrupted him suddenly and said, wait until you become an apprentice mage, and then you can tell me your name. Damien fell silent. Before becoming an apprentice mage to Sindra, he was just a servant who didn't even deserve a name. This would be something very realistic to consider. But in the mage tower, at least here, identity always comes with strength. Damien walked out of Sindra's room, and the door quietly closed in front of him. As he turned around, the blood from the opposite side had disappeared he didn't know how Sindra did it, but she had saved his life. The candlelight on the wall was almost bright yellow. Damien quickly scanned the corridor for spots that needed cleaning. There was nothing dirty on the surface. He didn't have time to keep cleaning as long as there was no noticeable garbage, the housekeeper wouldn't wear white gloves to touch the floor in search of dirt. Damien turned around and pushed the cart as fast as he could, finally running to the fourth floor hallway before the candlelight turned white. Breathing heavily, he returned the items to the utility room and took out the trash. I finally finished before the steward checked. Damien unconsciously wiped the sweat from his forehead with the back of his left hand, but the hard bones scraped his skin. I still don't feel any pain or even touch in my left hand. Damien moved the fingers of his left hand, and as he felt that strange sensation, more movement came. But I can move freely. Is this the power of some curse? After accepting that his left hand might permanently turn into bone, the power contained within it fascinated Damien. He looked again at his right hand although it only appeared thinner on the outside, Damien could feel the hidden power within. He picked a random stone from the trash bin in the utility room, gently squeezed it, and the stone broke into several pieces. The right hand should be the result of a successful experiment. The grip strength is very strong, much superior to that of common adult men. I think the grip strength of the so-called warriors and knights of this world is nothing more than this. By just adding a few more ingredients, the potion's effect was so different from one end to the other that Damien got many ideas that he could take from it to make changes. Damien once again strengthened his belief in becoming an apprentice mage. With this thought in mind, he left the utility room, walked to the bedroom door where he rested, and pushed the door to open it slightly. As he was still looking at his hands, he opened the door very slowly. At that moment, there was a discussion from behind the door, which made Damien stop. That guy, Damien, hasn't returned yet. It seems like this time he's really dead. Poor Damien, it's not easy living being the focus of many magical apprentices even his eyes bother some stronger mages. Hmm, now that he's dead, we have to take his place, and we must seize that opportunity. If we impress a mage or an apprentice mage, maybe we can learn magic at some point in our lives. There was silence in the room. And Damien, who was no child at all, frowned deeply. 
Did it turn out that these orphan children were more hungry than Piranhas? Did these children in the same conditions as him just wait for his death to take his job? After a while, someone spoke again in the room. If you think about it this way, it's better to leave Damien alone. Remember, he's lost most of his memories. What can he do to us now? We can start making him listen he'll die sooner or later if he hasn't already. Besides, if something happens to him, we must take turns cleaning up that's everyone's job. What? We've always asked Damien to clean the corridor, right? Hasn't the housekeeper or the steward said anything yet? Starting tomorrow, we should start working so as not to cause trouble. Again, are you afraid of Damien? He was the first to arrive at this place, but now that he doesn't remember anything, he should be the one doing everything as our most experienced companion. If he disagrees, beat him until he agrees. Everyone seemed to believe that Damien was dead and started making arrangements for the next unfortunate person who would take his place. Boom! At that moment, the door was kicked open. Starting tomorrow. Damien looked at the boys in the room and said, the task of cleaning the halls will have to be done in shifts. Some people were surprised by Damien's appearance, while others showed a fierce smile after being delighted. The boy who smiled was named Marcus he was the strongest and largest among the boys, and it was said that he used to be a noble, so he believed he should be privileged in some way. But in Damien's eyes, he was just a brat who knew nothing about life. Now, a little boy dared to disobey his orders. Marcus pressed his joints and promised to let Damien know what the rules were. Marcus approached and raised his fist without saying a word. Pum! However, Marcus's fist was blocked by Damien with his right hand. Damn brat! Marcus didn't expect Damien to react so quickly he thought of retracting his hand to attack again. But as soon as he wanted to make a move, he found that his hand was firmly gripped. How could he imagine that an eleven-year-old boy would have so much strength? He was obviously very thin, looked sickly, and his body was very small, so Marcus believed it wouldn't be a problem to bother him a little. But obviously, Damien's changes were noticeable due to that strange potion he had taken. Playing a little with kids should be very good for their growth, so he exerted more force in his grip. Crack. A. A. Uh. Marcus immediately fell to his knees in pain. When Damien let go of his hand, Marcus immediately moved back and forth on the floor while holding his hand. Chapter 4 The power lies in calcium. You broke my hand. Damien furrowed his brows and said, Don't be overdramatic get up. All the children in the room looked at Damien in surprise silence instantly took over the surroundings. But soon, the children glanced at each other and retreated to the corners of the room. However, there were a few children who sided with Marcus because he had promised them many good things, so innocence played a significant role in these children's choices. Damien, it seems you've recovered. The first child raised his trembling hand and searched the floor for something to hit Damien with. But now, for hitting our friend, you must face the consequences. Damien didn't know what kind of drama this was. Shouldn't normal children be scared immediately after seeing someone hit their friend? Clearly, there was a mental issue with these children none of them seemed like orphans who had lost their parents. But remembering that everyone here competes for supremacy, Damien extended his bony left hand and threw a punch that landed directly in the center of a wooden bench that had been taken as a weapon to attack him. The wooden bench shattered with a loud crash, and debris fell on the face of the child, who bravely took the initiative to attack. But at that moment, the kids suddenly froze none of them had intentions to attack anymore. Everyone fell silent, their faces no longer filled with surprise but with horror. Even Marcus, who had fallen to the ground while groaning, looked at Damien's left hand in shock and unconsciously backed away. Damien's skeletal hand couldn't be hidden. The servants didn't wear gloves and did a lot of daily work, so it was impossible to hide his left hand forever. Damien wouldn't waste energy hiding this new appearance of his left hand, thus surprising everyone while not highlighting the strength he had just displayed. Are you cursed? Unexpectedly, the first thing everyone thought of was a curse. Is this curse contagious? Come on, run and find the butler. Damien didn't bother to explain he looked at Marcus and, with a mischievous smile, suddenly extended his left hand to touch him. Ah! 
Marcus was so scared that he didn't even care about the wound on his left hand he rolled and crawled backward. Damien waved his left hand again in front of everyone. The group of children was also so scared that they screamed and retreated. Only at this moment did Damien feel very childish, but it was fun in its own way, so things like his own thoughts didn't matter to him. Starting tomorrow, I won't clean the hallway anymore. No one in the room dared to refute. You take turns. After saying that, Damien pointed at Marcus with his skeletal index finger and said, you'll be first. Marcus's expression suddenly changed. Butler, that's him. He didn't report the curse. A child's voice came from behind. Damien turned around and saw another boy who always laughed at him entering with a middle-aged man in a black uniform. The butler showed no fear when he saw Damien's hand waving at everyone while making a certain expression with his middle finger raised towards the other children. But obviously, the butler showed no signs of disinterest and said, come quickly. Damien looked at the informer and followed the butler in silence. The two arrived at the washroom. Tell me about it. The butler was not a childish child being the one to resolve any issues that might arise in this place, he had much more knowledge than anyone else and knew he should listen to all explanations before making a decision based on the information obtained. I participated as a test subject for an experiment for the mage Syndra, a second-class mage. The butler was surprised. Were you willing to do something like that? Damien was confused don't they serve as fertilizer for plants if they can't complete their work correctly? Ahem. The butler coughed twice, I mean, did Miss Sindra pay you? If not, you can request compensation from me. After all, servants are special assets and protected by the Tower Lord even her apprentices don't have the right to touch you at will. Damien couldn't believe what the butler was saying and gave him a suspicious look. Before Damien traveled to this magical world, a mage apprentice killed him with a spell that sent him flying into the sky. But after his death, now that he had awakened in this body, he didn't want to ask for explanations for fear of being killed or discarded like garbage. Therefore, Damien thought this butler was investigating whether he and Sindra had some kind of deeper friendship. In that sense, Damien said calmly, I'm not interested in claiming it I like to be helpful. Seeing the butler's expression change slightly, he continued, Miss Sindra and I have received clear adjustments, so there are no complaints. The butler's expression changed again. When he heard what had happened, he forced a smile. Ah, ha, ha, well, since you. Then I won't mind too much. You can go back. You don't have to work for these two days, so you can rest well. Damien bowed respectfully and said, I appreciate your grace, Mr. Butler. After saying that, he pushed the door and saw the group of children huddled at the dormitory door, listening to what he and the butler were talking about. Damien approached, and the kids immediately retreated into the room. You! Damien pointed at the boy who had tattled, it's your turn the day after tomorrow. The other person's face was as white as Marcus's. For the next two days, Damien lived a fairly comfortable life. No one assigned him work, and he could wander through most areas from the fourth to the first floor. No one dared to speak to him, so he finally could fill his stomach with large amounts of food and, for some reason, felt much stronger. He felt that his body was growing at great speed his arms showed muscles, which was very strange because he was only eleven years old. But from what he could tell, his bones were becoming stronger. Even the butler sent him a medicine bottle, mentioning that it would heal his head wound. But that medicine was unnecessary. Even the scar on his face had disappeared. However, Damien accepted the medicine with respect and thanked the butler repeatedly for his kindness. Everything he enjoys now comes from everyone's speculation about his relationship with Sindra, who is rumored to be a first-class mage but, for some reason, hides her strength. As for him, if he can't become a mage apprentice, all will be in vain, and eventually he will return to his original form as a servant. What he had seen was that Sindra was very mysterious just the potion Damien experimented with began to bring many changes to his body. Not only was he heavier, but his strength had also increased significantly. What kind of dark potion was that? Damien couldn't know he even realized that Sindra wasn't interested in knowing his name. Without becoming a mage apprentice, there's no qualification to get excited about the privileges he has now, 
and he knows that scaring weak children is not enough because there are much more terrifying things outside that can bury his body with just one breath. On the third day, something happened. The boy who went to clean the hallway early that morning did not return. In the end, the butler brought his body some time later, and many who saw him being taken to the flower garden spread rumors. A child eagerly gave Damien a vivid description, saying that the whole head of the dead servant had turned into a flower. The skull is used as wood, while the flesh, skin, and liquid serve as fertilizer for the flowers to grow. After the butler brought the body, he delivered it directly to the garbage house for disposal. Blood was dripping on the floor, and he even called Damien, who was resting, to help scrub the floor. Damien and a group of children kneeled down and vigorously cleaned the blood-stained floor. None of the mage apprentices passing by paid attention. They are all a group of young mages who are always in a hurry and don't care at all about the death of a servant. Damien even saw the woman whom he addressed as Miss Out of Respect, although she is probably over thirty years old, pass by without paying attention to her surroundings. After returning, the butler returned. I think you've rested enough. You'll start working normally tomorrow. Understood. Damien agreed without any problems. Someone whispered behind him. Obviously, someone interested noticed this interaction between Damien and Sindra. Some thought Damien had lied about his conversation with her and especially about participating in an experiment that left his hand skeletal. Seeing Damien agreeing so happily, the butler nodded. But at that moment, someone even older than the butler who was in charge of the mage tower arrived, and at that moment, the butler himself greeted that elderly person and said, Master Butler, what brings you here? The elderly person ignored the butler's attention and only told Damien with a cold face, Are you Damien? Damien had realized that the opportunity Sindra had mentioned had arrived. He secretly clenched his hands, hidden in his sleeves. Yes, sir. Then follow me. The butler turned around and left, not paying attention to the butler's words throughout the time. Damien walked beside the elderly person, bowed to the butler behind him, and followed the path. As far as one could see, besides the mage tower, there were other buildings where fruits, vegetables, and animals were cultivated. Ordinary people whose villages had been attacked by demons worked there, so for them, serving mages and maintaining their protection was the best opportunity. In addition to those places, there were also completely uninhabited resting areas because the mages here who are apprentices of the mage tower lord are all enclosed only young apprentices who are titled mages could be seen. Damien silently followed the elderly person, and soon, passing through an open field, they arrived at the tower, climbing up to the sixth floor. Most of the people living on the sixth to ninth floors are young mage apprentices, and there are also higher level apprentices who have advanced but are unwilling to move. Normally, there are very few people in the mage tower, but today the hallway was crowded. They were all neatly dressed teenage children, but none of these children had the innocence of normal children they all seemed pale and scared. Go and stand at the back. The elderly person led Damien to the back of the line, calmly pointing out the place while looking around. Yes. Damien knew it was about the newly admitted mage apprentice he suppressed the excitement in his heart, walked slowly, and stood silently behind the group. When the person behind him heard the noise, he turned alert and looked at Damien, first confused and then showing some anger. Damien didn't know why he had that expression, but he returned the gaze, showing confusion behind his blindfolded eyes. After living with these kids for a few days, Damien finally understood. This world is different from his, if you are harmonious and friendly, you will only be considered weak and can be bullied. If that's the case, then Damien could toughen up too. After all, like the others, he is also competing for glory in this mage tower. Chapter 5 Next A deep voice called from the front of the group. The boy in front of Damien gave him one last look before turning away. Despite having his eyes blindfolded, Damien showed his enraged teeth at this idiotic boy, who had just come out of his shell and was trying to act tough in front of him. As Damien looked around, he noticed that the line he was in was moving forward, allowing him to catch glimpses of the people ahead. Two individuals were seated at a table with various items on it that were too far away to discern clearly. After some time, only five or six people remained in front of Damien, 
with three more individuals lined up behind him at some point. Like him, they probably came from a service background and were here to make up the numbers. What a waste of my time. This boy has no magical talent and very little mental strength. Utterly useless, worthless. How was he even chosen? Suddenly, a young man in charge of the evaluation loudly exclaimed. Damien quickly looked over and saw a chubby boy with a smile, squinting his eyes as he handed something to the complaining young man. My talent is average and can improve over time please be patient with me, Sir Mage. Not only were tower residents being evaluated, but also individuals from different parts of the continent, hence the presence of arrogant fools who didn't know their place. Unexpectedly, the obviously young apprentice mage extended his hand and took the coin pouch. Are you trying to bribe me with money? It seems that's what you've come here with, thinking you can manipulate the tower mages with your measly coins. The pampered boy, who had always been untouchable, froze. His current method didn't yield the expected results, and his smile turned stiff. This isn't what I meant, sir. He was about to argue further when he saw the young man suddenly flick something with his thumb. From Damien's angle, he couldn't see clearly, but it seemed to bounce off the boy's face or perhaps his mouth. Then, Damien witnessed a scene he would never forget. The boy's movement suddenly stiffened, and then his entire body melted into a puddle like a candle, with his facial features, hands, and feet still vaguely visible in the liquid. The man next to the young apprentice, mage, frowned in disgust. How filthy, repulsive. Wouldn't it be better to send him off as a servant? At least he would be of some use. Damien, who heard this, felt numb all over. He, too, was a mere servant. At that moment, the hardcover book that had been silent for several days suddenly flew into Damien's eyes and opened once more. Era Calendar of the Great Mage Flam, Year of the Unknown Moon, you have survived for three days. Congratulations. You have finally entered the ranks to become an apprentice mage. But have you forgotten how you became a servant? Could it be that you were once an apprentice aspirant but ended up as a servant? I hope you find the answer soon death might be closer than you expect. Damien followed the team forward rigidly again, hearing several uncomfortable whispers behind him. If he took the exam like this, he might not pass. Judging by the contents of the dark book, he probably didn't even have the talent to be a mage and would end up like a broken egg on the ground. Damien lowered his head and looked at his left hand, hidden under his sleeve. A left hand as pale as bone that could intimidate servants, even common housewives, certainly didn't intimidate apprentice mages. Which hand should he use? As soon as Damien thought of this, lines of text appeared beneath what had been written before. Which hand should you use? Due to that thought, there are two possibilities, if you use your left hand, you might create something astounding, but if you use the right, you will die at unknown hands. After finding the best path for you, you will become a successful apprentice mage, and fortunately, tonight you will die turned into a heap of bones. Damien furrowed his brows. Would he never get to see Syndra again? Fear once again filled Damien's heart. What did he need to do to pass the test? Even if Damien decided to give up now, all that awaited him was death. He didn't need a book to tell him that. Every step forward felt like approaching an abyss. And he was about to fall. Think fast think fast there must be another way. Damien's eyes were fixed on the approaching table, upon which were laid out the instruments used for the tests. He watched the testing process intently. Participants were to perform the tests one by one, from left to right. The first on the left was a black crystal ball used to measure magical power. Take a crystal ball and place it between your eyebrows. The more transparent it becomes, the greater your magical power. In the middle was a wooden doll, carved realistically a small doll but with eye holes and a dark interior. When the evaluator stares into the doll's eyes, it will start moving. The greater the movement, the better the mental score. The paint-dipped brush seemed to measure elemental affinities. Draw a circle on white paper, and the paint will automatically change color. Then, the young apprentice mage will report on two elements, and another man will record them. Damien nervously observed the testing processes of the two individuals. 
but Damien soon noticed that the people being evaluated all had pale expressions. After finishing the third test, they all staggered to the side, one of them seemingly on the verge of fainting. Perhaps, well, although he wasn't sure yet, now that he had a new plan and the book hadn't appeared. Damien reaffirmed his idea. At that moment, he no longer had the right to withdraw, so he could only push through this death barrier. There were fewer and fewer people in front of Damien. Finally, it was his turn. The young man, lazily leaning on the chair, was immediately surprised that Damien had his eyes blindfolded. What's going on? Damien thought as he grew increasingly nervous. Let's begin. The young apprentice mage elongated his voice and pointed to the black crystal ball on the left. Damien honestly reached out and took the brush used to test elemental affinity. Before the young mage spoke, he held the brush firmly in his right hand and quickly drew a shaky circle on the white paper. The circle he had just drawn was black. Damien withdrew the brush and waited with great anticipation. The young mage didn't seem very pleased, but he squinted and ultimately said nothing. The black circle slowly changed, various colors appearing the longest section was no more than the length of a pinky in still black. Other areas were indeed red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, gold, and white, all colors merging. When the apprentice mage looked at the result, he smirked a bit and muttered, I don't know if you're lucky or doomed to die. Damien heard him laughing at himself and lowered his head, feigning fear. Dark element, fire element, electricity, and others I can't identify. Another man beside him wrote on the paper, dark elements and clear class elements. Be more specific will be scolded if we make mistakes. Damien waited for them to finish speaking before picking up the doll, removing the blindfold from his eyes, and staring at the doll. In just an instant, he noticed a tremor growing in the doll's body. Fly, scream, or come to life I must be at least good at this. Damien felt a sudden dizziness, unsure if he was succeeding or failing utterly. That's enough you can stop. The deep voice of the apprentice mage reached his ears. But Damien didn't stop he was carried away by the sound he was perceiving through his ears. It's enough do you want to die? Damien jumped and looked away, staring at the doll that was shaking abnormally and then at the apprentice mage, who had an angry expression. Then, before the apprentice mage could say anything, the doll exploded into a thousand pieces, and Damien ended up fainting. Chapter 6 When did everything start to change? Damien didn't have an answer to that. Even for a while now, he hadn't had the chance to accept that he was in a completely strange world. It was said that demons were at war with humans, and preparations were underway for those who would fight against the demon king to bring peace to the world. If there was no peace in this world, how long would Damien remain alive? Better yet, when could he break free from the deathly chains that tightly surrounded him? I want to be a mage. Eh. Damien opened his eyes and sat up suddenly. Oh, he's finally moving. Is he awake now? A boy who was kneeling on the floor stood up and approached Damien. Zack. Damien recognized that it was Zack calling him the boy who slept in the bed on the right. Among all the boy's roommates, only Zack was friendly to Damien. Damien hadn't been in this world for a week, so he only had sporadic memories of who the original owner of this body was. But he still remembered Zack frequently telling him many things about what was happening in the tower, especially secrets that very few knew about. Out of fear of being bullied by other kids, Zack never dared to speak with Damien in front of others. Now, Zack showed a flattering smile and picked up a plate of soup from the side. Sir, are you hungry? Shall I serve you some food? Damien pushed away the soup Zack had handed him and asked instead, confused, No, I'm not hungry. What time is it now? How long have I been unconscious? Sir, you've been unconscious for about an hour. It's eight in the morning now. Well, a little past eight, not exactly eight, but still eight. Zack glanced at the clock on the wall and got confused with the two eights, barely able to tell the correct time. Damien followed Zack's line of sight and realized he was in an individual room. A one. Five meter wide wooden bed, two long desks, two high back chairs, and an empty bookshelf that took up an entire wall were all the major furnishings in the room. 
there's also a blue clock hanging on the wall. There's a scale on the blue clock, right now, the hands were right in between 8 and 9. Is this the mage apprentice's room? Did I pass the test? Damien felt a warm current rising from the bottom of his heart and slowly spreading throughout his body. Excited, anxious, and surviving the catastrophe, he showed a silly smile. He he he. Seeing Damien smile, Zack quickly did the same, congratulations, sir. Damien realized his mistake, quickly calmed his expression, and cleared his throat twice to clarify his tone. Zack, why are you here? Zack quickly knelt on the floor, raised his head, and said, Sir, the butler asked me to take care of you. It turned out that after Damien became unconscious, he was sent to the butler, who found an empty room on the sixth floor and asked Zack, who volunteered, to take care of him until he regained consciousness. After hearing Zack's words, Damien pondered deeply, since I was sent to the mage apprentice's room, my identity should have been recognized. But at least my magic talent should be low. If I can't find a way to improve it, I'm afraid I'll just be a miserable mage apprentice for the rest of my life. He escaped the magic test because he fainted, but Damien also didn't know what his magic talent was due to this. He still needs to find time to secretly test it. The excitement of becoming a mage apprentice and concern about the upcoming challenges made Damien feel extremely conflicted. Was it really so bad or good? He didn't know he didn't even remember what happened after falling to the ground. But what was true is that Damien had very strong mental defenses, something that had surpassed mage apprentices in the past ten years, but he didn't know that, so he wasn't excited about it. Plus, he didn't know if the elements he was or could be talented in were cool or just complicated. For a while now, he felt a current inside him, vaguely remembering that the previous owner of this body completely suppressed that aura and continued to do so until now. After a while, he exhaled and noticed Zack was still kneeling on the floor, looking at him nostalgically. Uh, Zack, get up. Sir. Zack dared to speak after seeing Zack regain his senses, sir, please let me be your exclusive servant. Exclusive servant? Damien didn't have these memories in his mind. Zack carefully looked at Damien's left hand and then quickly averted his gaze. Yes, sir, I've seen other mage apprentices appoint servants to serve in daily life. Sir, accept me, and I will definitely serve you well. Seeing Damien's hesitation, Zack kneeled beside the bed and lowered his voice. Sir, I can do whatever you want. If you wish, I can even watch over people who bother you. Like Marcus? The boy who has been harassing you for a long time. My lord, I found out that Marcus did not attend to his duties as you had asked. After that, he became even more annoying than before, and many say he became an assistant to an apprentice mage. He deliberately asked everyone to join in taking care of cleaning the floors as he had been doing before. Damien didn't react to this he supposed that maybe Marcus was his annoying thorn in this world and understood that he not only had to worry about future issues but also about small annoyances in the present. Looking at the skeletal hand holding the black bandage, Damien tied it over his eyes without saying a word. Seeing this, Zack knew that his information was very useful to Damien, and he quickly continued. My lord, I can help you find out who is behind Marcus. Damien shook his head and rejected Zack without much hesitation. Don't intervene in this. Not only could Zack die, but there would also be many more problems. For now, just make sure to observe Marcus's movements every day, but never take the initiative to follow them. As for becoming a servant of mine, I will inquire about this with the butler when everything is calmer, and I will call for you. Zack felt a little disappointed but quickly cheered up. He kneeled down and said, I understand, my lord. If you need me, you can call me anytime. I am willing to do anything to serve you. As he had discovered before, everyone is trying to survive even a boy of no more than 12 years old like Zack could become someone willing to give enthusiastic loyalty. But Damien, coming from a modern era where at least you are not consciously a slave to someone else, did not take these false words seriously. He gestured for Zack to stand up and asked him again, do you know what usually happens after becoming an apprentice? This time, Zack shook his head without understanding. Besides, he was not an apprentice mage, 
and knowing things about magic without being one is simply impossible. But Damien didn't want Zack to attract too much attention, so he asked him to return first while he wandered around to see if he could find any useful information. After all, during the Mage Apprentice test, he fainted, and he might have missed a lot of information. The room Damien was in was just a small individual room, incomparable to Syndra's room. Except for daily necessities, everything else was empty. Damien found a blank book and a drying pen under the long table. This would probably be part of the learning process. He held these two things in his arms, pursed his lips, and started laughing again. The life of a precarious servant had finally ended. He no longer had to worry every day about how he would die. A bright future seems to be within his reach. He knew his talent was not good, and he was lucky to be alive and become an apprentice mage. No matter if I can't advance, I am willing to be a simple apprentice until I die of old age. Knock. Knock. At this moment, someone knocked on the door. Damien straightened his expression and quickly went to open the door. He had seen the person outside the door, and it was one of the two people who had been examined before him. She was a freckled girl with red hair in braids, a simple blue dress, and a hard cloth bag on her back. Watch your servant leave I thought you were awake, so I came to greet you. The freckled girl spoke expressionlessly, her head throbbed in response to the sound, My name is Ada, and I live in room 603 right next to yours. Taking the initiative to greet should be a warm gesture, but Ada's expression was too cold and emotionless. Hello, my name is Damien. Ada looked at Damien's bandaged eyes, then lowered her gaze and looked at the pen in his hand, nodding slightly. I came to you this time, firstly because you have a lot of talent in mental power, and I have a lot of talent in magical power. In such a dangerous world as the one we live in, excellent people should live next to even more excellent people. Damien moved the corner of his mouth, trying not to say anything inappropriate in response to this girl's tone. The second reason is that you are the only one among the servants who survived the test. After hearing Ada's words, Damien's heart tightened from the impression. Indeed, all the servants who did not pass the test died. So if you don't have enough talent, opportunities will turn into disasters. Don't misunderstand me I saw that your clothes were the same as the servants in the tower, so I assumed that a group of servants was taking the test. Since you were able to overcome that gap from servant to apprentice mage, you must be more than just talented. Although Ada was complimenting Damien, he was not feeling better hearing these words. That's why I knocked on your door, and it's to be your friend. Damien wanted to ask, so why should I be your friend? But knowing that he should be a meek servant before being a dragon among men if he could, he restrained himself and showed a sweet smile. Chapter 7 Distant relatives are not as good as close neighbors although this neighbor is quite stern and discomforts normal people who are near her, Damien also took this opportunity to gather information. Just as he was about to speak, he saw someone walking from the end of the hallway. The man walked quickly and shouted loudly, all newly ascended wizard apprentices must go to the last classroom on the tenth floor of the tower at nine o'clock sharp to attend the first public class. Ada looked at the man, who had severe scars on his skin, but she didn't say anything. It must be the war against the demons I heard that the last squadron of adult wizards was annihilated by a demon general a few months ago, and now they are sending younger ones every time. Damien knew about the war where thousands of wizards and hundreds of thousands of warriors died daily at the hands of their natural enemies something similar to a war in his previous world but much graver this time. No one could expect an attack from demons, much less in places where they live, even here in the wizard tower. That's why, in the absence of wizards in this tower by the end of the year, they all ended up dying at the hands of the demons. Damien knew that sooner or later they would send him to that battlefield, so he hoped to at least learn enough to stay alive and return with all his limbs attached to his body. If they're sending younger ones, it means we're losing, right? Damien muttered these words as he walked towards the tenth floor, where he had been before but never thought it would be a classroom. As a servant, he had to finish all his duties before dawn, and now that he was an apprentice, he knew that all this was probably because classes had to be taught to the young apprentices. Many young apprentices climbed the stairs, and Damien followed them all. Some new apprentices gathered in the hallway and whispered to each other the atmosphere was lively and everyone was full of hope. 
Ada. Two more children ran towards them, and one with bright eyes said, let's go to class together. Ada simply glanced at them lightly, not even responding, and turned to Damien. Let's go now. The two people who approached didn't show expressions of anger, but they didn't forget to look at Damien with a little fear in their expressions. Who wouldn't be afraid of a child who seemed blind and had a skeletal hand? Everyone thought he was cursed or had experimented with dark magic before, but no one dared to say anything out of respect. Damien realized that these people probably thought he had a lot of talent, but he couldn't explain these things, so he just nodded and agreed to go with them. It was still a bit before nine o'clock, and almost all the new apprentices rushed to the classroom as soon as they heard the news. The wizard tower itself must be cylindrical, wider at the bottom and narrower at the top, and divided into two parts in the middle, becoming the east and west towers. At least these divisions were to maintain some control between the apprentices and those who studied on their own they were separated by sections, and it was known that as the floors got higher, there were more powerful wizards, totaling twenty floors. The passages to those upper floors were closed at night, and no one was allowed to ascend to those floors unless they had the authority. Damien, as a servant, had seen the access door because he frequently cleaned the hallways, but he had never been allowed to enter the upper floors of the tower. Following the crowd, he passed through the passage for the first time and reached the east tower. The tenth floor of this section did not have rooms connected to the west tower all that could be seen were grey walls with symbols and patterns that Damien, for some reason, found to be shining. Was that because of his special eyes? Noticing that no one mentioned this out of fear and because he didn't want to draw attention, Damien said nothing. His eyes could see many more things than others they were quick to read and could have something similar to photographic memory, being able to store or discard information at will. That boy is indeed special. Boom. Boom. As they walked, two people in front of them stared blankly at squares with strange runes and fell to the ground because somehow they ended up receiving strong mental blows. Everyone passed by them, and no one approached to help. Damien passed by the two people and watched them struggle to stand up. His longing for the future life of a wizard apprentice suddenly diminished a lot. We better be careful with what we look at. Everyone, be quiet. Damien and the others sat in the last classroom on the tenth floor of the tower in the west zone for about ten minutes. Finally, a man in his fifties hurriedly entered through the main door of the classroom. He quickly reached the classroom desk and placed a hand on the desk. In the first lesson, I will only teach you the rules that this tower demands so that everyone can learn without disruptions. Anyone who comes to ask me something, demand something, or request something without this knowledge will meet my pet, and believe me when I say it likes to eat creatures as small as all of you. When the man finished speaking, he snapped his fingers, and behind him, a shadow began to form, increasing in size and eventually forming a huge, strange-looking bear. The apprentices sitting in the front row suddenly leaned back and hit the desk in the last row with a loud metallic sound. Damien, who was used to seeing horrendous things, didn't lower his gaze but instead focused entirely on the magic circle of that old man to summon that huge bear that didn't seem to be alive but rather a puppet. The man on stage was very angry after summoning his pet, he straightened up and shouted again, silence. No one dared to move, although they were enduring it. First of all, you must enroll with a primary instructor based on your primary elemental affinity and an extra class instructor if you are interested in learning something more. My name is Dom, and I am a puppet wizard tutor. I also teach support spells and mental development systems. If any of you are interested in my classes, you have the right to come and ask me to teach you. Damien was interested in the puppets were they supposed to create whatever they imagined as long as they had the talent plus the skills. That would be amazing he still remembered too many things from his past life, and there are incredible creatures he could try to create here. But knowing that it all depended on talent, time, and resources, Damien knew he shouldn't get too excited about this. Don seemed to be a green old man who wouldn't teach him anything, and no one seemed interested in choosing him. He quickly took out the book he had in his arms and noted it down with a pen. At the same time, there was a whisper around him, and it was Ada who took out a pencil and paper from her backpack simultaneously and began to jot down the important things not to forget. There were about twenty people in the classroom, and almost half of them had prepared their own pens and white notebooks for personal notes. 
those who were not prepared wanted to borrow from the people next to them but didn't. Didn't dare to speak, so Dom noticed them. On stage, Instructor Dom continued talking very fast. We are at war with the demons in this tower, we don't have good wizards because they all died in battle, and I think I'm also on my way to that. But before that, I will make sure to teach you many things so that at least you don't die humiliatingly once you fight a demon. Anyway, as mere apprentices, you must first learn the basics of magic, and these include defense, attack, and support magic. Only once you have learned the basics can you properly cast magic for battles. Damien only noted the general topics, things he should keep in mind, and many other things that shouldn't be forgotten before wanting to participate in a battle. Don't waste time on magic you're not talented at focus on what you're good at and not what you want, or you'll be old in the blink of an eye. We don't have high requirements as long as you progress steadily, you'll be taken care of. When you're ready, you'll be sent to the battlefield, so be smart or you'll die doing nothing. Dom paused his eyes narrowed towards Damien, who was jotting down without even looking away, and what surprised him most was that his eyes seemed to see through the black cloth. Magic eyes? That's a trait that very few have maybe there's none in the wizard tower who has this trait. Finally, I would like to remind you, look at the book in front of you don't think there's something or nothing that's something only second class wizards can learn. Damien was confused. He looked down at the book in his hands and soon saw golden words mentioning the correct way to manipulate magical power. Very well, that's all you can visit the library, where you'll find a lot of theory. After saying this, Dom turned around and left the classroom as soon as he had entered. Without the terrifying tutor, everyone started talking, and suddenly voices in the classroom erupted. Damien didn't join the discussion he stared blankly at the notes he had just taken, as if he were dazed. Is your left hand by birth? Ada's voice came from Damien's right side. Damien had just taken notes anxiously and habitually pressed the book with his left hand naturally, Ada saw him sitting beside her. Damien no longer hid his hand and calmly said, it changed a few days ago. Ada frowned, as if she were trapped in some problem she couldn't solve. At that moment, a young man entered the main door of the classroom again. With a smile on his lips and a stack of papers in his hand, he went to the classroom desk. It's good that everyone arrived early. That's very good as human wizard apprentices, we must make use of every second of our time because our lives are very short, and we have to make even more use of our seconds of life. The young man who seemed to be in a hurry arrived with a stack of papers, restrained his smile, and said, you will receive a form to choose a primary and a secondary tutor remember that the classes should be of your most notable element. Remember, when instructor Dom arrives, don't forget to keep quiet because his ears are sensitive. Everyone remained silent in shock. The young man was very pleased the apprentices in this class were very obedient only then would they not be discarded. He walked among the rows of seats to distribute the forms and manuals to everyone, but at that moment, he stepped on something sticky. He looked down, seeing the floor was broken there were traces of blood and saliva. He looked at the students again while his voice trembled a bit. Has Master Dom already come? He was already here, whispered a girl sitting in the second row who was looking at the man who believed he had arrived before Dom. Chapter 8 The young man who had entered seemed desperate and leaned on the podium at the back. It took him a long time to formulate his next words due to the pause. My name is Dion, and I am a second-class mage. Come get your manual and read it for about ten minutes. Dion's tone also lowered from enthusiasm. But soon enthusiastic boys and girls approached to help distribute the manuals. After Dion had his hands free, he recited an incomprehensible spell and made two gestures. With a snap, the floor damage disappeared. The new apprentices, who had already witnessed the process of a huge bear appearing out of nowhere, didn't show much panic at Dion's movements. This made Dion, who originally wanted to show off, seem even more dejected. The two children sitting to Ada's left also got up to collect the forms and brought copies for Damien and Ada. Ada took it in stride, and Damien thanked her. Don't thank me it's nothing. The wide-eyed boy was a bit surprised and now took the opportunity to say, my name is Theodore, and he is Wade. We live in rooms 613 and 614, so we can study and discuss magic problems together. 
If it were an ordinary school, Damien wouldn't bother with these friendship matters, but knowing that death could be just around the corner, now is a good opportunity to forge friendships. But Damien didn't think that, as mage apprentices, they could learn together. After all, the elements they specialize in and the instructors they follow are likely to be different. He looked at the form in his hand. There are only five mentors, and that's all there is in this mage tower. There is a brief introduction behind each instructor's name, marking the types of elements they specialize in and their areas of expertise. These tutors generally have one or two main elements and many more areas of specialization. Damien saw Dom's mentor name at first glance, and the mentor's name next to him was Byron. Byron, from what was written beneath his name, specializes in the dark element, and his qualities are the undead, ghost research, corpse preservation, limb grafting, and souls. He excels in the realm of the underworld. Damien thought again of Sindra's terrifying face. Honestly, he checked the box under Professor Byron's name. After that, he took out the manual and briefly read it. It contained much more detailed rules than Dom had explained. There had never been so many rules when he was a servant. But it may be that servants have limited exposure to things and don't need to know as much. At that moment, from the corner of his eye, he saw Ada frowning and biting the pen cap in her mouth. Is something wrong? Had Ada discovered something he hadn't? Ada set aside the sheets that had been handed to her, turned to Damien, and said seriously, the element I have the strongest perception of is the fire element, but there is no instructor specializing in this element. Before Damien could say anything, she lowered her head again to look at the form. Maybe he died in battle that says a lot about our condition. Should I focus only on learning to attack on my own? Damn it, I would be at a great disadvantage without an instructor to give me advice. When Ada said this, her frown loosened, and Damien wasn't sure how true or false her unwillingness was. This mage tower is not a formal school there are only five tutors in total. It's normal that they can't cover all the main elements. Just like Damien's dark element, only Master Byron can master it. Thinking of this, Damien's face became solemn. Wait, how did Sindra determine that her strongest perception is the dark element? Is all this a coincidence or an artificial arrangement? Damien frowned as he looked at the information about Dom, whom he was interested in learning puppet control from. Dion on stage finally recovered from the initial bad impressions, regained composure, and said kindly to everyone, if you have any questions, you can ask me now. Soon, someone raised their hand. Someone asked about the rulebook, and someone had the same issue as Ada. Just as Damien thought, the mentors of the missing elements died in the war against the demons, which is currently at its peak. As for what they could do, they simply had to improve on necessary aspects like magic control, spell manipulation, and defense. If they learned these traits, they could conduct their own research. But attention must also be paid to other, more diverse elements. Dion patiently spoke with everyone for half an hour, explaining in detail, even a bit annoyed, but clarifying every question. Even if some questions couldn't be answered, he would explain what everyone should pay attention to. Even Damien was fascinated and temporarily forgot about the hidden dangers this world had in store for them. Suddenly, Damien felt a poke on his arm, glanced sideways, and found that Ada had just withdrawn her finger and indicated for Damien to look to the right. Damien looked to where she indicated and found the boy in front of him staring back with some resentment. Only now did Damien remember that brat who had glared resentfully at him during the apprentice test. After the other party noticed Damien had raised his head, he looked deeply at Damien and then turned away. Who's that? Damien leaned to the left and asked quietly. Ada still sat upright. Luke, his best friend died on the way here. The second-class mage who was the guide refused to save him. What does that have to do with me? At that time, the mage mentioned that being so human is unnecessary and that his death won't be significant because there are many aspirants who could take his place. Because there were too many people, the mage allowed those who participated in the test to die on the way. As a result, during the test, it was inexplicably discovered that there were a few more people. Damien turned his head silently and, after a moment, said, it has nothing to do with me. Ha ha ha. Ada laughed briefly, not knowing what she was laughing about. 
the two continued to listen to Dion's explanation on stage, and no one mentioned Luke again. Don't worry about the war we classified mages do everything in our power to keep those demons out of our borders. Even if they are getting closer each time, don't be afraid. All of you just learn so that, as soon as possible, you have the strength to fight for your own lives. In that case, as long as you dedicate most of your energy to learning basic knowledge, you don't have to worry about being a damn hindrance. Dion clasped his hands while smiling charmingly. All right, I'm done speaking. That's the end of this explanation. Have you all completed the forms? Damien looked at the expressions of many of the children and realized he had been a bit direct. Before collecting the form, I would like to introduce you to my mentor, Bernard. Yes, he is the first mentor on your form. His introduction is that he specializes in earth elemental spells and can also teach wood elements. But, in fact, Bernard researches both. Water and poisonous elements. Dion had a smile on his face. You don't have to worry about the appearance of the instructors. After all, the instructors are classified as mages. There's no need to judge their abilities by their appearance every year the instructors teaching here are getting younger due to how critical the front line is, but don't panic. Ada was upset that they were talking about death so lightly. Damien noticed that several people were immediately modifying their registration forms. Even Theodore and Wade, who were sitting on the other side of Kelly, were revising. Even Wade leaned over to Damien and Ada and asked, Shall we choose Dion as our tutor together? Seeing how enthusiastic that mentor is, he will definitely be willing to teach us in our studies. This way, we can progress very quickly. No. Ada was firm. Damien also shook his head. All these apprentices were brought from the outside world and might still have illusions about the people in the mage tower. In Damien's impression, these mages and mage apprentices are always in a hurry and won't stop for trivial things. If one day they stop in front of you, don't be happy that they paid attention to you it's because they may need you. As for the result of that. Damien's left hand turned skeletal is a reminder of the value one has in this place. He personally narrowly escaped death and could only do so by sacrificing his left hand. But if he's honest, Damien isn't resentful about it his bones became thicker, including his whole body. The weight of his body also increased, and his strength and senses were also heightened. Truth be told, it was a good sacrifice. Dion finally finished talking about his mentor, and he asked everyone to submit their forms. Theodore wanted to help Damien and Ada submit the forms again. But this time, both decided to submit them themselves. Damien glanced at Ada's form from the corner of his eye and was surprised she had chosen Dom, who had just arrived but had left in less than ten minutes. He chose him as a secondary student he wanted to learn about puppets to create incredible creations, so he wanted to learn more about them. After submitting the form, Dion told everyone they could first return to the dormitory, and a servant would deliver some supplies to them. Everyone was so excited that they bid farewell to Dion and returned one by one. The large classroom on the tenth floor soon became empty and quiet. Dion arranged the forms in his hands and carefully placed them on the podium. He he he. Dion's kind smile turned into one full of cruelty. Chapter 9 The dormitories for newly promoted apprentice mages are located on the 6th to 9th floors, but most people live on the 6th floor. Damien thought that when he returned to the dormitory, he would see servants bringing textbooks and other things. Unexpectedly, he saw a familiar face at the door of his room, 604, leaning against it. Another, the second-class mage in charge of the test, crossed his arms and looked at Damien, who was walking alongside Ada. His face was full of sarcasm. Damien furrowed his brows and averted his gaze to the book floating on his right shoulder. The latter floated silently, with no intention of opening. Damien then let out a sigh of relief, composed himself, faced Otto's cold eyes, and walked to the other side. You're at my door you should be looking for me, so tell me, do you need anything from me? Damien didn't lower his head his bandage over his eyes moved slightly from side to side as he stared at Otto. Classified mages usually don't show up here. Many of the new apprentices were alarmed and stayed back, watching in surprise as the scene unfolded. They were all stunned by how Otto killed the aspiring apprentice who tried to bribe the instructors. 
For the onlookers, even if they were just watching from afar, it was like a nightmare. Even Ada remained three meters away, looking expressionlessly in this direction. Another lowered his hand, and the sarcastic smile on his face grew. He leaned forward and lowered his mouth to the top of Damien's head. You should thank me thanks to me, you passed the test without accurate measures of your magical power, and because of that, you passed the assessment. Damien suddenly raised his eyes and looked at Otto from his viewpoint. However, I won't cancel your apprenticeship. Otto straightened up and crossed his arms, and his tone seemed to soften. You know. People who have mental power but no magical talent become apprentices, but they all will die in the worst way. Otto deliberately didn't lower his voice, and Damien could already hear someone starting to talk about him behind him. I look forward to your death. If you die beautifully, I wouldn't mind helping you make a wax figure of your body and putting it on the fourth floor to warn those humble servants not to dream of following in your footsteps. Damien smiled sarcastically and then asked, What makes you think I don't have magical power? Eh? Otto's laughter abruptly stopped. My future is bright, dear companion I'm sure I'll go to amazing places and fight battles that will only be talked about in history books. And in case you didn't know, I have much more talent and power than you can imagine. Damien's words were cold. Then I look forward to getting to know you better next time. Otto mocked, but his face was no longer as mocking as before but rather felt strange being stared at fearlessly by an eleven-year-old. All the apprentices in the corridor got out of the way and stood near the wall, fearing that any part of their body would block the path of the second-class mage. When the annoying Otto disappeared around the corner of the hallway, Damien let out a long sigh and then felt his stiff limbs regain consciousness. He lowered his head and prepared to return to the room, not meeting the eyes of the people around him. It wouldn't look good if he thought about that. It was his choice to become an apprentice mage, and he knew his qualifications and talents were not good. Therefore, even in the face of everyone's doubts and ridicule, Damien would not give up. He reached out to open the door, but another hand hit the door panel. Damien looked up and saw Luke's twisted face. My friend was more talented than me. Did he really lose his life because of a loser like you? Luke's chest continued to rise and fall. People without talent are not qualified to learn magic. Go back to your pile of servants to rot with age. Another idiot in his way. The damn maggots multiplied as Damien stepped toward his bright future, which seemed more annoying each time, and his characteristic calm began to disappear. Burning with anger, Damien tried not to explode. Did you hear me, damn servant? Damien suddenly extended his left hand. His skeletal hand gripped Luke's throat tightly. As he exerted force, Luke's breathing became difficult, and he struggled to breathe. Even his neck began to crack. Luke's foul words turned into groans. Ah! Ah! Luke was forced to try to free himself, but Damien lifted him with a single hand high above his head. Those who die are worse than garbage they are useless beings we shouldn't pay attention to. My village was ravaged by demons. What damn right do you have to tell me I can't avenge my parents and friends? They were treated worse than garbage by the demons unlike you, I'm not here to play but to survive and be better than anyone else in this tower. Damien said it through gritted teeth. Damien removed the bandage over his eyes and looked at the people in the hallway directly in the eyes, and squeezing Luke's neck tighter, he smiled more and more satisfied. Ah! Luke's groan became sharper and sharper, like a needle piercing everyone's brain. Everyone couldn't help but retreat. However, a hand suddenly landed on Damien's left arm. Damien turned his head with eyes full of resentment, only to realize that Ada had arrived behind him at some point. She looked at Damien indifferently, as if Damien weren't killing someone right now. Ada raised the apprentice rulebook she had in her hand and waved it in front of Damien's eyes. Rule 3, apprentices cannot kill each other, and those who violate it will have their skin ripped off. If you really want to kill him, let's go somewhere where no one else is next time. Damien didn't say anything, but everyone could hear those words, and when they saw Luke's purple head, they felt terrified that he was really dying. Maybe it was the slight chill amidst the calm maybe it was the feeling that he still didn't want to die, but Damien calmed down after being reminded of this. 
he released his grip and looked at Luke, who was holding his neck. His breathing was violent, and he kept coughing. Thank you for reminding me there are still many things I want to do. Killing resentful idiots is a waste of time surely someone else will do it at some point. Damien averted his gaze from the others, opened the door to his dorm room, and entered without saying a word. As he turned to close the door, he found Ada looking at him with slight confusion. Damien made a hand gesture for her to come in and close the door slowly. You didn't bring luggage. Ada walked around Damien's room with her hands behind her back. Damien walked to a mirror and looked at his eyes, which were starting to itch from being closed for too long. How did you cheat? Did you pretend to faint and escape the magical test? Damien turned his head toward a ring hanging around his neck. Ada turned to Damien again and asked. A better question, do you lack talent for magic? I have talent for magic my parents, as far as I can remember, were very powerful mages who fought against a demon king's general. With Ada, who was the only one by his side, Damien didn't lose his temper, but he snorted. So, what are you afraid of? You didn't flinch when the experiment with your hand went wrong you have good elements to become a skilled combat mage and you have magical talent. Ada asked, feeling very interested. My memories are not continuous they come exponentially, and some are really useless. Just now I remembered what I mentioned, I was brought here when I was nine years old after my parents fought demons and died at the hands of the demon king's general. They left something special in this ring, but I don't remember it fully if it weren't for that blow to my head, maybe I would know all this from the beginning. Ada took a step toward Damien and said, geniuses should walk with geniuses. Hello, I'm Ada, who took first place in the magical talent test. After a moment of silence, Damien raised his right hand to greet this girl, who was acting strangely and uncommonly. Unexpectedly, Damien had a friend he appreciated right in front of him without much explanation. After Ada left, Damien sat at the table, remembering the somewhat violent scene they had just played out, and couldn't help feeling a little embarrassed. But he quickly calmed down. Unlike Ada, who is still known as a genius, his reputation for cheating will probably spread and become something bad. But Damien doesn't have time to consider other people's opinions, and, to become an apprentice, he finds himself in a mystery he can't even see clearly. The anger now came more from the annoyance of having to take care of his life so much. But thanks to that, he remembered many things about his family that he previously didn't know. Looking at his ring, Damien pricked his finger with a pin he found in his universal tool bag that, as a servant, he always carried everywhere, and then he placed a drop of blood on the ring. Boom! Magical runes appeared around Damien, extending over his surroundings. Multiple books appeared in front of his eyes as if they were on a magical bookshelf. Incredible! If you've opened this ring, it's because you want to access the magical knowledge that my family and your mother's family have gathered for hundreds of years, and if you're alone right now, it means that everyone who should have taught you has died. Damien focused his eyes on a man with a magical staff who had a noble look on his face. According to his memories, he was the father of the owner of this body. I don't have much time, so I'll be quick. In the ring, you have access to thousands of magical books from which you can learn in secret. There is a simple method to train your magic and keep it hidden from others. Learn well so that you grow without being bothered, and when you have the strength, claim your own battles. My God! Damien looked at all those books floating around him, and his eyes sparkled with excitement. The ring on your hand is a family relic it has a magical staff function, so you can enhance your magical spells and reduce their magical wear when casting them. Live well, son remember that this is not just your fight, and no matter what you choose, do what you want. Damien was about to say something when the door was suddenly knocked on. Hiding all the books and making all those magical runes disappear, Damien, who had been brought out of his thoughts, said, come in. The door opened, and in front of Damien appeared a beautiful girl, 17 to 18 years old. She was wearing a very revealing maid outfit her very developed body showed her charm, but that's something he didn't pay much attention to. She was pushing a cart full of books, magical materials, and essential items at half the height of a person. She lowered her head and smiled at Damien. The angle was standard and sweet. Good afternoon, Mr. Damien. These are the books and accessories you need for studying. 
do you need me to help you place them? Damien looked at the things in the cart and said, no, thank you. Do you need any other service from me? Chapter 10 Damien looked at the maid in disbelief. He's only eleven. Damien pushed the heavy cart into a separate room that was too small to be considered a room and slammed the door shut in front of the maid, who seemed ready to do anything. The maid straightened up and pouted sadly. At that moment, the maid responsible for delivering books to 603 approached, pushing an empty cart. She looked at the young servant standing outside the door with empty hands and was somewhat surprised. Didn't she let you in? He didn't I think he's too small to consider such things. Damien didn't know that the person outside the door had considered him prey and was taking every book, reading it with a happy face. Each of these books is very thick. Some introduce magical animals, plants, and minerals into this world. Some describe the characteristics and legends of some common ghosts and monsters. Some are like foreign language textbooks, but they are as complex and difficult to understand as English Euskara dictionaries. There are also photographs, but the ones inside are all rare and terrifying if you look at them for too long, they might even cause nightmares. After leafing through nearly every book, Damien went to look at the things covered in black velvet. There's a crystal ball that he's seen before, but it's not pure black, but rather transparent. There's a set of glass or crystal test tubes and a small crucible. There's also a large wooden box, divided into more than a dozen compartments containing different items there are several sets of clothes and an unranked wizard apprentice badge. These things were introduced in the apprentice manual. Damien took the manual, compared each item one by one, and finally understood everything. Damien pinned the apprentice badge to his coat and ran his fingers over the slightly rough texture. Thinking about tomorrow's first public class, Damien took out a copy of Wizard's Language, an introduction to wizard knowledge, sat down at the long table, and started previewing it. But at that moment, the black book floating to his right side caught his eye. Era calendar of the great mage flam, unknown moon year, you have survived for three days. You're lucky you've inherited an impressive legacy of magical spells and methods to make yourself strong, which you should use as soon as possible. Death is just around the corner, and you have nothing to defend yourself with my recommendation is to train your friend and learn a basic spell, the simple purple lightning. Don't be discouraged although it's the easiest spell to learn, I assure you that as long as you train it to perfection in five years, it will be a powerful spell that you can make many more variations of. Damien froze, staring at the words in the black book, about to say something, when suddenly the book he had been thinking about appeared in front of his eyes. Modified Violet Lightning Breathing Method and Spell Damien watched as the spell was recorded on one of the black pages of the floating book. Violet Lightning Spell, a purple lightning bolt descending from the sky, causing damage to enemies and temporarily stunning them. Because you are too weak, you have a different version that you could use once you learn to manipulate your magic. Growing Lightning Finger Spell, a bolt shoots out from the tip of your finger by maximizing the ring you have in your possession, you can unleash a powerful attack that, as long as it is understood, will make you invincible. Damien immediately understood much of the simple spell that the Black Book had written for him to learn, so after understanding this spell, he wanted to use it but restrained himself. After all, he had only recently learned that he would become a wizard's apprentice, and Damien didn't want to hurt himself while training. Besides, he first wanted to learn that breathing method that would teach him to keep his magical aura hidden so as not to scare anyone. Seeing that there were no windows in this room and no one could see him, he knew he had plenty of time before tomorrow, so he decided to first memorize the breathing method. Damien knew he wasn't weak he had discovered that the previous owner of this body had a great deal of well-controlled magical power, but he didn't know what it was until he received another part of his predecessor's memories. From what he had remembered a few moments ago, his parents were great wizards who controlled lightning and fire as if they were gods walking the earth. However, the city where they lived was one of the border ones, and they received a devastating attack where all the demonic generals as well as the demon king attacked. The memories were vague, but he knew that someone had brought him to this magic tower, not far from where the demons were trying to advance into the human realm. They were very strong, Damien thought as he looked at the magic particles surrounding his body. At this moment, for some reason, he knew that he would avenge his parents' deaths yes, they were his parents. Upon obtaining his predecessor's memories, for some reason, 
he felt pity and anger, so as a thank you for being able to continue living, he would fulfill the promise his predecessor made long ago. Shadow Storm Breathing This was the name of the breathing technique to move magic within his body and completely suppress it the ring also had an isolation function, and as long as there were no powerful wizards, no one could notice the magical exhaustion here. While memorizing this breathing method, Damien had lunch, brought by a servant, and continued learning this complex method. Classes would start tomorrow, so he couldn't stay up late, but Damien wasn't worried about that. After a few hours, Damien stretched his waist, and the muscles of his body began to groan in pain, but he was in good spirits and didn't feel lethargic or tired. After passing the mental strength test to become a wizard's apprentice, he discovered that his energy had increased significantly, as if some valve had opened in his body. During those days when he was still a servant, he worked until midnight, was pulled out of bed at four, and then got up to work. At that time, he never felt like he had slept enough. But right now, that was changing, so he prepared to spend the whole night learning and practicing. Is it my imagination? It seems like my mental strength and magic are much stronger than before. Damien knew this was due to reading, but he hadn't practiced yet. How exactly had his strength increased so noticeably? Shirtless, Damien wasn't surprised to see all his muscles marked. This had happened after that potion Syndra gave him came into contact with his hand it seemed like the function of that thing was to increase muscle size to avoid dying from hand-to-hand -hand combat. Wizards had a weak physique this condition forced them to have a vanguard supporting them in battle, but that would change somewhat if they had a strong physique. Well, I want to train. Damien murmured, very excited. Whether in a room or in a hallway, the intensity of the candle illuminating his body could be dimmed, but it should not be extinguished. This is common sense that even servants know. Lying on the bed, Damien was a bit excited again. This bed is about a meter and a half wide, making it much more spacious and comfortable than the large bunk where he used to sleep. Damien stretched his arms and legs in an attempt to occupy the entire bed, but now he was young and very thin, so there was only enough space for him to lie on his side. Era calendar of the great mage flam, unknown moon year, you have survived for three days. You have memorized the shadow storm breathing method and seem very excited, but for this method to be more effective, you must do it my way. Damien looked at the instructions behind him and felt confused. Wouldn't anything happen even if he didn't attend classes? Then how would he learn? Everything was too confusing how exactly would he learn about magic if he skipped apprentice classes? But refocusing his attention on this book once more, he thought that somehow it was pushing him to become stronger in the shortest time possible. Well, he had lost a lot of time, so he shouldn't delay further. All for my future. Chapter 11 World Continent, Northern Lands, Etwas Mountains, Unaffiliated Great Mage Tower Beyond the trees stood an eleven-year-old boy with black hair, eyes blindfolded with a black ribbon, and a skeletal hand sitting on the ground on stone steps leading to the magic tower. His chest rose and fell as a stream of white air accompanied each breath, lasting for an hour and a half. I don't know what's coming, but surely the book is warning me of something, and I mustn't ignore anything that might come. I'll be fine as long as the book advises me. Damien, the eleven-year-old boy training in his breathing method, thought with strong determination to become secretly strong. The cold northern wind blew, mixed with snowflakes, hitting Damien's body. He practiced the breathing method in minus 30 degrees Celsius weather. Although it was very painful and seemed to cause self-inflicted wounds, Damien didn't stop practicing. The breathing method not only increased his magical power but also gave him total control over its use, harnessing every drop of magic in his body. This led him to mistakenly believe that his magical power had increased when it was actually that he was manipulating it in a perfect flow that would give him total control over every part of his magic. From now on, every night and part of the morning, Damien would practice this breathing method. He needed to accustom his body to it and also conceal his magical power from others. In this wizard tower, diligent students like him are still relatively rare. Especially in the coldest month of winter, the colder the weather, the more suitable it is for practicing shadow storm breathing, according to his father's legacy. After completing the breathing method practice, Damien held a wooden stick. According to his father, it wouldn't be enough to be powerful not only in magic but also in swordsmanship. 
Swish. 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 The wooden stick in Damien's hands simulated a sharp sword, emitting a sharp sound as it cut through the air, easily splitting a large wooden trunk in the distance. Manipulating the wooden stick, Damien's entire body was pushed to the limit, his muscles began to burn, and part of his magical power began to flow through each of his limbs at high speed. Era do the great mage flam calendar, unknown moon year, you have survived for seven days. You have trained enough if you continue to strain your body, you will cause irreparable damage, so you can now go to your room to rest. Damien took a deep breath and quickly wiped the sweat from his body. In his mind, he imagined that magical spell he had been memorizing before but didn't use it for fear of alerting other people who were sleeping right now. Knowing that he could now become stronger in secret, Damien was so happy that he wanted to cry, but he knew it wasn't the time to be too happy because he didn't know what could happen. Calm down, hide, and work silently. Knowing everything he could achieve in the future, Damien thought to himself. It had been a few days since he became a wizard apprentice and had participated in the necessary magic classes while skipping others. Today, he finally believed that he had achieved many noticeable changes while also knowing that the naturalness of his training had also improved a lot. One strength point is approximately the same as that of an ordinary adult in his previous life, and he can lift 50 kilograms of heavy objects. According to Damien's estimation, with a month of training, he could be much stronger to the point of being able to lift a weight of 300 kilograms. Based solely on the strength attribute, Damien is stronger than many, considering his age was that of an 11-year-old boy. He was just a child, but mentally adding the memories of this body, he had the knowledge of a 35-year-old man, so he knew the patience he must have. There were elves in this world, many of whom could live for thousands of years easily. Demons also live for many years dwarves have a shorter life, but it's much longer than the average humans. At this point, Damien didn't need to despair about being an adult because time passes very quickly, and sooner or later, he will be involved in many other more dangerous things that will endanger his life. But currently, from a physical point of view, Damien is already like a little Superman. But on the world continent, Damien couldn't be considered strong, knowing that there are too many demons lurking in the shadows and a war that is currently starting against the demons. A few years ago, the original owner of this body lost his parents in a battle that started everything. After arriving at this magic tower, Damien, who had been brought here by an unknown person, lost his memories and was now trying to become stronger by all possible means. This is a world of extraordinary power, but also a world of low productivity. Kid, do you really want to die by the rules? When Damien was returning to the magic tower, he heard a female voice and found Sindra standing in front of him, looking at him with an indifferent expression. But this time was different Damien didn't feel fear or hesitation in his words. Looking at Sindra, he soon discovered that she had an impressive magical power, something that even first-class mages probably didn't have. I should have guessed that you are the ultimate power in this tower. Damien had managed to control his emotions to the point that his voice didn't tremble, his hands didn't shake, and he didn't feel fear. Sindra noticed these changes in Damien, but she didn't say anything instead, she smiled mysteriously and asked, what makes you think that? Your magical power. Damien's response was much simpler than she expected. Incredible, it seems that your eyes have improved a lot, gaining more features. But don't you find it curious? What? The blindfold on your eyes was originally a punishment that a mage put on you for looking at him resentfully. You wore that blindfold even though you couldn't see, but after hitting your head, you awakened your magical eyes, and now you see perfectly. Sindra knew from the beginning that Damien's magical eyes were special, so when she knew he was ready, she sent him to the apprentice test. But what she didn't expect was for Damien to break the wrist with which the student's magical defenses were evaluated she had underestimated the talent of that child but wasn't upset. Can I ask you some questions? Damien looked at Sindra curiously. Just three. Then, are you the owner of this mage tower? Sindra shook her head and replied, my master is the owner he is currently at the front fighting with the human army trying to eliminate the demons that are coming out like termites. Knowing this, Damien changed his question, did you meet my parents? I only met your mother I regret her death since the day I found out. 
But at least I'm sure she didn't die just fighting I heard that all the demon king's generals, including him, attacked the city where they were unexpectedly. Sindra showed a bit of nostalgia in her gaze, as if she remembered some moments with Damien's mother. This surprised Damien for the next question, he wanted to know more about. His skeletal hand, but was also interested in knowing who brought him here. Who brought me here? Damien asked, staring at Sindra, who remained silent. She didn't answer immediately she looked around for a few brief moments and said, she will be known as the most powerful human woman in the world her name is Flam, and she helped evacuate all humans, making your parents' sacrifice useful. That means. Sindra averted her gaze from Damien beyond where the trees were and said, this is the only place where there is a barrier that woman created for us to train young mages, but it's a pity that the instructors are getting younger, and with time, we will all be destroyed. How much time do we have? Flam is creating barriers in giant cities, but she can't do anything in agricultural towns we go to those places to evacuate civilians, but many die in the attempt. Sindra didn't answer Damien's question and simply stayed there, smiling. Damien was confused why didn't Flam attack the demons if she was the most powerful in the world. It doesn't make sense. Damien murmured as he walked away. Sindra looked at Damien's injured body and asked, what are you going to do? About the future. I will exterminate all the demons. Damien said as he stopped. But your life is very short it may take hundreds of years, and your efforts will not be significant. There's a legend, maybe a fairy tale. The legend says that the water from the fountain of youth grants eternal life to whoever drinks from it I have a map in my possession, and when I'm strong, I will travel to that place to see if it's true. Damien said without turning around that, now that he knew many more things about this wizard tower, he was glad that a friend of his mother could at least vouch for him. A single sip will give me ten more years of life. A gulp will give me a hundred more years of life, and if I drink it all, I will live forever. Damien murmured as he remembered that map that was in his father's research. Chapter 12 once Damien returned to his room, he fell asleep very quickly. At 4 and 15 in the morning, the clock forced Damien to open his eyes. He sat up and yawned, breathing in the slightly cold air into his lungs and exhaling immediately. The bright candlelight flickered again, casting shadows as Damien leaned back on the long table. Just as he was about to turn over the book, something suddenly occurred to him, and he walked to the door, opened it a crack, and peered outside. His room was 604, near the end of the hallway, from where he could see the curve of the stairs going up and down. After a while, he heard faint footsteps, and the figure of a boy appeared in the dim light, struggling to push a small cart uphill. Is that Marcus? Damien's eyes widened with certain not-so-positive intentions, and he was slightly tempted to do something to find out which mage was behind that boy. But in the end, he suppressed his inner impulse. Although his status had transformed into that of an apprentice, his strength remained the same as a few days ago. While he could now cast a spell from his finger easily, facing other mages was not something he planned and didn't want to waste time with a child. Maturely considering things, he closed the door again and sat back at the long table in his room. I remember Marcus only working the early shift two days ago. Why is he back on duty today? Does that have to do with him being an apprentice? Although there were some issues with how Damien passed the apprentice test, he wasn't nervous because he now had a powerful mana accumulating in his body, growing more abundant by the day. However, he knew that other mage apprentices were unaware of this, which could cause him trouble in the future. But the servants might not care about this they only know that Damien has transformed from a servant to a powerful and terrifying mage apprentice. Therefore, it's possible that Marcus, who once took the lead in harassing him, had to work the early shifts again. Damien did want to know if he had an enemy to worry about, but now was not a good time as he wanted to keep a very low profile, almost non-existent. Furthermore, Damien didn't have the ability to torture someone to uncover the truth, and secondly, it's easy to alert the enemy. He glanced at the hardcover book on his left shoulder and reached out to touch the book that saved his life. This time, his fingers drew the book into his hands, and the pages with those two spells he had learned shone in a golden hue. There's still a part one can't open maybe when I become more powerful, I'll be able to access that part of the book. 
the threat of death did not diminish because he became an apprentice mage. Instead, it made the clouds surrounding him even heavier. Damien also knew the woman who brought him here, knew how his parents died, and recognized his duty as a human to exterminate demons. But there were still memories that hadn't reached him. What kind of conspiracy vortex was his body's predecessor caught in? Without answers, Damien immersed himself again in the ocean of knowledge. Now only learning continuous learning could make him feel at ease. What awakened Damien again was a polite knock on the door. Outside the door was Ada her eyes were slightly blue, and she probably stayed up late studying. It's almost time for class. How about you share what you learned last night? Ada was not like other people she rarely showed emotions, and all she cared about was magic. This might be the true meaning of talented people and the desire to continue being the best. Damien looked up at that moment to check the clock, and indeed, class was about to start, even a bit later than he expected. He quickly gathered his books, paper, and pen and rushed out the door. You can set the clock to remind you. It's explained in the apprentice manual. I didn't waste time learning the rules I focused on the story. Still, Damien unconsciously nodded in approval, but Ada didn't understand. The two walked quickly to the East Tower, chatting as they went through. How long did you read yesterday? I only read for two hours, and my head was already aching, and I couldn't calm down. I had to close my eyes and rest for a while, Ada said softly, not wanting to attract attention. Damien remembered the more than ten hours he spent reading and didn't respond truthfully, I read for about three or four hours straight before taking a break. In fact, yesterday he even ate with a book in hand and only seriously rested when training and sleeping. He only slept a total of four hours and is now very energetic. Still, Ada stared at him incredulously for a moment with wide open eyes. Your mental power is truly terrifying. No wonder you can stare at that puppet of Professor Dom for so long. Ada looked down she saw the book he had in hand and said, it would have been better if I finished reading this book. The two arrived at the large classroom on the tenth floor. The place was crowded, many of whom were obviously not new apprentices in this group. Except for the front row and the corner seats of the last row, which were empty, the rest of the seats were filled. While Damien hesitated between being discreet or high profile, Ada already walked confidently to the front row. He realized Damien hadn't followed her she turned around and pointed to the seats with an indifferent look. What bad luck! My dreams of tranquility have vanished, Damien thought as he disregarded the looks of the other people. In the end, they were all just children if he competed with them, it would be a loss. Not only was he better, but he was also stronger as long as he learned the spells his father left behind, he would be stronger. In a few years, perhaps by that time, he could go to war and start massacring demons one by one. They all must die humans and demons cannot live in the same world. On the other hand, Damien was interested in meeting an elf because many say how beautiful they are and that they can live for thousands of years. As long as the fountain of youth exists, Damien could aspire to live many years or to be immortal. Wouldn't that be great? Living for all eternity might be something great could he be wrong. At least now he has great plans waiting for him in the future. But now he has to survive his early years as an apprentice mage before taking the initiative to qualify to become a mage and be able to leave. Chapter 13 Damien's first public class was about magic reading and rune circle comprehension to understand the spells they themselves should learn. According to everyone, no matter how many spells one learns, they always adapt to the user. Damien had noticed this since he was training his magic mastery and lightning spells. Looking at the person who would teach the class and knowing he was not a first-class wizard, not even a second-class one, raised doubts about the importance of these classes. A third-class wizard with a normal appearance, arrogant attitude, and annoyed gaze. His mind wasn't focused on teaching at all he was obviously only taking this class for credits. He spoke very quickly and didn't allow anyone to ask questions. After Ada raised her hand for the third time and was ignored, she pouted in anger. All right, does anyone feel dizzy or even nauseous after hearing about this? The third-class wizard teacher finally raised his head and asked a general question to everyone. Seven or eight people in the large classroom raised their hands, all obviously newcomers. 
Ha ha ha. The mockery from the third class wizard leading the lecture was noticeable. With such little mental strength, I really don't understand how you passed the exam. Closing the heavy books on the lectern, he straightened his back and crossed his arms over his chest, saying, learning about magic and its continuous evolution is what keeps us on equal footing with demons. If you can't understand this, you won't have the ability to evolve your own magic. The newcomers who raised their hands lowered them due to those words that left them ashamed. There were also dissatisfied students, but they didn't dare openly refute the discomfort they felt. The third-class wizard slammed the book in his hands and said, This theory is too basic there's nothing you should have trouble with if you want to become a wizard. When you study on your own, you should understand the meaning. What's all the fuss about? Danian felt there must be another purpose. And the next moment, the words of the third-class wizard were, I don't want stupid questions that waste my time if you really have doubts about any topic, you'll have to offer something in return to get the answer. His eyes landed on Ada, who had raised her hand several times. Do you consider yourself a wizard? Who said that? Damien stood up from his seat and openly stared at the magic teacher. Clearly, your duty is to teach us and answer all our questions if we ask such obvious questions, it's because your explanation is inefficient. Are you saying I didn't explain the class as well? The mentor's eyebrows furrowed in fury. I'm saying your duty is to teach us the basics how do you expect us to match demons in combat if you're not willing to do your job? In the north, we face the worst waves of war, so stop wasting time complaining and be more open to questions. Do you think we'll win the war if we go this way? Everyone fell silent but supported Damien's words obviously, they could accept being scolded for not paying attention but couldn't bear being humiliated in this way when all they're doing is learning. What's your name? Damien, son of two powerful wizards who have faced all of the Demon King's generals. Damien discarded everything he had in mind now he didn't care about receiving looks or attention because he would be prepared for whatever came. When the third-class wizard heard this, he fell silent, stared at Damien, and nodded. I respect your parents, but you will have to earn it with talent. You'll understand my situation if you reach where I stand, but until then, you have no right to speak. While everyone watched as the mentor left with the books, Ada looked at Damien and asked, Did your parents face the Demon King's generals, not just one? Maybe yes, maybe no. In Damien's memory, this is what happened and there was no reason to hide that information in this place. The people in the large classroom dispersed noisily the only ones left were the new group of apprentices. Theodore, who was speaking amicably with Damien yesterday, quickly approached, and his friend Wade followed timidly. Theodore pulled Ada's sleeve and asked, Ada, why are you with him? What do you mean? Theodore had seen how Damien had unleashed his anger on Luke yesterday and didn't dare look directly at him. There's a wizard who's upset with him, and now he's just bothered the mentor don't get involved with him or you'll be affected. He didn't dare mention what everyone was talking about Damien right now. However, he was sure to tell Ada about Damien's traps and persuade her to stay away from him. Do you think other people will treat us kindly? Ha, huh, right now they just spat in our faces, and no one except Damien said anything. Ada hugged her book and turned around perfectly imitating the expression of the second-class wizard who had just left. Without Ada in the middle, Theodore quickly retreated and gave Damien an annoyed look. Will you die faster than you expect? Do you think you'll survive your first fight with a demon? Damien thought as he gathered his things and left quietly. Theodore looked at Wade and asked, Did he really ignore me? Wade frowned and said, Let's stay away from him. The second public class was half an hour later, a meditation class. According to the apprentice manual requirements, Damien knew this class would help them manage magic much better and learn how to control it. This classroom was circular, with high sides and low corners, the floor covered in thick cushions, and many people were sitting there. Damien even saw some ranked wizard sitting. He found an empty space to sit in and left a seat for Ada next to him. But as soon as he sat down, a new apprentice on his left silently took the crystal ball in front of him and changed seats. How childish! Damien was speechless, seeing everyone distancing themselves from him. He wasn't a child like all of them, so this level of exclusion wouldn't affect him at all. Just before class, Ada, with braided hair, dropped down and sat on Damien's left side. 
Hmm, we'd better not break anything. I went to ask about prices, and I'm afraid we won't be able to afford it even in years. What currency do they use? Their credits. Both apprentices didn't have credits because they didn't give classes and weren't on the front lines fighting demons. Class time came quickly, or even passed, but the teacher responsible hadn't arrived yet. The newcomers began to whisper, while the old apprentices furrowed their brows and sat silently. Damien handed her some notes he had made to learn how to control magic and not show it so openly like many did. After that, Damien started breathing in the way he had learned to move his mana and increase it according to his needs. Damien knew that compressing his magic would get him out of many troubles, and that's what he had been doing so far. At that moment, steps finally sounded from the entrance. Damien looked up and saw a tall blonde woman walking with a creature that looked like a lizard. She walked to the front corner of the classroom, loosened the lizard's chain, and stood with her hands on her hips. Newcomers who are here for the first time, leave your crystal ball aside and listen to me first. Those who have learned already meditate on their own. All the older ones set aside their books and focused on meditating to control their magic. Is this meditation? Damien thought as he compared it to his work method. The instructor at the front began to speak again, I'm Monica, specializing in thunder elements. If you take my class this afternoon, remember not to bring metallic objects with you. Damien didn't understand what she meant by this. As he looked at something, a blue arc of electricity suddenly appeared on Monica's face. The arc appeared and disappeared quickly, but it left a black mark from the left side of Monica's face to her neck. Monica raised her hand and tore off the charred skin completely from her face, revealing the shiny red texture underneath. No blood flowed, but the bulging muscles looked extremely suppurative. Especially when such a huge scar appeared on a beautiful woman's face, the strong contrast made many newcomers lower their heads and not dare to look forward again. What willpower? Damien didn't stop paying attention to this serious explanation from Monica she was the first one who really took this class seriously, which was really something to admire. Crack. The lizard on the floor began to eat the skin Monica had thrown to the ground. No one said a word. Each of these wizards they had classes with was very strange. Some seem normal, but they're not on the inside. Damien lowered his head and looked at the white fingertips coming out of his sleeves. If he becomes a wizard, will he also become a human-like monster? You must understand that to immerse yourself in magic, you must abandon everything it's not enough to want to be strong because you will face destinies where you must choose to make sacrifices. Chapter 14 On stage, Monica didn't care if her actions scared the children around her. She extended her index finger and spun the crystal ball with her fingertips as effortlessly as if it were candy. Meditation through mental immersion, feel the elements around you, draw the elements towards your body, and integrate them with your own magical power. This is the most stable way to enhance your magical power and shape your own magic. The crystal ball spun lightly on Monica's fingertips, bright white arcs occasionally flashing inside. Meditation can also stabilize your mental state. If one day you feel like you're about to lose your mind, you can try using meditation to maintain a certain level of sobriety and make decisions. Monica lifted her red lips and smiled slightly, as if she had found something amusing. Of course, if you can't resolve the cause of the disorder, you'll still lose your mind completely. Then Monica began instructing the new apprentices on how to enter meditation. She asked everyone to choose the image they found most pleasant and to observe it through the crystal ball in front of them. Damien endured the discomfort and quickly flipped through the album he held in his hand. In just a few minutes, he immersed himself in a vision and finally could only choose an image that made him feel more uncomfortable. To be strong, he needed to put himself in the most dangerous, demanding, and complex situations to avoid feeling comfortable. The image he was seeing in the book in his hands was that of a demon. This demon had four horns on its head and huge arms hanging down to the ground. The most notable thing about this painting was that in front of that demon stood a man, but this man held a sword instead of a magical staff. But if there was something strange to mention, it was that this person was also using magic. Damien's heart began to tremble when he set his eyes on the crystal ball, and that most terrifying demon figure drawn in the book came to life in that crystal ball. I can see you. 
Damien's eyes, hidden under his black bandage, began to glow, showing him beyond what anyone else was visualizing. Damien couldn't look away his breathing started to quicken, and at that moment, he breathed as he had learned to do, but this time his control over the suppressed magic in his body started to become unstable. Damien's change was not small at all his gaze began to show exaggerated pain, and the nails of his right hand dug into his skin. Arg! Damien clenched his teeth tightly as he breathed according to his training method. He felt it he clearly felt how that demon was looking at him, and at that moment, he began to tremble. He knew it was an illusion, but he couldn't allow himself to feel fear, not now that he had committed to staying focused only on improving to kill demons. This time Damien's surroundings changed he felt like he was immersed in a kind of lived scene and soon found himself standing in front of that purple demon with four horns on its head. There were many corpses around the demon, all of them belonging to humans and elves who had died in combat against this horrible demon. What are you going to do, young human? Damien didn't respond to this question he knew he should never converse with a demon if he didn't intend to kill it, and right now, he didn't feel capable of doing so. He could feel how tiny he was and how weak and fragile he could be against this demon. This is the first time someone has looked at me with those horrible eyes. Damien wanted to look away, but he didn't he wanted to convey that, despite how weak he was, he wouldn't cower against this demon even if death awaited him. This was like a duty, a mission that all living beings had against demons and evil beings. Every living being with a bit of reasoning should kill demons they should never turn their backs on these common enemies, and under no circumstances should they beg for mercy from these horrible beings that have been massacring them for generations. At this moment, there seemed to be a noticeable change in Damien, but he was suppressing it so well that no one except Professor Monica could notice. Damien clenched his left hand tightly and stood facing the demon, throwing a punch with all the force of his body. At this moment, he stopped thinking he only had one purpose in mind, and that was to fight. Boom! The air around Damien stirred, waking him up, and when he came out of that illusion, he found himself in a completely different place. What did he do? Did he try to hit the mentor? Damien held his face with his right hand and saw how his skeletal fist had hit a magical shield. When he tried to step back, his legs, which were numb from the pain, lost strength, and he almost fell to the ground, but at that moment, Monica held him. There were laughs around, as if they now wanted to see the punishment Damien would receive there were even people hoping for his companion's death. But those who didn't laugh were the third, to second class mages they had all been close to a demon and understood what Damien had visualized from the demonic aura emanating from the book he had left on the side of his cushion. Damien's eyes, filled with tears, showed surprise and confusion he looked at Monica, who was helping him stabilize, and murmured, thank you. Ignorance is also a serious offense, and this is not funny at all. He acted that way because he entered into a deep, illusory meditation where he faced a demon head-on. Have any of you been able to visualize any illustrations through your crystal ball? Unlike most of you who would shudder at being in the presence of a demon, he decided to attack with all his might, knowing he would die. Monica's words made Damien realize what had really happened a moment ago. At this moment, everything had dispersed, and he felt his magical power increase greatly from this experience suddenly, he also had certain ideas about his magic. Monica looked at the boy, who was still trembling, and nodded with respect. When she looked at the painting Damien had chosen, she felt a little fear, knowing that he had been able to make a connection with that demon. But she quickly regained her composure. Your deep meditation was really brave but very dangerous you must know when to exercise moderation in your actions. No matter how much strength you have, if you can't distinguish illusions from reality, you'll get into a lot of trouble. Thank you, mentor. Damien seemed to learn quickly, and Monica truly considered him a good example to follow for all the new students. This made many newcomers envious as they saw Damien stand out once again. Damien lived up to his expectations and immediately immersed himself in it on his first attempt. This time, he didn't follow Monica's meditation method Damien focused on his breathing technique to stabilize his magic. According to Monica, this method was primarily used to adapt the mage's mentality to a direct confrontation with demons. Many people in their first fight with a demon or monster tend to freeze, and this is the best way to avoid that. At this moment, what illuminated Damien's world again were small balls of colorful light. 
Under Monica's guidance, Damien immediately brought the small ball of light to himself, gradually mixing it with his eyebrows. Everything went very well. The first magic particle from his surroundings entered Damien's body and merged with his existing magic. Damien was extremely excited and immediately began to increase the mana particles in his body. Now that Damien seemed to have good control over his magic, Monica stepped back, allowing other students to try the meditation as Damien was doing. Not all new apprentices can immerse themselves as directly as Damien, and many haven't even found a suitable meditation point. Take the crystal ball next to you that will help you concentrate your imagination and open your mind. But if you can't control your magic, I don't recommend using the crystal ball. Monica returned to the front and spoke tirelessly, paying attention to the key points of meditation but not personally guiding others as she did Damien because it was a waste of time. This made some people feel dissatisfied, how could a mage apprentice who had successfully cheated deserve the most attention from their mentor? But no one dared to express dissatisfaction. The first meditation class passed quickly, and Damien didn't come to his senses until everyone had left. Ada originally wanted to ask Damien to get up, but Monica interrupted her. Ada looked at Monica, confused, and saw an inexplicable smile on the latter's face. Come out I have something to tell you in private. Ada immediately looked at Monica suspiciously. Being looked at like that by a red-haired girl, Monica's face darkened immediately, but before she could get angry, Ada quickly escaped. She left after closing the door. Then Monica returned to where Damien was, extended her hand, and snapped her fingers. A series of electric sparks immediately hit Damien's forehead. Damien came back to his senses, shocked by this sudden stimulation. When he opened his eyes, he saw a pair of long legs of Monica in front of him. Professor Monica. Damien looked up and looked around, only to realize that no one was around. I'm sorry, Professor Monica, I'll leave right away. Elemental perception is something I will talk about in the next class. Monica's red lips opened slightly, but her voice was cold. Elemental perception is actually a feature of mental power. Just as everyone's appearance is different, everyone's elemental perception is not exactly the same, and that's what makes magic different for each person. Our body represents its sensitivity to elemental ions with specific attributes. For example, an image with three attributes of red, yellow, and green at the same time on paper, and then something else with red, yellow, green stones, and blue. What colors do you think you can see? Damien didn't really understand. You mean, does a piece of paper mean nothing in the assessment? Have you understood? New magical research says that it doesn't really matter what elements are present, but what the mage really wants to do and what he or she is capable of achieving with effort. Doesn't that make the mage useless? Every human being should do their best at what they are most talented at. If we focus on what we want knowing that we don't have talent, we will be even weaker, and that's not exactly what we need. Monica nodded and said, the piece of paper that demonstrates the elements you are compatible with tells us with which elements we are talented to guide us in that type of magic. The color you can see the most is the element with the strongest perception your body has. The strength of your mental power will also affect the number of elements we perceive. After saying that, Monica took a small piece of paper and said, I was talented with fire magic, but I liked the destruction of lightning, so I evolved my magic to the point that now I'm only compatible with that magic. No matter what magic you learn, you can shape it with your imagination that's what makes a mage talented, and as long as you have good ideas about your magic, you will have control. Damien looked confused at Monica he didn't know where she was going with all this. What you must do now is train on your own these classes won't help you if you already have good magical power and a lot of control over it. You should only learn spells, and surely in a few months, you could qualify as a third-class mage. Chapter 15 Damien didn't even know how he walked all the way back to the dormitory. He slammed the door shut, threw all the books and the crystal ball onto the bed, and slowly slid down the bed as if he were a worm. Why can't I perceive many dark elements? Is it because the elemental particles in the classroom are unevenly distributed? Damien pondered this, immediately opened the book, took the crystal ball, remained seated on the floor, and began to meditate. This time he felt dark element particles, but they were still very few, 
not even as many as the white ones. White is clear how is this possible? When I tested it, it was clear that my perception of dark elements was higher than my thunder and fire elements. Damien didn't really understand the magical system that operated in this world it was also clear that it was very complex, and he had only been practicing magic for a week. Looking at the magical power surrounding his body, Damien subtly manipulated the slight electric arcs that came out of his fingers, knowing that this was magic. He hadn't studied any dark spells yet but knew he could do it however, he wanted to focus on attack magic first and then defensive magic. Dark magic might be more practical at other times. Wait, is my main element thunder and not darkness? Damien remembered that the boy from the evaluation wasn't exactly a good person he even came personally to bother him a few days ago. Could all of this be because he's a servant? Damien thought this was likely he was the first person to go from servant to apprentice mage. Many who came to study here were sent from big cities in the north and villages buried by war. It's not that they all had more privileges than Damien, but they were here to learn and didn't come by chance. Damien knew a bit of his story, so he knew the truth of why he was here, but obviously no one believed him, and he didn't expect them to. He wanted to ask Sindra about this, but it wasn't a bother not to handle darkness correctly because he wanted brute strength now, and thunder was exactly what he needed to be stronger. If the element with my highest perception isn't dark, it's most likely that the experiment I participated in is changing my body in some way. Damien knew that what he put his hand in wasn't a potion perhaps it was something different that he currently had no knowledge of. But going back to the beginning, it wasn't a big problem he needed to worry about. Now the most important thing was to control his mana, keep it hidden, and continue learning magical theory. He would also learn all about new magical spells and figure out the best way to fight on the battlefield. Damien knew magic was powerful, but if he didn't have large amounts of mana, he would have no chance on the battlefield. So, following his teaching methods, he would also focus on practicing swordsmanship and improving his body. A few hours after practicing, Damien left his room but found no traces of Ada anywhere. The plan was to ask her about her meditation state and whether the notes he had given her had somehow helped her after all, that knowledge wasn't his but his parents. But, not finding her, he walked to the fifteenth floor. First class Master Dom had his exclusive laboratory right there. Common apprentices who want guidance from their mentors mainly need to go to the laboratory the mentor can answer some questions when they conduct experiments there. But most of the time, apprentices are reluctant to seek out a mentor until they encounter problems. The answers they are likely to get are, don't you know how to do this simple thing? Didn't I explain everything about this question before? I don't think you're that stupid just search for the answers correctly yourself and free your mind from your limitations. For more seasoned apprentices, they knew seeking out a mentor would be a waste of time if they weren't talented. Only newbies who haven't seen their mentor angry would be excited to meet their mentor up close. Damien had many things on his mind, so he didn't feel excited at all when he reached the 15th floor. He arrived at the laboratory of the famous Dom and was met with a pair of eyes as soon as he opened the door. The owner of those eyes suddenly went through a variety of emotional changes that included surprise, anger, fear, and forced composure. Damien looked at Luke and scratched his chin with his bone knuckles. Luke immediately looked away. After all, there were still slightly purple fingerprints on his neck. Not many apprentices chose Dom only three out of the twenty newcomers. Damien, Luke, and a very pretty girl named Angela. She seemed unaware of the conflict between Damien and Luke, her large eyes sparkling in a peaceful smile on her lips. In addition to the new apprentices, there was also a young man wearing the badge of a second-class mage packing his things in the laboratory. Seeing the three of them standing quietly in the laboratory, he stepped forward to greet them, Master Dom usually doesn't come this early in the afternoon. You can come around five o'clock in the future. Of course, it's also fine if you don't come we're just here to seek advice on our research based on the puppets we want to make. Besides, if you don't have large amounts of mana and dark elements to control people's souls in a certain way, you won't be able to create even a single puppet with its own will, and believe me, controlling one is not easy. After simple greetings, the laboratory fell silent again. The second-class mage stopped paying attention to them because he was busy and had no interest in further interactions. 
Seeing that Master Dom had no intention of arriving early, Damien simply took the book and found a debris-free table to sit and study. Seeing this, the other two people also found a place to read. There is a gap between the three, and it's clear they are quite different. Due to having too much on his mind, Damien became interested only in the visual elements of the figures created with clay and was surprised that, as a mage, he could give mobility to these self-created figures. Additionally, there are cases where one could give their own traits to their puppets. It could be. Damien came to this class because he wanted to learn how to create a puppet he had in his imagination. If he could do that, then, as a mage, he could focus solely on his magic for a while and not on physical combat. How incredible would it be to create a famous monster from his past life? Someone like Berserker, who was a mad warrior, might even make a replica of the Divine General of the Eight Divergent Leaves of Sila or one of its Maharaga variants. If he could create something like that, Damien would feel invincible, which is why he's here and precisely why his mana levels are increasing day by day. Finally, when the hourglass marked 4.30 in the afternoon, the laboratory door opened again. Everyone stopped what they were doing and stood up. Master. The second-class mage greeted him with a respectful look. Following his line of sight, Damien looked at the old man who had previously taught them, but this time he had a long wound on his face. What happened to him? That was the question everyone asked themselves upon seeing Dom injured, but out of respect, no one said anything. The other person seemed very old, with wrinkled skin and slightly clouded eyes that made Instructor Dom seem to be over ninety at the moment. Dom entered slowly, with a steady step. He didn't respond to the second-class mage but looked around the laboratory. Damien could tell that the second-class mage was very nervous. My request for you to learn from me is very simple. Dom's tired voice first addressed the second-class mage and said, Return the used items to their original places. If you can't even do this, don't come to my laboratory in the future. The second-class mage smiled slightly and nodded with a serious expression. I apologize for lying I will clean up by the end of the day. When are you going to the battlefield? In a month. Remember not to be useless and die at the hands of demons at least kill a hundred before falling with those despicable pigs. Understood, master. Damien noticed that upon hearing these not very encouraging words from Dom, the second-class mage seemed relieved. After that, Dom looked at the three newcomers and said, Come here and stand in front of me. Are you going to let me, an old man, walk towards you? Damien, Luke, and Angela hurried to stand in front of Dom. Dom's grey pupils scanned the three one by one, and when they finally landed on Damien, he suddenly asked in a harsh tone, two questions, why do you have your eyes blindfolded, and why do you have so little magical power? Luke's eyes lit up as he stood on the other side of Angela. He seemed to hesitate about taking the initiative to help Damien explain his situation better. But just as he was about to speak, the wound on his face hurt a bit, and he couldn't make any sound. Damien knew his situation couldn't be hidden from the official mage, so he took the initiative and said, I hide my magical power, as my parents recommended that I always hide my magical levels and keep them suppressed. If I'm facing a demon, I could deceive it, and with this, I would easily kill it when my enemy lets down their guard. Don smiled strangely when he heard these words, and he nodded. My apologies for the first question what about the first? My eyes are special it doesn't matter if they're blindfolded because I can clearly see what's around me. Well, I hope you don't die because of that. Damien was surprised by these words, but he didn't feel uncomfortable. There were few things he wanted to learn from this place, so once he achieved them, he would rarely attend this class. Well, this goes for everyone. If you're not a third-class mage in a month, don't stand around here anymore. Your mana must be quite abundant to take my classes, so it would be pointless to keep coming if you don't have this important quality. Dom said, glancing at Damien sideways. In fact, this test was very difficult to achieve because, to be a third-class mage, one should learn defense, attack, and numerous support spells, so it wasn't simple. This in itself demonstrated how complex Mr. Dom's class was and how important these requirements were to learning about the magic he had developed. After making his instructions clear, Dom looked at Luke and Angela, who seemed to have poor control over their magic. You will learn with Mark later, but first, you will talk to me. 
Why do you want to study in my class? I'm good with crafts. I would like to create a powerful companion. Damien thought for a moment and said, I don't want to see anyone die protecting me I need to create a powerful companion who will be my vanguard and also my executioner. Dom's eyes sparkled when he heard this. He nodded his head and said, you go with Mark you too will learn from me. Damien didn't know why Dom sent him to his disciple Mark, but he knew not to be impatient, so he approached where the learning mage was. Do you know why I sent you to me? Damien shook his head at this question. Mark smiled and said, Professor Dom agrees with free imagination, and he also saw that in my magic, so he usually gives the theory, and we will learn on our own. Those who don't have that privilege will be taught by him. What if we don't show progress? Damien asked as he sat in front of Mark. That's impossible he only leaves us alone if we have exact control over our magic. Chapter 16 Damien's first class turned into one where he would only mold a clay figure guided by his thoughts and shape it only with his hands. The care he was giving to the details was incredible, and although it's helpful to know, he had learned design for a few years, so he had a good understanding of 3D dimensions and gradually placed things where they should be. Mark looked at Damien so focused that he was surprised by his progress and talent for manipulating clay, something that very few knew about. I didn't think you'd be so talented on your first try. Damien lifted his gaze and looked at Mark, who had approached. In my childhood, I used to make mud figures with my friends. I don't know why, but I paid much more attention and care than others, so I didn't think I had these skills yet. What are you doing right now? Something I had in mind since I heard about this class is that this will be my prototype for my puppet that I hope to have in perfect condition in the future. Damien smiled when he finished his prototype in less than half an hour. It didn't have many details because he didn't want to reveal much, so he only made the figure. Clean up everything if you're done. Damien, having previous experience, didn't worry much and quickly got to work. Mark saw that he was working meticulously and conscientiously, so he didn't say anything. As he cleaned up, he told Damien some things he should pay attention to in his studies. Two hours passed like this, and Mark had something to attend to, so he explained to Damien the final task. You'll throw the trash into the yellow trash bin later. Make sure to remember that it's yellow. If it's not yellow, put it in the bag first, close it, and deal with it tomorrow. Damien looked at the trash in the lab and thought it was too much, but he still didn't say anything. He could take the leftovers to start creating his puppet in his room, so he didn't complain. Mark pulled out a chair and sat with his legs stretched out. Now I'll pass on my notes to you, which will be very helpful in saving you time mastering the basic elements to create a suitable puppet. In the process, Damien asked a lot about what to expect in this class to know if he could create his creation that he wanted so much to ensure many battles. Mr. Mark, why is it necessary to have an affinity with darkness if, in the end, I'll create an avatar that will only follow orders? Mark wasn't surprised by Damien's question. Hearing the words of Master Dom, he had already thought that the youngest student in front of him might have had a truly remarkable performance, so he would leave him alone. In the eyes of everyone, prodigies are so skilled that they don't need a mentor. If we look at the knowledge in books, they will tell you that it's impossible to see the souls of the dead and know where they end up. But Mr. Dom's research tells us that we can give them a path. For example, when a cat dies, that cat was your pet, so you could very well use its soul to place it in a puppet, and if you're lucky, it will become an avatar that will follow your orders. In that case, will the avatar remember its life before dying? Mark gestured with his hands. Not at all. What the soul will remember is the loyalty of that cat to its master. If you use the soul of a warrior, all that will remain of him is to receive orders, fighting styles, and adapting to the use you want to give it, understand. Damien understood why they needed to know about souls this was extremely important because that was the final step to making a puppet useful so that it could become an avatar. So, what are the limitations of an avatar? Mark didn't hesitate and replied immediately. Your imagination. You'll learn that magical runes will serve to give the necessary functions to your avatar a regeneration rune can repair your avatar in the middle of battles, and that would be enough to make it remarkable. I've noted down the tools of the runes we use you'll have to do research on your own to increase those benefits.
Damien looked at a golden book containing dozens of runes and sincerely thanked Mark for all the support he was offering. Can I create my own puppet in my room? Damien didn't want to get into any trouble. My advice is not to rush first become a third-class mage, and then focus your free time on creating that prototype in full size. Mark didn't believe that Damien could create that prototype into a giant avatar because even Dom didn't have many powerful avatars. Do we have any limitations on what we can create? Damien asked an important question. Of course we do, but almost no first-level apprentice can break those rules. The magic transformation the instructor just mentioned requires at least a first-class mage to start giving life to your puppet. Mark paused and said, you have to understand that you must have a great deal of mana to give life to an avatar. Damien had understood he didn't know how much mana he could have in his reserves, but now he was very strong. At least in five years, he wants to be a first-class mage. He didn't know how powerful it was or what he should do to achieve it, but it was his goal. Furthermore, he knew that once he became a second-class mage, they would send him to the battlefield, so he had to learn powerful offensive spells first before focusing on creating an avatar. Well, finish all this, and you can leave, Mark said as he left the laboratory. Damien watched this mage depart and, without time to thank him, saw him exit through the door. Oh. At that moment, the laboratory door suddenly opened again, and Mark peeked half his face inside. Remember to pack your things before you leave. Understood, Mr. Mark. Damien was surprised to see Mark in that position and stepped back. Again, the door closed. Damien was the only one left in the room. Probably. Damien turned around and looked around there wasn't much work left, just organizing things, throwing away trash, and checking if all the cabinets were properly closed. At this point, he decided to walk around the laboratory. He pushed back the chair that Mark had moved, picked up the trash under the table, and threw it into the yellow trash bin. The yellow trash bin was very dark and had no bottom, not like a barrel but more like a chute. Damien didn't look much and immediately closed the lid after disposing of the trash. This place is very cold being the only one here is definitely not pleasant. Damien looked at his left hand, now adorned with some silver rings he had found earlier. Damien found several failed works on the table in the middle of the laboratory. There was something drawn on the paper, but it was completely covered by chaotic black lines, and nothing could be seen. The paper was crumpled, as if it had been thrown away after being crushed. Were these scraps of paper here a moment ago? Damien carefully put them into the small bin, turned around, and prepared to bother to empty it again. However, as Damien reached out to lift the bin lid, the bin turned red in an instant in front of Damien. That thing is alive. Damien's hand stopped in midair and slowly retracted. He pretended not to see anything, turned around, sealed the bin, and placed it under the table. He continued his round and walked to a row of cabinets at the other end of the laboratory. Somehow, he suddenly remembered the things he could do with his breath and then looked at the ring on his right hand. As he understood, this was a ring that would greatly facilitate casting magic spells and conjuring runes, well, as long as he did things carefully, he would be able to achieve his initial goals. I should get out of here it's getting dark. Damien quickly shook his head to rid himself of unfortunate thoughts, but when he took another step, he stepped on something. He looked down and almost jumped. It turned out to be the puppet used in this practice area. The puppet's eyes were clearly two holes, but Damien felt as if there were eyes staring at him from inside. When you leave, make sure there's no mess on the cabinet area floor. I'll clean it up later. If you find anything on the floor when you leave, don't worry, just pick it up and put it in any cabinet. Damien remembered Mark's instructions a moment ago. As soon as he turned his head, he saw the cabinet next to him crack open slightly. Oh God! What can be seen on the cabinet door? Are piles of dolls placed in various directions? It's okay, this is their home, so they should sleep there without causing trouble. Damien slightly turned his head to avoid looking directly into the eyes of the puppet on the floor, bent down, and reached out to lift the puppet. When his fingers touched the rough, cold surface of the puppet. Crash. At that moment, a voice that only Damien could hear sounded. 
The hardcover book flew in front of him, and the pages quickly flipped, passing through the page where his spells were. Era calendar of the great mage flam, unknown moon year, you have survived for seven days. Mark has given you a mission, and that is to clean the laboratory. You were really angry that you wanted to scream in his face to do it himself, but when he started giving you magical notes and books on avatar runes, you felt sorry for his humility. When you were wasting time, a mischievous puppet bit you on the foot, and you're about to return it to its place with a beating. You open the cabinet door, hold the puppet's head, and place it carefully. But the puppet, in a careless moment, will try to harm you to possess your body. In the end, after five hours of agony, you end up being possessed. What sense does that make? Damien's eyes widened when he read that practically, that doll on the floor was the improved version of Annabelle merged with a diabolical doll that changed from a human body to a doll's body. Chapter 17 Damien had placed his fingers on the puppet, neither lifting it completely off the ground nor setting it down again. Why do I always receive death warnings? Am I just too unlucky, or is it something natural that everyone faces in a world like this? The next thing Damien did was slowly and calmly release his hand, only to discover a moment later that he hadn't been turned into a puppet by a spirit inside this doll. It seems that if the puppet wants to take over my body, it can't do so easily. I need to open the cabinet and confront several puppets to achieve it. Damien didn't know what he was thinking at this moment there were so many things that could happen that his mind couldn't imagine every possibility. Damien overlooked the puppet and prepared to retrieve the small, sealed trash cube while a malicious smile formed on his face. Since you don't plan on returning to the closet, I'll treat you like trash. However, Damien's joy was short-lived as new writings appeared in the black book flying around him. Don't rejoice too soon because, by not paying attention to where you would leave the doll the next day, Mark, who returned early in the morning, looked at the laboratory for a few minutes due to the great impression. Since you didn't take care of the doll, it's causing havoc and destruction in the laboratory. Anxious Mark wasn't interested in hearing your explanation at all, so he vented his anger by beating you severely, leaving you disabled. But don't worry, your left hand will be intact. Damien squeezed his brows in frustration and grabbed the puppet from the floor with his left hand. Are you a devilish doll? Damn it, wanting to take my body is an unforgivable sin. Crack. The force exerted by Damien's left hand on the puppet was so strong that he wanted to crush it into pieces. But unfortunately, the puppet was made of a very resistant material, so even with Damien's force, he couldn't break its arm. After a few minutes of effort, Damien continued and stopped. To his horror, the more Damien squeezed the puppet, the more it smiled diabolically. Damien's thoughts started racing a pensive expression crossed his face, and when he knew what he had to do, he smiled in the same way as the puppet. Damn masochists, we should stop using materials with these affiliations. Although there was no death warning while he held it tightly, Damien knew that breaking the puppet was not at all good. I hope you're listening well. I'm going to take you out and burn your body outside the tower. Damien didn't have to lie with his words at that moment. Instead of warning him again, the hardcover black book retracted onto his left shoulder. Although he didn't want to admit it, Damien felt very relieved. As soon as he left the room, he prepared to exit the last stretch of the hallway before going down to the lower floors. But as he left the laboratory, a loud noise was heard behind him. Crack. 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 Damien's back sent a chill through him, and at that moment, from inside the laboratory, the doors containing the experimental puppets opened, spreading across the floor. Turning around, Damien found himself faced with the eyes of all those puppets. Save me, save me, save me. Save me, save me, save me. I want it too I also want to escape from this prison. Save me, save me, help me. For a moment, it seemed as if hundreds of voices of people sounded in Damien's mind, who was ready to kill or die, and that made him stop. As the tension rose in his body, Damien no longer cared about the warning of the beating Mark would give him the next day what he did was turn around to run away. But before he could take a step forward, he felt something dragging him across the floor and fell like a dead log. Damien wanted to get up, but he discovered that his limbs were as stiff as wood. A sensation of being eroded by numbness was spreading from his limbs to his torso and his brain. 
they're abducting me. Damien, at this moment, remembered some of the things taught by his mental defense professor and immediately followed their guidelines to increase defense levels. Although there was neither painting in his hand nor a crystal ball to help him in meditation, Damien still entered a meditative state in the face of the life-or-death crisis he was going through. The complicated sounds in his ears immediately weakened but didn't disappear completely. The numbness disappeared from the entrails to the limbs. If a first-class mage were here right now, they would be surprised at the magical talent that was adapting to the circumstances and evolving their mana levels over Damien's body as if their talent had no limits. But Damien still didn't want to get up he needed to regain concentration because he was still a bit dazed. Come on, bony hand, you can do something. Damien looked at his left hand, which could move without any problem. Do those things think I'm dead? Damien crawled like a worm towards the door, using only the strength of his left hand. But as soon as he moved his left hand, he couldn't maintain concentration anymore, and the numbness spread again through his limbs. Desperate, Damien simply abandoned meditation and focused on crawling with the power of his left arm. Only when the numbness extended to his chest did Damien pause, meditate again, and let the stiffness retreat from his limbs. In this way, he continued alternating between crawling, meditating, crawling, and meditating, and slowly he approached the laboratory door with difficulty. Holy Mother of God, whoever the hell sent me here, send me your strength. Damien's left hand was already pressed against the laboratory door. My hand is so beautiful, hardworking, and special that right now I'm hesitating to heal it. Looking at the door, Damien opened it slowly. But when he tried with all his strength to hold the upper part of his body with his left hand and wanted to lean against the wall, the door suddenly opened by itself. Mark's half-face protruded behind the door, his eyes straining to look at Damien, who was drooling and sweating as if he were poisoned. Damien, what are you doing? It's Chucky Damien felt that when Mark appeared, he was saved, but then he thought about the perverse mentalities of the mages in this place, which made him imagine many worse things. Is Mark the same Mark, or is it another Mark? Whatever it is, if he takes a step forward, he'll die. Damien's thoughts focused only on surviving. At one point, electric sparks flashed from Damien's hands, and with this electrical discharge that invaded all around him, he regained full movement of his body. Boom! An explosion was heard in the laboratory, but this caused the trash bin to open, and pale hands emerged from it like a horror movie scene. What is this trash? Damien's teeth started shaking again unexpectedly, even after becoming an apprentice mage, he still couldn't escape the fate of being weak, defenseless, and just waiting to die. The dark book that was attached to Damien flew in front of him, and the pages appeared in front of his eyes with a single phrase, don't do anything or you'll die. Damien wanted to throw this book directly in the trash, but he couldn't speak right now. Ha ha ha, damn this shitty place if I survive this, I won't leave my room until I'm strong. He had lost a certain sense of reason right now. I better face them head on I'll roast them all. Damien's hands flashed with electrical sparks. But suddenly, the laboratory door that was open exploded, and a wooden stick hit Damien on the forehead. The maniacal smile on Damien's face was interrupted by that blow, and he held his forehead with both hands. What just happened? Damien, knowing that this battle was anything but a fair fight, ran away. At the door, Mark's half-face had disappeared. And at that moment, a man surrounded by dark bandages appeared at the entrance. Except for a pair of crimson eyes, the rest of the man's body was well wrapped in bandages. His ears, nostrils, and not even a trace of hair were exposed. Watched by the man's crimson eyes, Damien lay half sprawled on the floor, unable to move his mind went blank, and he didn't even feel fear. Kill me now I surrender. Damien had had enough. Fortunately, the man with bandages only looked at Damien as if he were a weird bug, then raised his head to look at the laboratory and whispered, Go back, stupid kid. Damien blinked as if he couldn't believe what he was hearing. New apprentice, why did you spend the night in the laboratory? Spend the night? Damien turned his head to look at the wall clock, only to realize that the clock had reached eleven at some point. It clearly wasn't six o'clock when Mark left, so why is it already eleven? In Damien's perception, he never stayed alone in this laboratory for more than half an hour. 
Am I alive now? Chapter 18 Guardian, you have no idea how grateful I am that you saved me. Damien got up from the floor a little embarrassed. Although his legs were still a bit weak, he insisted on standing up and looking directly at the man, who was not a living dead but someone who had saved him. You foolish child, don't walk around at night in this devil's tower. I once heard that a child was eaten, leaving only his bones. I think your left hand was eaten by the same thing that ate that child. The man's voice seemed soft, but he struggled to make it thick. I'm sorry, guardian something happened, and suddenly the hours flew by. Don't say you've seen me I don't exist, and I will continue not to exist. Damien was interrupted by the person in front of him right in the middle of his words. The bandaged man raised his hand and waved a breeze approached, and Damien, who felt weak, suddenly felt a surge of vitality flooding his muscles. When he opened his eyes again, Damien discovered that he was already standing outside the door of room 604. He quickly scanned the hallways on both sides the dim light of the candles danced slightly, and it fell silent. With no time to think, Damien opened the door and quickly entered the room. This is more than just strange. The time passed very slowly. The clock showed that it was past three in the morning, and the hands ticked slowly, giving off a strange feeling in the room. Damien had been using his breathing method for the rest of the night to recover from fatigue and not fall behind in his training. This time he wouldn't sleep he didn't want to because there were things he wanted to do. The reality is that he's not strong at all he had been letting that slide, but right now he couldn't. Knowing that strength was everything, he would spend most of his time learning, so that's what he would do in the coming years. The moments when he's been close to death make him feel stronger each time he learns many more things, and he knows the ways he could die. Knock. 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 Damien was training when suddenly he heard someone knocking on the door. He opened his eyes and wondered, is it morning already, and is Ada looking for me? He didn't know, but he still got up, only to find out it was only four in the morning. Damien didn't want to think too much about who would knock on his door at that hour, but he still approached it more alertly than before. Are you going to open the door or not? The person outside the door couldn't wait any longer and called softly the voice turned out to be the maid from the other day. Damien walked to the door and opened it slightly. Indeed, it was the maid who had brought him the books at that time. What are you doing at my door? Damien, who had been through horrible things, was not phased by the appearance of this woman, who was quite revealing at the moment. Sir. The maid smiled, her face full of sensuality. I know you're still young, but don't you want to touch? As soon as she finished speaking, the maid raised her hand, and her naked skin was revealed, showing something that would leave many speechless. Damien suddenly took a step back and was about to close the door, but the other party stretched her head, and her face got caught in the door crack, with only her mouth exposed. They'll kill me if you don't help me. Rest in peace. Damien slammed the door shut without giving that person a chance to say anything. Knock. 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 Even after a few minutes, the door was still being knocked on, but Damien ignored it and continued training. What the hell is happening? Damien opened his eyes and looked at the clock, which hadn't changed much. Knock. 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 Damien took a candle from the table and approached the door again. Who's outside? There was silence outside the door. I don't need special services. Damien raised his voice courageously. I'm Sindra open the door. Damien remained silent behind the door. Who the hell could tell him now if Sindra was the same woman he was familiar with? But he couldn't stay in the room forever fleeing from battle was not an option. When Damien opened the door, he could see a woman in a long dress covered with a black overcoat that covered her entire body. Miss Sindra. Damien immediately realized he was in front of the real Sindra. Sindra looked at Damien and entered the room without saying a word. She sat on a chair and took off the hood covering her face. Sindra's rotten face didn't affect Damien, who had seen many strange things a few hours ago. Your apprentice life is quite exciting. Does someone want to get in your bed at such a young age? Sindra crossed one leg over the other, holding her elbow with one hand and her chin with the other, 
showing a harmonious serenity with each of her movements. If it weren't for that rotten face, she would actually be more attractive than any other maiden. Things in this tower are very strange. Damien closed the door and turned around. You should understand your situation now, right? Yes, I must become stronger before thinking about getting with a woman. Damien's eyes glowed with intense passion. I didn't think you were joking. Syndra looked at the subtle magic around Damien that fluctuated and said, Don't leave your room until you control the mana you compress in your body if I can see it, I'm afraid many others can too, and that would be bad for your plans. How bad does it look? Syndra shook her head and said, It's not very obvious, but only the most experienced can notice it. Hmm, I didn't know that. Damien walked to a chair not far from where Syndra was and asked, How much time do I have before I'm sent to the battlefield? About four years maybe you can hold it off until four and a half years. Syndra didn't need to explain that they were in an area where they had to kill demons or die. The demons now with the demon king were taking a coordinated distribution, which means they would attack more aggressively and with more effective methods to kill humans. At least Damien knew he would have enough time to become stronger. Chapter 19 Syndra knew Damien's mother, but that didn't give her any privileges in this place. Everything she did for Damien, he had to repay tenfold nothing in this tower was free, especially not privileges for being strong. Who's stronger in the Northern War? Why would you want to know that? Syndra didn't quite understand Damien's thought process he was a child but didn't always act like one, showing a keen interest in war, perhaps related to the death of his parents. Damien smiled faintly and explained, I don't like living under pressure, but if I need to be strong, I must be more aware of what lies ahead. Don't get me wrong, I'm no hero, and I have no interest in becoming one because my only intention is to kill demons to reach those who participated in exterminating my people. The last time Syndra talked to him, it was a more ambiguous conversation, but now that she had come to him, it was time to inquire about the world to be more aware of what awaits a strong person. Damien had an idea of how to become stronger and, naturally, didn't want to waste his future on worthless classes. Well, you have to come to terms with the fact that you're weak compared to demons, humans are weak. The Seven Sages of Destruction, a group of seven powerful demons who serve the Demon King, are more powerful than the strongest human mages today. Like all demons, they are individualistic beings with no sense of morality or compassion. They have a high amount of mana compared to humans you, of course, like many others, are a small difference. Sindra said as she stood up and walked toward the door. Pausing, Sindra looked at Damien and said, If you want to direct your fury somewhere, kill one of the seven sages of destruction. They were. Damien fell silent after hearing that. Sindra didn't say more, but she knew that behind Damien's faint smile was a determined look to kill. Study, I know you know what you must do, so don't waste time with classes that won't serve you. Watching Sindra leave, Damien returned his gaze to the table, where there was now a book. Knowledge about demons? Syndra might be a stranger to Damien, but she knew perfectly well that she at least didn't want to see him die in foolishness. Damien didn't rest even a single hour after Syndra left what he did was select the most powerful spells to get an idea of what he would learn later. But still, he woke up early in the morning, with dark circles under his eyes, and found Zack working on the fourth floor. Zack was very excited to see Damien come. Tomorrow, he'll have to clean the hallway early in the morning, although he might not find anything perhaps it's better not to go. While Damien observed him, other servants wouldn't dare give him dangerous tasks. Sir, are you here to accept me as your exclusive servant? Zack's eyes sparkled with excitement. I'll need you to do a lot of work for me would you still be willing? Damien needed an assistant who could bring him a lot of mud because he wanted to create a figure for his puppet. But Zack didn't consider the work hard, so he said, I'll be willing to do anything you need. Damien glanced around and asked, have you seen anything noteworthy these days? Zack shook his head. Nothing notable to mention no one has talked about you again since everyone knows you're a mage now, so they're not foolish enough to talk about you. Damien believed that most of his problems should be solved now, despite the clear disadvantages he had before. Upon reflection, as long as he stays away from trouble, nothing could touch him in the coming years. 
I'll talk to the butler about your transfer I'll need you to help me find mud for my own creation and also take care of my meals. I'll be able to do that, my lord. Zack was excited to hear that Damien had accepted him as his personal servant. What he needed now was a lot of mud to form the figure of his puppet, the famous divine general of the eight divine leaves. As long as he could give life to that incredible being that would serve as his vanguard, it would be more than enough to be at the forefront of the battle. He now had all of Mark's notes, so knowing all the principles, he had what he needed to start his experiment that would occupy his free time where he needed relaxation. So start bringing the mud to my room I'll need large quantities, so bring as much as you can without forgetting to rest. Remember, you're no use to me if you're not in a condition to follow my orders. Damien didn't know what would happen here in four years, but he at least hoped to be strong enough to stay alive and avenge the deaths of the parents of this body. I understand, my lord. Zack knew what needed to be done in these situations, so he didn't say much he would simply serve Damien because that was the only way to survive in this tower of mages. Damien walked away. There wasn't much else to do in this place, so he walked out to the outer fields to watch the sunrise and start training his physique. The things he would do from now on were to take refuge in his room while studying magic on his own, following the knowledge left by the inheritance he obtained a few days ago. He would train his body, and besides that, he wouldn't do anything else. Chapter 20 Damien was contemplating the sunrise as his breathing slowed down. His control over his mana was constant, never ceasing to release all his power for fear of drawing attention. But even if he hit it, his current mana, which was one-tenth of his total power, was striking enough for classified mages to take notice due to his large reserves. For now, he would train his magical spells, learn the theory, and occasionally practice with someone else. Still, knowing that he would improve progressively, this decision might increase his capabilities in the coming years. Well, at least I should go to Ada's classes before explaining my situation to her, and maybe she'll understand. Damien didn't want anyone to bother him, so he preferred to attend the introductory classes for a few days to avoid drawing attention. But at that moment, he looked at Luke, who was looking at the roots of a tree not far away. Damien didn't want to run into this kid, but right now, he had to pass by where he was standing on the side, so he had no choice. The thing everyone had to understand was that he was also a frustrated child who seemed to have lost a loved one he needed to vent his inner fury, and it seemed safe to do so with Damien, who hadn't harmed anyone. This world is cruel to everyone Damien couldn't deny it, so he wasn't resentful towards Luke as long as he didn't bother him further. My friend had an unparalleled talent for magic. Luke turned his head towards Damien as he passed by. Damien froze. Is this kid talking to him? So, what are you going to do? I'll kill demons that was my friend's dream, so I'll fulfill it. As for what happened a few days ago, I'm truly sorry I didn't know your parents were great mages who defended a city to their death, and I'm nobody to deny you learning magic. Luke's words made Damien feel somewhat surprised. Could it be that easy? Well, I wasn't resentful towards you, even though I almost left you lifeless. It's not that I wanted to kill or torture you, but rather the accumulation of many unfortunate events. Damien wasn't very good at having these types of conversations he could boast about his quick wit, street smarts, and fearless approach to life because of all the things he had experienced before waking up in this world. He usually behaves meekly when he knows he should, and he's a bit sarcastic knowing that he can control the situation even if it gets out of hand. This time, he knew that Luke was apologizing, but it was certainly something he didn't expect from a kid like him. Most are very foolish morality in this world is very backward in terms of good and evil, so it's a negative point for Damien, who comes from a modern society. At least here, I can't be reported just for sending a text message with an insult. Damien muttered these words, feeling much better. Luke looked at Damien, wanting to see his eyes, but all he could see was the bandage covering his eyes for some strange reason. I won't retract my words if you turn out to be useless, but now that we have the same goals, I would at least like us to not have problems later on. I'm not a resentful person if you want to leave things here, it won't bother me later, so you don't have to worry. Damien knew he wasn't comfortable being friends with people who once wanted to harm him, but he could let go of that hatred or distrust over the years. Luke nodded, bid farewell, 
and went straight to his room with the excuse of clearing his thoughts because he didn't want to be here with Damien anymore. Damien had to thank him for that this conversation was becoming increasingly uncomfortable, so it was for the best. Well, a good thing in the morning. The problem seemed to disappear, but Damien still felt confused. What caused him to be here? He wasn't a fortunate person in his past life he literally ended up in an orphanage at the age of six and was adopted by a family who only wanted him for the government assistance pension. It's not that bad at least there won't be someone to remind me. Damien smiled but didn't really want to his story is sadder than it seems. When he was ten years old, he left his adoptive parents he was with gangs who taught him to steal, and after being caught by the police years later, he was sent to a correctional facility. Since then, he has learned that life isn't fair to people everyone has more luck than others, and that doesn't give anyone the right to commit wrongdoings against others. Those with money live the good life, and those who are poor struggle for food every day, fearing not being able to eat something by the end of the day. When one reaches the stage of understanding life as an adult, that's when they truly appreciate everything in its time. He didn't know what he would do from here in a few years maybe he'll search for that acclaimed fountain of youth to fight for immortality and defend humans as much as he can. Fighting a war that is now mine. Damien mocked with irony, is that really his dream or just his promise to whoever was the owner of his body until recently? But he didn't care he wanted to see many parts of the world, so at least he would give it his all being a good person on the battlefield against demons. Damien's path was about to be written in an unknown direction he didn't know how far he would go, but he would keep moving forward and hope that luck would give him a much better life than before. Instead of living, I will learn to feel. Damien wouldn't live to survive, but to feel things he couldn't before. This battle is his because now this body is his, so he won't allow demons to wreak havoc on the world. Chapter 21 World Continent, Northern Lands, Etwas Mountain Range, Great Unaffiliated Mage Tower. In an area forbidden for mages below first class, it was pregnant with clay sculptures, and in front of what seemed to be a finished work to the eyes of a sixteen-year-old stood a fierce figure that many would consider a demon. Whether he was trained with a sword in his hands or just admiring the masterpiece he had managed to create, the young man with blindfolded eyes and black hair remained still. At that moment, the young mage's eyebrows twitched slightly as he felt a familiar presence coming from outside this area, which is prohibited to most people. He opened his eyes and turned his gaze. There, an elderly man leaning on a cane approached him, waving his hand to greet him. Damien. Calling the young mage with much closeness, the old man approached while smiling. Isn't my creation brilliant, Dom? Damien looked at his humanoid clay figure. This work had taken him three years of his life to complete, and due to its appearance, it was more than four meters tall, taller than an average person. On the sides of its face, it had long wings where the eyes would be, and a long tail extended from behind its head. How much longer will this puppet keep you away? Don't get me wrong you should know that there are only a few days left until you go to the battlefield where magic is required, and you are the mandatory choice to attend that battle. Young Damien had now completely changed not only did he give the impression of having a slender build even though his muscles were hidden under a tunic-like garment, but he also currently stood at 175 centimeters tall. What stood out most about Damien was his long hair style, his skeletal hand, and his blindfolded eyes, which gave him a very calm appearance, but only the mages who knew him closely knew how powerful he had become in just five years. Dom, who had lost his leg two years ago, furrowed his brow at this incisive student who had practically become the heir to his magic. After a moment of silence, he sighed with regret. It's a shame I can't add more regeneration runs I've reached a limit that I won't be able to surpass even after a hundred years. Have you gone that far? Dom approached Damien's sculpture, and with his eyes, he saw not hundreds but thousands of green runes that interconnected all over the body of this creation giving it a powerful regeneration that would be practically impossible to exterminate. In total, I could only put 12,037 magical regeneration runes on top of its head there is a magical item that grants compression adaptation its strength, speed, and body make it a formidable warrior from which I hope many demons will die. Your best creation, I would say the only one. Dom felt breathless as he perfectly aligned all those runes. But I still need the soul of a formidable warrior in hand-to-hand -hand combat maybe I'll find one in my first battle. 
Damien waved his hand, and under the Divine General, a shadow appeared that connected to him, completely hiding him. Are you the only one who hasn't heard that they treat you like a cowardly blind mage? Well, there's nothing I can do. Even the mages who have instructed me over the years don't understand my obsession with creating my perfect puppet. Normally, mages start facing demons when they become fourth-class mages, long before even becoming second-class mages. This is practically like a baptism that all mages have all those who have made a commitment to fight against demons. However, Damien, the cowardly blind mage, was the only exception. Although Damien was now considered the worst mage in the tower, his current strength could be considered that of a first-class mage, but he knew that wasn't enough. And his ambition to create the Divine General of the Eight Divine Leaves was so great that he spent a long time of his life doing it. But now he knew that everything had ended in time, just in time for the battle. Many had died over the years, whether in practice, combat, or the deterioration of the magic they were practicing. The war took many lives day by day, and that wouldn't change no matter how much time passed. As someone who hadn't participated in a battle, everyone would point to Damien as the coward, but only those close to him, like Dom, knew what he was doing and respected that opinion. Well, it seems you look a little more animated. You're still too skilled to be just a third-class mage are you sure you don't want to ascend? What's the point of that? You know everything would be too strange if I suddenly classified as a first-class mage. You know it's not about you, but about the missions you would be subjected to. That's a quick way to die. Die. Damien gave Dom a sharp look, who was his teacher. Doesn't he know he's just a sixteen-year-old fledgling? I can't do anything with intelligent demons over three hundred years old didn't the same thing happen to you? Since when are you so cowardly? Even if we are mages hundreds of years younger than the demons, we are still killing them that surpasses any gauge you have to face or not face an enemy. I'll find the fountain of youth and become immortal. Damien began to rule strangely as he thought about numerous things. Do you know what children call you, Damien? A heretic. You use words that no one else has learned, and you come up with ideas that no one else has thought of. Sometimes, when I see you, you don't seem like someone ordinary. Well, it's no wonder. Damien felt annoyed. Although I'm getting older every day, that won't stop me from giving you a beating. Don't you know that a human can't achieve immortality? Despite Dom's threatening tone, Damien, instead of being scared, laughed even louder. Old man, right now, you can't even beat my puppet once I get a soul that decides to keep fighting, my divine general will be ready to be a demon-killing machine. How long have you been saying the same thing? Upon hearing that, Dom simply turned around to return to the tower. Although Damien didn't reply, he had clearly left his stance against those words. Damien, when do you plan to leave? Damien shuddered at those words. For the first time, his gaze met Dom's. Confusion was evident in his eyes behind the black blindfold. Did you know? Anyone can know that once you touch the north, maybe you won't be able to come back, but that's also there. I wanted to pretend to be dead on the battlefield. Ha ha ha. This time, Dom laughed heartily at Damien's incomprehensible words. While others felt uncomfortable with Dom's smile, Damien knew about his teacher's condition and was aware that he had little time left. After all the preparations you've been making, how could I not know? Did you really think that we, the old ones, wouldn't know what's happening in the tower? There were a few elders in the tower because most had died in battle. Every day, first-class mages are required on the battlefield. The northern battalions depend on this mage tower to support them with outstanding mages, and it is only because of them that this area remains safe. But like everything, it wouldn't be long before all of that ended. Deaths are increasing while humans take longer and longer to train first-class mages. Don't worry about that, old man. You also know, don't you? They consider me a blind and cowardly mage, but when I step onto the battlefield, all of that will change. Damien, this war is too cruel, and if you really don't belong to it, you shouldn't sacrifice yourself. I can see doubt in your eyes ever since you came to my class, you were lost as if you didn't know where you belonged. That left Damien silent. It was true that he didn't know what his purpose in this world was, and he had opted for the simplest thing, committing to exterminate demons to avenge his predecessor's death. 
humans were losing the war, but everything stabilized when the barriers were put up by that mage who brought Damien to this mage tower. Since then, five years had passed Damien had not stopped hiding his magic, leaving a tenth part exposed, and with that magic, he was considered a first-class mage. Dom didn't believe that now Damien was hiding his magic after all, humans can't do that, but he was different, and he knew it very clearly. He trained with the sword, used all the strength of his body to maximize hand-to-hand -hand combat power, and in his spare time, he created his divine general, which is now complete. Knowing now that at least he wouldn't die, Damien would accept going to that remarkable battlefield in the north. Struggling to pronounce the words he didn't dare say, Dom spoke brusquely, swallowing saliva under his chin. What do you really think? I don't know searching for that immortality is just a whim, but still, I trust in achieving it. Wouldn't it be a waste for an incredible mage like me to die of old age? Besides, the battlefield won't disappear for a thousand years, so I hope to achieve something notable. Damien walked towards a tree that seemed too ancient and took a deep breath. Now he was strong, but it was said that there were incredibly powerful beings in the world that couldn't be killed by simple humans, which had given him the need to find what the map recognized as the Fountain of Youth. Where did they send Ada? Damien looked at Dom, who was beside him, and asked, wanting to know more about it. She was sent to the extreme south of the north there is a great city there, so you shouldn't worry about anything happening to her. Dom had carefully studied where the mages would be sent this time. Taking that into account, Damien looked at the thin sword in his hands, which actually weighed more than a hundred kilograms, and smiled strangely. When a mage runs out of mana, they are useless, but we are aware that options will never run out. Not everyone knows how to fight like you. But at that moment, a series of bells rang out, and looking into the distance, Damien noticed a group of humans with wounds on their bodies. Something big must have happened for them to be brought here, so Damien approached to look at these people. Chapter 22 Nomadic Humans Why are they here? Well, who knows? They might be looking for a new habitat or just passing through. What a disgrace! Seeing Damien mutter those words, another man in the group with part of his face bandaged gave him a disapproving look. It's quite inappropriate to use such vocabulary, especially in a delicate situation like this. It truly is a disgrace having to live like this because of the demons is anything but pleasant. What did they face out there? When Damien approached the bandaged man, the latter hesitated and took a step back. Reacting to this, Damien grabbed his shoulder firmly and demanded, Tell me what you faced out there. You're too close are you a mage from this tower? Struggling against Damien's grip a few times, the man finally responded forcefully. Answer me. Ah, well. As if Damien were releasing some pent-up pressure on the wounded man, he trembled a bit and said, Green monsters. What did you say? Damien wasn't sure if they were goblins, dark creatures, or ogres that these people had faced, so he was curious. Many things in this world seemed familiar to him, but he couldn't confirm if his assumptions were correct. But seeing that the man wasn't responding, blue electric sparks erupted from Damien's hand as he smiled in an intimidating manner. The bandaged man didn't know what to believe anymore. Are all the mages from this tower lunatics? Calm down now. Why are you so interested in matters outside the tower when you've never ventured out? Because I'll be going out to the battlefield in a few days. Damien looked at Dom and shouted loudly in protest, which was a bit tense. Huh, you're a damn coward, I see. That's why I haven't offended you in front of those who are criticizing you. Damn it, you've ruined my day. Dom scolded Damien, who was now a bit annoyed. I don't care. Damien turned to the man, who seemed to be a warrior, and asked, So, where did they come from? Although this area may be rural, it's called the Etwas Mountains, and anyone fleeing from a more remote area must be due to a demon attack, right? While this place was protected by a barrier that had been impenetrable so far, everything beyond the barrier had to be known because, in a few days, a group of mages would have to depart to their respective locations where they would settle. Knowing how these people were fleeing didn't inspire much confidence in Damien, who had been very cautious since awakening in this strange world of magic. They're very large green monsters. 
they've defeated most of the soldiers, and only the strongest mages have been able to defeat them so far. The bandaged man responded with sorrow obviously, whatever he had experienced had traumatized him. Could they be orcs? Among all magical beasts and demons, there's nothing classified as an orc, so where did they come from? Damien thought, looking at Dom, and asked, how much do we know about these monsters? We still don't know. We're also not sure about their numbers. It's more likely that only a few are passing through, but there's not much certainty. That's why everyone will wait here for a few days before making a decision about the fate of these people. Is that so? Intrigued, Damien began adjusting the light armor on his arms. Seeing him do that, the bandaged man furrowed his brows and asked, Where are you rushing off to? You're just a kid who hasn't even been on a battlefield. On the battlefield, anyone can die at the hands of another. What makes you think I'm not prepared to slaughter powerful demons on a battlefield? Even if you could, what good would it do if you end up dying like everyone else? Huh, even though I'm human, I won't die without first killing powerful demons and exterminating them until they understand my name. Damien walked towards the mage tower and headed straight to the evaluation area to receive his second class badge, which Syndra had helped him obtain as soon as she ordered it. Even if you can get help here, you'll die once you're assigned tasks that a second class mage can handle and you don't have the talent to fulfill them. That shouldn't concern you just do your damn job and shut up. Damien responded coldly to the woman who attended to him. Damien entered a room similar to a hall where mages were gathered, and one in the front rows asked, Do we know where they're coming from and where they're headed? Barely, they're probably moving from north to south. From north to south, hmm. That was an appropriate answer, but they were at war, and that information wouldn't suffice because they knew how cruel demons were to themselves. Damien, who was in the back row of mages, remembered all the wounds on those men's bodies and said, they're not civilians evacuating their defeated soldiers fleeing from what they saw on the battlefield. Why do you think that? The first class mage looked at Damien and then his badge on his chest before nodding in approval. There was an area in the far north where there was a protected region. Aren't these warriors from that place? Yes, we have records that there was a region belonging to those people in the far north that's true. The mage tower was the most secluded place known in the north they protected the passage to nearby cities and sent first-class mages to war whenever possible. Being isolated from the others, this tower should be a very rarely frequented place and impossible to access unless someone has told them otherwise. Could they be fleeing from some new type of enemy? Eh. This place was relatively safe, as it was nestled in a mountain that was impossible to access without magic. The magical defenses around were also noteworthy, especially for those who came here with ill intentions, so everyone was prepared if an enemy approached the barrier's limits. In fact, Damien had been traveling around the tower in his training to avoid attracting attention. Of course, accessing the magic tower was complicated but not an impossible task. But those green beasts, which Damien was sure were orcs, were described as extremely aggressive and had a large number among their ranks. Well, it's obvious. They're fleeing in this seemingly calm manner to avoid being judged as deserters. It seems they're also traveling with their families, but remember, it's not courtesy but fear. Ho ho. That makes sense. Dom, who had arrived with Damien, nodded in understanding. I see, so they're using us as an escape route rather than just passing through. Sindra, who was sitting at the front of everyone, thought there might be problems. Do we send a team to explore? Now. Damien was a bit puzzled by this decision, which seemed foolish and unintelligent. But we would need a guide from that group to show us the way if scouts were attacked, explorers should have followed them here, and that's a real problem. So I recommend Damien lead this mission. Could we send some other mages to support him? Dom immediately sacrificed his student as soon as he had the opportunity. Sindra nodded and said, then we'll do that. Damn old man. Damien murmured as he smiled and waved at everyone looking at him. Now that he would be sent to the slaughterhouse, at least he would have the opportunity to obtain a soul to complete his avatar and give life to his divine general. The downside was that he didn't know where he was headed. When Damien knew that a group was being formed at this moment, he went directly to where the man with the bandaged face was and handed him a healing potion. 
Drink this I'll need your help later. My help? We're going to hunt down whatever is following them, but before continuing this conversation, I'd like to know your name. Damien extended his hand as he said his own name and waited for a response. The bandaged man sighed and said, My name is Brain Unglaus I'm an adventurer who lost everything. Damien didn't care about what this man had lost what he wanted to know was if he was willing to go back to the battlefield again since he needed a good, experienced guide and wouldn't trust whoever would be assigned to him later on. Chapter 23 Do you know what you're doing? Brian asked Damien, who was leading them through the path the survivors had taken. Damien didn't know what he was doing, but now he was leading five second-class mages, ten third-class mages, and a group of soldiers who would serve as the garrison in case a direct battle with the enemy erupted. His strength at this moment should be superior to that of a first-class mage not only did he contain his mana to a tenth, but also the magical power he didn't contain was enough to be considered a very powerful first-class mage. Damien's talent for magic was incredible, and the black book flying beside him was a spell reader. It not only contained over 200 spells and variations but also allowed him to instantly learn them by reading directly from the black book. It's this way, Brian said, pointing to a blue bloodstain among the branches. Damien knew they had walked a long way, and if they found nothing, it meant the enemy had retreated. Let's head to the northern frontier we'll join a new brigade to support the defenses and ensure these monsters don't breach the border defenses again. Are you sure? Absolutely, that's the secondary mission if we don't encounter enemies on the way. Damien wouldn't risk the people under his command by returning to the tower, so he decided to join the front. Luke silently glanced at Damien and followed without a word, and the others did the same. As news spread about survivors from a region attacked by green monsters, Damien, who led this operation despite his lack of experience, faced much opposition from many mages. Among the most renowned was Luke, a skilled third-class mage who had participated in other battles as an assistant but never as a primary soldier. When everyone was ready, they embarked on a journey whose end was uncertain. On the fourth day after Damien and his group departed, the 8th Brigade of the Northern Coalition Army received military orders to garrison the fortress complex in the mountains near the northern extremities. The Etwas mountain range is 40 kilometers from the Great Tor Canyon and is located west of Lake Corridor. In the midst of the mountains is a road that leads directly to the Great Gore Canyon. Protecting this valley road is equivalent to safeguarding the flanks of the city's defense lines in Orbist. If the mountain's borders cannot be breached and troops are stationed at the Golden Flame Castle, the route where these monsters that Damien classified as orcs, along with the demons, would be halted. If they were to avoid the mountains, they would have to walk an additional 300 kilometers through mountain paths. The demon and orc army consumes a lot of food daily, and the additional 300 kilometer transport route is hard to sustain for the enemy army unless they are undead. Decades ago, Humans built a large fortress in the mountains away from the mage tower, but unfortunately, during the last demon invasion, the fortress group was lost, and a large group of soldiers was annihilated. After the demon army retreated, they destroyed the fortress complex, and although it has been repaired in recent years, only half of the castle can defend itself. The fortress complex houses six squadrons of city defense troops, and nearby are ten first-class mages. The ten first-class mages belonged to different provinces. Some were sent directly from Damien's tower, and others came from nearby cities that constantly supported the established defense line to halt the demons. Of course, there were numerous defense posts, and this was one of them. The combat effectiveness of the Mountain Defense Army was average, much inferior to that of the three main legions. The equipment is relatively deficient, and the number of professionals is also very limited. In total, the six squadrons have about twenty powerful men who, in previous wars, could barely perform garrison duties. None of them could engage demons in direct combat. On the contrary, the troops directly under Baron Hardin's command in the nearest city were very strong. Although there are only about a hundred knights under the Baron's command, the number of professionals exceeds thirty. The remaining soldiers are all elites, and more than half of them have good cavalry skills. In a face-to-face -face fight, their combat effectiveness is comparable to the main force of a legion in the Empire. A group like the 8th Brigade, which has not yet been organized, is not as good as the main legions in battle. After receiving the order, 
the 8th Brigade immediately set out and arrived at the fortress complex in the mountains after a day-long march from morning until night. Damien's group joined them after encountering another type of demon in the area and learning that they had been hunting them for a day. Now that Damien was at the front, there was no need to return, so this would be considered their first battle against the demons. Mages, regardless of what everyone thinks, are the most effective in war. Not only were they outstanding in large-scale battles, but their destructive power was also most significant in each confrontation. Some warriors with exceptional talents can obviously achieve extraordinary strength, enough to match powerful mages, but their combat effectiveness can be matched by skilled demons, which is not the case with mages. According to Brian, the strength of the men in the mountains surpasses that of the men from the central continent. They wore heavy armor and marched fearlessly into battle. If there are supplies and military stations along the way, the main army can easily travel hundreds of miles in a day. Nine large and small forts were built in the mountains beyond the borders to keep the enemy in check. The nine castles are located on both sides of the Etwas mountain range, relatively close to each other, and able to support each other with ballistae and trebuchets. The nine castles vary in size and are garrisoned by varying numbers of border defense troops and main city trade troops. Upon entering wartime, the castle will be taken over by the main army. Including the 7th Squadron, which had just been formed due to being recently destroyed by unknown enemies, the 8th Brigade had less than 8 squadrons of standout soldiers, and Damien's group joined this brigade. Among them, the 7th Squadron has weak combat effectiveness and is slightly better than the City Defense Army. The 6th Squadron was established over half a year ago, has eliminated key members of several old squadrons, and its combat effectiveness is not very strong, slightly weaker than several main squadrons. After taking the defensive castle and accommodating the soldiers, the main officers of the 6th Squadron received orders to go to the central castle for a meeting. Presiding over the meeting was Commander Irwin, who was also the commander of the Etwas Mountain Range Defense Line. In recent days, I led a team to investigate and discovered that the demon army is not far from the defense line and is gathering with another type of monster. Our city defense army, the main army, and the command systems of the private armies of the two barons who have formally joined us are not something that should be led together. Not only do they not train together, they lack tacit understanding, which would weaken us if led by a single command. The castle area is not too large, and food supplies are limited. Therefore, I decided to withdraw all outposts and remain at Baron Hardin's castle in the rear. The 8th Brigade was dispersed and stationed within the nine castles in the frontline defense. The cavalry under my command will roam outside and be responsible for attacking strategic areas to damage the enemy, cooperating with the soldiers of the 8th Brigade to guard the defense line. Erwin looked at everyone and asked, Does anyone have an objection? Commander Erwin had a deep voice and seemed to be a young man, while the man beside him was Hardin, who was over seventy years old and had once served in an attacking army that was exterminated by the enemy. He was born into a declining noble family. After showing his talent in war, he advanced greatly in power and obtained a good title in this war. After the battle broke out, Baron Hardin personally led a reconnaissance team and gradually became a heavyweight in the north. The king placed his fiefdom near the group of fortresses in the Etwas mountain range to rely on his strength to stabilize the defense lines of the larger cities. He had killed many demons in recent days, so the enemy's situation was well known. Although Erwin's tactical arrangements were impressive, they were quite stable. The 8th Brigade had just arrived and was not yet familiar with the enemy's situation, so naturally, no one would give random opinions. The meeting ended. The next day, Damien was preparing to practice some attack spells when suddenly the sound of a horn was heard in the distance. Damien quickly ran to the foot of the city wall. When he climbed the defensive wall, he saw spirals of smoke and dust rapidly approaching the castle complex. Damien looked carefully. At first glance, he found that an army of thousands of orcs had arrived nearby. These orcs should be the vanguard of the army. They scattered quickly, dividing into three teams and attacking fortresses one to three in the front. The first fortress is located at the northernmost part of the valley road. At the foot of the mountains is the forward castle, which is relatively large. On the other hand, the second fortress is located on the mountainside above the first fortress and is smaller in scale, 
but the arrows shot from the first fortress can effectively reinforce the defenses of the first fortress. The third fortress is located in the mountains on the east side of the valley. The mountains on the east side are low and gentle, tens of meters high, and stretch for over 10 kilometers deep. It is typical mountainous terrain. The three castles also form the frontline defense. Among them, the first castle is the focus of defense. Captain Sharp Varla organized the garrison of the 3rd Squadron in one of the main fortresses. The number of veterans exceeds 80%, and combat effectiveness is considerable. The one stationed in the 2nd Fortress is the 5th Squadron. The three frontline squadrons have been reinforced with over 10 sharpshooters. The 3rd Fortress is garrisoned by the 6th Squadron, which is less stressed in the frontline defense. When the Demon and Orc army approached, the 6th Squadron was already prepared, with each squadron standing in its designated position and the reserve team already in place, ready to support at any moment. Damien is the deputy leader of the squadron, and the command position is at the front. The squadron leader sends troops and coordinates the overall situation, and the squadron deputy leader, Brian, is in charge of commanding the reserve team to check for any breakthroughs in the line. Commander Irwin watched everything from a distance of thousands of meters. With the direct team's protection, the leader of the army, Priest Ed, set up a simple rescue center on the battlefield, ready to treat the wounded at any time. Ed is a second-level priest his mental power can release spells to treat minor injuries about a hundred times a day. Although it's called minor injury treatment, the effect is outstanding. Damien had learned simple spells and knew this type of magic was suitable for an army. Even if internal organs were injured, bleeding could be quickly stopped. In Damien's opinion, the healing magic's effect was better than going to a hospital in his past life. The captain of the priest's healing abilities quickly treated the wounded. When common soldiers were injured, they could only get a simple bandage. Chapter 24 Your name is Damien. That's right, Commander. Hmm, I met your parents fifteen years ago, and I must say they were incredibly skilled mages. Thanks to their great feats, Hundreds of thousands of lives were saved in the major northern cities. If you're here at this age, it means you've inherited your parents' talent. Erwin looked directly at Damien and recognized the ring on his right hand. You'll be the captain of the 6th squad of the 8th brigade. I hope to see how good you are at leading. I don't think I'm quite good enough, but if I follow my intuition, I'll do things right. Erwin smiled upon hearing these words but said nothing, watching as Damien bid farewell. Upon realizing that Damien was not blind, he was truly surprised. At the top of the castle walls, Damien looked around and spotted Luke standing atop the city, looking nervous and grim. Hayden's team was a reserve team under Brown's command, but because the city wall blocked the view, Damien couldn't see the specific situation at the front. Not long after, hundreds of orcs rushed toward defensive post number 3 in a scattered formation. There were about three squads of the demon army rushing alongside the orcs. The types were relatively mixed, including not only the heavy infantry, which were monsters with huge limbs that Damien had seen before, but also lower-level units like weaker demons. It was suspected that the enemy leader was a demon general of the demon king. The flames of battle constantly hovered in the air, seemingly trying to engulf the city within the walls of the third fortress. Enemy mages cooperated with ground attacks to reinforce their positions. Wow, the demons are actually concentrating their attack focus on the third fortress. For the first time in all these months of fighting, they've strengthened their special units. Damien was surprised and immediately ordered a messenger to request reinforcements at the third fortress. The squad leader who was called was also very decisive he immediately believed in Damien's judgment and sent the reserve team to the city's first line of defense. He also sounded the horn for reinforcements to the rear to bolster the abandoned areas. With his keen vision, Damien discovered that there were more than twenty large demons attacking the third fortress. Four demon summoners were conjuring dark creatures, a dozen powerful demons in close combat handling weapons, and another dozen magic-wielding demons. If this group of demons were allowed to enter the third fortress, the squad stationed there would be wiped out, and the defenses would soon crumble. But at that moment, before Damien could think too much, when he saw a demon enter his line of sight, he raised his hand and formed an arc of lightning that shot powerful lightning bolts, 
firing the first arrow. This Indra's arrow was a powerful spell of Damien's exclusively for assassination, so using it alarmed all the soldiers in the fortress he led. The arrow he shot caught everyone's attention because it was an extremely destructive power rarely seen displayed in such a flashy way, surprising everyone. As he held that electric arc, Damien's body flashed with a blue light, his hair waving in the wind, and a huge amount of mana gathering subtly in his body. One down. Damien muttered as he saw a large ravine form that had killed more than a dozen powerful demons and didn't stop. This spell, called Indra's Arrow, was one of Damien's most powerful long-range attack spells. He knew that the damage would increase if he used more mana, but that was unnecessary as it would reveal too much of his power. As a primitive weapon, the bow and arrow were one of the most efficient ways to kill someone from a distance, and doing it with a magical spell was something amazing that had never been seen before. This Indra's arrow was aimed at the largest demon. The arrow pierced the air, emitting electric sparks that passed through numerous bodies, emitting a screeching sound, and the impact caused much more extensive damage than expected. The demon that had just been shredded by lightning caused a chain reaction, killing hundreds more and injuring others nearby. What a powerful attack! Brain felt his legs tremble at the brutal attack Damien had unleashed. Not only was Damien frightening with his skeletal hand, but hiding his eyes also gave him an air of mystery. Send all the mages to the third fortress. I'll take care of protecting this place on my own. Damien looked at Brian beside him, and Brian nodded. During these last five years, Damien had trained very hard every day, especially naturally concealing 90% of his magical power and learning all the spells his parents had left him as an inheritance. His efforts were not in vain, and as he had just shown a moment ago, his spells were very powerful, to the point that few could do the same in the same way he did. The war was tense, and after receiving more news from the battlefield, Damien refocused on the battle that was now raging outside the first three fortresses. Damien didn't need a magical staff his ring served that purpose, so he didn't worry about the accuracy of his spells and the precision with which he attacked. The Indra's arrow he had just shot passed through the walls of the third fortress, threatening the demons with great precision. Veteran mages who had been in the army for many years had extraordinary precision skills with their spells, and according to Damien's estimation, many of them were highly experienced in long-range combat. There were some powerful mages right now on this battlefield whose long-range magical spell skills could rival Damien's. Boom! 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 Damien didn't stop when a demon entered his field of vision and shot electric arrows that not only burned their bodies but also broke their limbs. Aim with the long crossbows. Eight heavy arrows aimed at a goat-headed man who seemed to have a powerful physique, and in an instant, two arrows pierced his lower limbs, four arrows hit his torso, and the other two missed. This was the work of more than a dozen veteran warriors from the six squads stationed at the third fortress, and although they were not very experienced, they had been trained for a long time to fight demons. Most of these people were team captains, deputy captains, and served as base officers. Several of them joined forces to attack and cooperated very well, killing very powerful demons. In a chaotic battlefield, soldiers with small skills were just cannon fodder and had very little value in battle. There were powerful enemy spell attacks and arrows being returned, making the demons desire to attack even stronger. The archers continued to deploy their bows and arrows, firing continuous rounds of arrows. Each barrage would take out more than a dozen demon soldiers. After three rounds of barrage, the demons and the undead were being massacred, but on the allied side, many soldiers had died, and this ultimately affected the performance on the battlefield. After three rounds of arrow rain, the demon army was already fifty meters from the wall of the third fortress. Demons with horns were casting spells, and others were hurling giant rocks toward the top of the walls. The rocks fell, immediately injuring and killing some soldiers, causing a trail of chaos on the walls of the other fortresses. Even Damien's chest was hit by a rock, causing severe pain, and his body was covered in dust. Damien endured the pain, opened his eyes wide, and stared at the battlefield. He saw a recruit whose legs were weak and who seemed about to drop his weapon. Damien kicked him hard, with a fierce look in his eyes, and shouted, shoot arrows and don't let those demons intimidate you. Any sign of desertion will be met with immediate death. 
no one is allowed to leave this battlefield. If it were my case, don't forget to raise your swords against me. Although Damien was a child, the magical circles around him that unleashed chaos in the demon forces gave him the authority to speak, and he shouted, this is my first battle, but we will eliminate all the demons. Damien shouted loudly from the top of the wall. A dozen experienced veterans knew that at that moment, morale could only rise so their movements wouldn't dull they shouted loudly while continuing to attack. Two more rounds of arrows were fired, killing more than thirty demons. At that moment, the demons that had infiltrated reached the walls where Damien was leading. A demon skillfully pushed aside his companions, slightly moved his body, and leaped with all his might toward the wall. At the same time, he waved his hand, and a blood spell shot toward the humans at the edge who kept shooting arrows. This demon that had just cast a spell was very powerful, and with his jump, he had reached an astonishing height that reached halfway up the wall, giving him the opportunity to connect his spell and giving time to the other demons to climb the wall. The demon with two horns on his head thrust large ice spikes into the wall, paving the way for the other demons as he climbed. Damien, who was at the forefront, created a magical shield and also ordered the vanguard shields to step forward. Those who received subsequent attacks, even though their metal shields bent, still protected the archers repelling the demons. But some of the blood spikes hit some soldiers, burning their skin and causing them agonizing suffering. Injured soldiers who can walk quickly help their comrades down. Medical soldiers request antidotes from the priests and treat the wounded quickly. Brian didn't panic, and he took command of the vanguard. He pushed the soldiers, whose skin was peeling off their bodies, to come down from the wall. At the same time, Damien began to unleash powerful lightning attacks, but at that moment, an enemy mage launched a dark ray toward the wall. The ray pierced the wall and immediately killed five soldiers. Even Brian was hit by the ray his armor was damaged, and he fell to the ground, unable to move. Damien waved his hands, and clouds began to form in the sky. The next moment, muttering powerful words, lightning struck beneath the wall. Roar. Chapter 25 Ah! Brian had been knocked down with a single enemy spell the impact, although not direct, had melted him and part of his armor. Brown, who was another officer in charge at the fortress where Damien was, began to repel the attacks of the demons and those strange green monsters that Damien recognized as orcs. Just after the demons were being exterminated by Damien's lightning bolts, it seemed that everything was going well until a rather cunning demon figured out how to deal with some people. That dark-skinned demon was thrown upward by a group of orcs, and through attraction magic, it dragged Brown and two more veterans outside the fortress wall. Each of the soldiers who had been thrown out stood up, and in the blink of an eye, they were torn apart by the claws of the demons that ended up tearing them into a thousand pieces. I need you to get the wounded out. Damien didn't want to increase the power of his spells because it would damage the wall and change the course of the battle that was going well. Damien's eyes closed for a few seconds in pain as he watched Brown being besieged. The time he spent with these captains was not much, but seeing them die that way was difficult to accept. But in a state of war, friendship not only arises quickly but also proves extraordinary. If Brown hadn't stepped forward at that moment, it would have been Damien who would have ordered people to get Brian off the wall. Brown died at the hands of the enemy, but Damien was still alive, and that's all that mattered to continue fighting this bitter war he was only now discovering what it was like. Faced with the tragic deaths of his comrades, Damien couldn't remain indifferent at all he instantly lost his composure and clenched his fists as a fire spell descended from the sky. At the same time, Damien's body filled with electricity, and he took a few steps back, drew his thin but heavy sword, and rushed at great speed toward the powerful demon that had managed to climb the wall. That demon was fighting a dozen soldiers with his back to Damien. But in the face of Damien's enormous presence, as fast as lightning itself, the demon didn't notice him in time. The battlefield was very chaotic, with swords, spears, spells, and halberds rumbling everywhere, making it difficult to sense each presence around. The demon in heavy armor who had just killed three soldiers was about to continue his massacre when Damien appeared behind him and swung his sword fiercely from the side. The impetus along with the lightning made splitting this demon in half too easy, and with the impact's thrust, that demon was shot out of the wall. Clang! After killing that huge body demon, 
Damien waved his hand, and numerous fireballs descended below the wall like meteorites. Boom! 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 At the most critical moment of the war, it was so urgent and intense that no one could relax for a single minute. Damien's only hope was that this would all end as quickly as possible. Have the archers on both flanks and the shields in the center. Damien could see the battlefield better, so he knew the best combat positions perfectly well. Besides, at this moment, the clerics were climbing up right now because taking the wounded down was taking longer than expected. At these moments, Damien, who cared less and less about containing his spells, swept across the battlefield, and his lightning bolts descended from the sky as if it were the end of the world. Among all this battle, now the ones who had suffered the most casualties were the 6th, 4th, and 5th squadrons facing the enemy's confined army. The deputy leader of the squadron, Brown, fell off the wall and died. Also, 9 squadron captains died, 2 were critically injured, and 7 fell in combat. The brutal battle had weakened the legs of most soldiers, and the 6th squadron was about to collapse. A long horn sounded in the distance, and reinforcements finally arrived from the rear after General Irwin called for support from the main army. Leading the reinforcements was Deputy Captain Sally, who was an extremely powerful warrior. The reinforcements amounted to more than 5,000 soldiers and 200 mages, and all this help was enough to repel the demon's attack. The demon army was being expelled from the central zone behind the first three fortresses, but knowing that the cavalry was entering the battlefield, Damien stopped. The soldiers riding their horses shot out from behind against the demons and the orcs that looked like rabid dogs. The officer in charge of this cavalry was Baron Hardin, the supreme commander of the defense line in the non-mountainous area. Baron Hardin killed a monster that had been controlled by the demons as soon as he entered the formation of these enemies. None of the orc warriors he encountered on the way could stop him, even for a moment. In a short time, more than six orcs and three demons died at his hands, including a demon who seemed to have more rank among the others. Being suppressed by the humans' cavalry, the formation of the demons completely collapsed. Baron Hardin led his knights and followed the demons without hurry, killing the solitary orcs. The orcs suffered more and more losses, lost their organization, and soon casualties exceeded half compared to the demons. They all ran wildly, avoiding the path and escaping into the jungle. The knights were about to dismount and pursue when Baron Hardin raised his left hand and said, The situation in the forest is unknown. Maybe the demons have prepared an ambush. Do not pursue them. The cavalry lined up in response to the order and turned to eliminate the enemies still on the battlefield. They won the first battle, but there was no joy in Damien's feelings. Walking along the walls, Damien knew that many of these people had lost their loved ones people with bright smiles that would never appear again. Severed heads, pierced hearts, and limbs on the ground were scattered along the walls, and that heavy smell of blood spread around. Damien arrived where Brian was a priest was helping him, but his magic seemed to do nothing more than relieve his pain. What's happening? I can't save him. The priest looked at Brian, who had half of his armor melted over his body, but his hand was still holding his sword. Damien kneeled beside Brian and took his hand this man was twice his age but now was on the brink of death. What do you want me to do? Nothing I had no family, and my friends who are now dead, I'll soon see them. Boy, you shouldn't be here this is the work of adults. Brian looked Damien in the eyes, conveying everything he felt in these moments. Damien, who had no expression, asked Brian, do you want to keep fighting? I want to keep helping humanity I promised all my comrades many years ago. Then I need your will. Damien waved his hand, and a terrifying magical power began to emanate from his body. In a few moments, a blue gas came out from around him, and he said, just let yourself be guided I'll give you a powerful body in which you can fight. Brian didn't respond his eyes were guided to a white light, and he soon died amidst the curiosity of where he would be sent after his death. Damien, who had captured Brian's soul, held it in his hands, pulled out a metal object, and put it inside, sealing it with great magic power. I didn't expect it to be this way. With Brian's soul in his hands, he suppressed the painful feelings that sprang up in his heart and led the other soldiers to clear the battlefield. There were hundreds of bodies to be picked up from the battlefield, demons to be incinerated, 
and enemies to still be exterminated. Some of the orcs were captured, and as soon as the demons were all killed. As magicians, they must investigate, create new spells, and make them effective against enemies who have declared their war against humans. As many squadrons of the eight that were in the 8th Brigade had resulted in monstrous casualties, one of them had been almost completely exterminated. It was Baron Hardin's cavalry regiment that played a decisive role. Everyone will share some of the merits of this battle. After the war, Baron Hardin again summoned all the remaining officers. In addition to the knights under the Baron's command and the officers of the 8th Brigade, there are also officers from the squadron of the city's defense army and superiors. Have the losses been counted? Baron Hardin turned his head and asked his assistant. Three men of the cavalry regiment died two of them died, and one was seriously wounded after the battle, but nothing could be done. One of the dead was a warrior who was aspiring to become a commander. One of the three main warriors was wounded. Who? Richard. Damien, as leader of the newly sent magicians, had heard of the meeting but was not required to look at Erwin from afar, who was sitting in silence studying the map on the table while Hardin was talking to his assistant. How's Richard's injury? At least he will rest for three months his back is almost broken in half. Richard is the nephew of Baron Hardin, a quite powerful knight, and his combat skills can rival those of Hardin in his youth. When the cavalry regiment attacked the army of demons and orcs, Richard was besieged by four demons. He fell from the war horse and was immobilized by his armored horse, almost dying on the battlefield. In the midst of a war, even experienced soldiers can die from the stupidest mistakes. Baron Hardin stood down, turned to his assistant, and asked him, how is the situation of the 8th Brigade? The captain in charge stood up and said, four squadrons have resulted in losses, but only the sixth chaos is exterminated, as far as the rest were not affected. As soon as he had finished speaking, Baron Hardin suddenly felt unhappy and said in a loud voice, I want detailed figures of drops. Although the Baron said nothing too unpleasant, the captain named Gazef was still sweating abundantly. He quickly summarized the situation of each squadron, stood up for the second time, and said seriously, the six squadron suffered the most serious casualties, with 348 dead. Nine were seriously injured, and 26 were slightly wounded. The total number of casualties is more than 2,378 soldiers. Is the 8th squadron newly formed in its entirety? Baron Hardin reacted quickly. Immediately after hearing the figures of defeats, he understood that one of the squadrons had been reformed in its entirety. Deputy Captain Sally stood up and replied, the 6th squadron's training time was only 9 months, but we transferred more than a dozen key veterans and shortened the training time. It cannot be regarded as a new squadron. Of course, the effectiveness of combat is not worse than that of other squadrons. What are the officers' grades? The deputy head of the Brown Squadron is dead. The deputy leader of the Damien Squadron is a magician who is considered to be of the first class. Baron Hardin asserted, deploy the best soldiers of the city's defensive army. Repeat the 6th Squadron. What about the other squadrons? The third squadron had six dead and a total of seventeen minor and serious wounded. The soldiers stationed in the rear fortresses have not been attacked. Chapter 26 It was known that although Baron Hardin's title was still relatively low, his strength was very strong. Although he had retired from the position of Legion commander, leaving Erwin in charge, he remained a heavyweight officer in the north, responsible for commanding cavalry operations on the front lines. They had influence in Tur, the city east of Oberst, and had a wide range of good military resources. Baron Hardin knew that some mages in Tur had been conducting blood experiments on captured orcs. Especially the Royal Magic Laboratory required an extremely large number of experimental subjects, so living orcs were more valuable than dead ones. Common orcs could also be used to manufacture experimental supplies and serve as slave labor. Let the priests accompanying the army do their best to treat the wounded orcs without fear of consuming mana as long as they can live, it is more than enough for us. All the demons in their place were killed they were not needed alive, so there was no reason to capture them, and they had all been killed on the battlefield. But orcs were different they had been appearing more and more frequently in the north, so they needed to know what they were before going into battle against them. 
Damien discovered that after a large-scale battle like the one he participated in, there was a long time given to report the merits of the battle, reward those who did a good job, and boost morale. Baron Hardin knew that the casualties of the Lactaba Brigade were already considerable, especially the 6th Squadron, the main force in this battle. Which suffered more than half of its casualties and lost its combat effectiveness with no possibility of repair in the next two years. Now, rewarding meritorious service could stabilize army morale. The statistics of a legion's military achievements are very complicated. Each squadron has a military judge responsible for recording merits. Specifically for small squadrons and those who are part of them, each soldier's meritorious service will be recorded and then made public in the squadron's headquarters. The list of meritorious service personnel will also be posted on the wall for everyone to monitor and see if any officer has taken away their battle merit. And interestingly, the established method for measuring rewards was very curious. Soldiers' merit is calculated based on the count of enemies eliminated, first level demons, the reward for eliminating demons of the lowest level is one merit. Second level demons, the reward for eliminating second level demons is two merits. Third level demons, the reward for eliminating third level demons is three merits. Fourth level demons, the reward for eliminating a fourth level demon is an unknown grimoire. Fifth level demons, the reward for eliminating a fifth level demon is a grimoire of a magical spell and gold coins. Sixth level demons, the reward for eliminating sixth level demons, who in this case would be direct servants of Phonios, would be three grimoires and a small fortune in gold. 7th level demons, the reward for eliminating 7th level demons would be high level merits, an ancient grimoire, and a fortune in gold. 8th level demons, the reward for eliminating 8th level demons is 5 great merits, ancient grimoires, and a great fortune in gold. 9th level demons, the reward for eliminating 9th level demons is the title of baron, grimoires, and a great fortune. Killing a 9th level demon would earn you the worthy title of baron, but eliminating demons more powerful than them might lead to the possibility of obtaining the title of hereditary count. At the level of hereditary counts, they were already at the top of the pyramid in this northern realm. It was known that in the northern kingdom, which had a dominant area of two million square kilometers, there were a total of seven dukes, four marquises, and eight counts. Including the royal family, there were only twenty hereditary families in the ruling class. In the last hundred years, no low-ranking noble in the kingdom has been promoted to hereditary count because they have not expanded their territory or achieved any commendable victories. In the recorded history of the continent, no common soldier has ever killed a demon king's general and been granted the title of hereditary count. Soldiers who can kill legends in war are basically extremely powerful first-level mages or warriors who have been trained for dozens of years without displaying their power. And if they are in the army, they should at least be a general. Demons from the north invade human territories whenever they have the opportunity. In the last hundred years, no mage or warrior has killed a demon king's general. It is extremely difficult to kill one of the demon king's top subordinates in a war with thousands of other demons. Unless you have precise information and prepare an ambush in advance, only then can you dream of success. In addition to recording merits in the head, when the army wins a battle, Superiors will also ask for merits from officers who have made outstanding contributions that are not counted in the established parameters of rewards for elimination. For example, in this fortress defense operation, Mage Damien, who was in charge of the 7th Squadron, ordered all his mages to support Fortress No. 3, and just for that, they held out until the end with a larger number of survivors. Based on the results of this battle, it is not difficult to approve it. For the military merit gained by cooperating to kill the enemy, the military judge will also count the contribution, divide the proportion, and turn it into a portion of gold coins, rewarding those who contributed less. Killing a demon with long-range crossbows or bows will give the soldier one-tenth of military merit. Each squadron's special equipment, such as fire arrows, catapults, and manpower, must also be recommended with military merit. There are wars in the northern region all year round, where humans and demons compete for the right to survive. If humans lose the war, their parents, wives, and children will become slaves and even food for the demons. Many brutal demons have the habit of cannibalism. 
In such an environment, it is necessary to have a strong legion stationed in the northern region outside the cities to be aware of the enemy's strength and also to seek its extermination. Years of war have slowed the decline of armies in the north. Most hereditary nobles whose fiefs are in the north are strong and brave and have rich experience in large-scale warfare against demons. If the first generation of heirs is not good enough, it will be difficult for the title to be transmitted correctly. Hereditary nobles facing demon attacks in frontline areas are almost all first-class military nobles and have quite strong combat effectiveness. With their military feats, the influence of northern nobles has become very great. Many branches of the northern nobles are also expanding into other regions. Northern nobles have the strongest voice in the nobles' council and almost always answer each other without paying attention to the king. The most important thing in forming a strong army is fairness in rewards and punishments. The three main legions of the north can maintain overall fairness by rewarding merit. The seventh squadron suffered many casualties in this battle, which can be considered an outstanding achievement. In the battle to defend the city, the 6th squadron suffered more than half of its casualties in high-ranking officers but did not collapse. The fortress held firm and laid the groundwork for victory in the battle. If the 7th squadron collapses, demons will take over the scepter fortress. Baron's cavalry regiment would lose its chance to attack, and the first line of defense for the other fortresses would lose its foothold. In this battle, the 7th squadron can be considered the first success. Additionally, the captain of the 7th squadron killed thousands of demons, including 5th level and higher demons, so the exchange ratio between them and the enemy was also very good. This kind of solid merit will normally be approved by the Legion headquarters. And indeed, just a few days after the merit report document was sent, the Legion headquarters approved it. Damien has been rewarded with high-level merits and a great fortune in gold coins. The mages under his command, such as Luke, gained many rewards on this occasion. Additionally, as a squadron, they gained collective merit that could be exchanged for weapons or magical materials. After discussing with the only high-ranking officer in charge of the vanguard, Damien decided to replenish damaged weapons and obtain enchanted fire arrows. There are only three sharpshooters in the squadron. The basic archery skills of these sharpshooters are first class, which is enough for them to make great contributions on the battlefield. Fortunately, these archers were protected by heavy knights and did not die in battle, so it was very beneficial for them to have good bows, as they would form a special archer squadron. When basic archery skills reach a certain level, they can already be considered unparalleled talents. It is very troublesome to transfer people from any squadron for fear of taking away the best soldiers they have. Replenishing squadron's weapons requires little effort. After discussing the remaining seven minor achievements of the squadron, Damien and the officer plan to exchange them for various low-level enchanted armors for valuable sub-officers to wear. In this battle, team leader casualties were too high. More than half died or were injured, and there was no one available to lead. Even Brian, whom Damien trusted, had died in battle only Luther, who was one of the soldiers in the vanguard who had come with him to the battlefield, remained. In addition to his significant merits, Damien also had merits for killing enemies. During the battle, Damien killed what is estimated to be a sixth-level demon and cooperated with the vanguard to kill another demon of unknown level. Additionally, he also shot powerful thunder arrows that eliminated important targets in the battle. Many of the true contributions are not counted as meritorious acts but sometimes these are summarized, so for private merit, he received five great merits, a fortune in gold, and grimoires of different natures. In this case, among all mages, Damien took first place in this battle by a wide margin. Dimitri, the captain of the second squadron, made the second largest contribution, but unfortunately, he had already died on the city wall. The dozen remaining soldiers played an auxiliary role and did not effectively kill high-level demons they only participated in the battle to support their subordinates. Finally, Erwin discussed this with the soldiers and decided to let Damien get the battle merit and then give each of the dozen soldiers three gold coins as a reward. Additionally, he also needed to spend thirty gold coins to provide pensions to the families of those who died. Counting the 30 gold coin pension issued by the Legion, 60 gold coins, if not wasted, would have been enough for many families to live on for many years. 
After this battle, Damien gained numerous spell books that he was not interested in, but as a mage, he had to have his own collection, so he kept them. Luke and the other mages did not make significant or notable contributions. But if they are lucky enough to survive this war, they should be able to obtain a commemorative medal for defending this mountain range. Obtaining medals is accumulating qualifications when you rise in the future, medals and achievements are the greatest capital in the human kingdom. Damien hasn't spoken to Luke for a long time during the past few years, he had been studying magic and training at night, so he missed many public classes at the magic tower. Additionally, after the first six months, each mage would have to forge their own path as far as they could with their own efforts. Chapter 27 The sixth and seventh squadrons suffered heavy casualties, making them unique as future defenders of the third fortress, which is currently under reconstruction. They were all brought to the castle, where Hardin awaited with his troops, along with part of the main army of the north. Hardin's castle is 30 kilometers west of the mountains, forming an obtuse triangle with the castle and the other two main castles where troops were stationed. The group of main fortresses that fought on the front line today is now in the rear, guarded by the defense forces of the nearby second line city. After the 6th and 7th squadrons were transferred, on Baron Hardin's orders, the city's defense army immediately mobilized soldiers to supplement the formation. This group of additional soldiers is elite due to their strength. There is also a master archer whose archery skills have reached targets from 3,000 meters with an enchanted crossbow, and he is one of the main eyes relied upon on the front line. The new soldiers were undoubtedly the best that humans could produce, with their magical shields and magic swordsmen capable of fighting demons in close combat. Damien rode on a war horse towards the rear with his soldiers, thinking that now his divine general was complete and could be used in battle. Should I have been more assertive? Damien thought behind his tunic that covered his entire face. The only thing visible was his skeletal hand because his right hand was covered by a leather glove. The cold in the outbreak was intense, causing many deaths due to weather-related causes. He was told that he was now the captain of the magical group of the 6th and 7th squadrons, having control over two squadrons due to his great feats in the morning battle. A man named Ron is a subordinate officer, and after the battle, the priest will tend to his serious wounds. After using the healing technique, most of his wounds have recovered, and now he can move normally. If he continues resting for about ten days, he will almost fully recover. In this battle, Damien, who knew that his combat skills needed to be reinforced, thought of some other spells that could have been more effective in this morning's battle. I am not only strong but also skilled, but I still have a lot to improve in my combat experience and how to kill in a much more effective way, Damien thought as he looked at his slender sword in his left hand. Luke, who was riding beside him, did not speak a word, even though the differences he felt towards Damien had been resolved he felt strange addressing someone he once hated. Of course, this didn't stop him from asking a question, if you were so strong, why didn't you go to the battlefield with Ada? Damien, who heard this question, did not respond immediately, but after a few minutes, he said, have you seen how they look at us? We are just children in their eyes. What do you think those men feel when they see us fighting the same battle they want to keep their children from participating in? That answers my question. It answers it well. Just think about it, fighting at 14 years older you think it will make a difference? I don't think so. It won't make a difference in this war unless you're the most powerful human mage in this world, Damien said as he looked at his hands with different thoughts from those around him. In recent days, Damien has been training hard and has gained some combat experience, something he had not done before. He has improved a lot since then and is learning a better way to kill every day. However, there is still a long way to go to make progress. Especially in his mana suppression method, which is related to both his physical strength and the amount of magical power he uses daily. If he practices the breathing method step by step, it may take two to three years to advance to levels where he may not be surpassed by any human. A mage's combat effectiveness is based on mana quantity and magical power, while warriors handle sufficient strength and heavy weapon handling. As the mage or warrior level increases, mainly mana, experience, and strength increase. A good breathing method, good martial arts, or incredible training make that person much stronger than they have ever dreamed. Even if the training is mediocre, talent prevails. 
Prodigies learn in a few days what a common person learns in 10 or 20 years of their life. Imagine that with demons who can live thousands of years against humans, this battle is a matter of time before they start losing. It is rumored that the training techniques practiced by the three northern armies are all techniques treasured by royal families. It seemed like they were on the right track until the demons knew about it, improved, and crushed them. The power evolution between humans and demons is very different, which now puts demons at a disadvantage. This is why mages are most effective in massacring demons their spells are what keep this war somewhat stalled. The top priority is to improve his experience in magical combat, maximize his effectiveness in each of his movements, and be a better leader than he currently is. Damien now had his divine general, but he feared it would be mistaken for a demon if he openly summoned it on the battlefield. Fortunately, it was not necessary to summon it now because they were holding the center of the battle very well. After that, the sixth squadron had been resting at Castle Harden, and Damien had made some improvements to his divine general, such as increased weight, agility, and strength. In this way, the sixth squadron spent ten days at leisure. But on the last day, they received news that demons were aggressively attacking the fortresses. This time, there were up to two and a half brigades of demons in the Orc countryside, trying to break through the fortresses to reach the city. Three of the eight squadrons were moved to the rear fortresses to maintain maximum defense, ensuring that the fight could continue steadily. In the last two or three days, the battles on the front lines have been very tense. Danian found that the number of wounded soldiers withdrawn from the front line had increased significantly, with the total number exceeding 3,000. Among the wounded were members of Baron Hardin's cavalry regiment. Talking to the wounded, Damien heard that Baron Hardin once again led a team to charge into battle, killing the sixth-level demon and defeating the main orc brigade, only then stabilizing the battle line and repelling the invaders. After two defensive operations, the eighth brigade had suffered 2,000 casualties in total. Although not a centimeter of ground was lost on the front line, relying on the eighth brigade to resist, it was already difficult to support the defense line. The orcs also began to cross the mountains and infiltrate the rear grounds where Hardin was stationed. The incoming news kept changing. At one moment it was said that Baron Hardin was preparing to leave the rear complex, and the next, it was said that Baron Hardin insisted on holding on and waiting for reinforcements. Whether true or false, the wounded soldiers who withdrew feared everything they said even Damien, who was personally present in the battle, was a bit confused. In Baron's castle, besides the 7th Squadron, there are several city defense squadrons stationed there. Additionally, Baron Hardin also left behind several officers, leading a part of the servant army to protect his family. The city defense army not only lacked enchanted equipment, but each squadron had only a dozen soldiers practicing unknown combat techniques. The backbone of the city defense army was transferred to complement the 6th Squadron, but again, tension rose. Several combined squadrons cannot defeat one squadron of the main army. Even if the 6th squadron had just completed their replenishment, a single charge led by Damien could end up losing a dozen soldiers. The combat effectiveness of the city defense army was already very poor, and what was even worse were the servant soldiers. The servant soldiers in the castle were not even fully equipped with weapons. Many of them had shovels and forks for manure, and very few had armor and bows and arrows. Except for a few officers who looked good, they were useless against demon attacks. They are just dead meat, Damien muttered as he looked at his long sword in his hand. He now understood what it was like to participate in a war and how badly they were treated as a human race. He knew that if it weren't for the barriers that the mage flam had placed over the main cities, they, as humans, would have already been exterminated. Chapter 28 Mage Lord, they say the route being used to mobilize the wounded has been neutralized by the demons. Damien, who was holding a small cat with strange ears that kept biting his left hand, said, I already told you, I'm still using these bones I can't give them to you to eat. Meow. Mage Lord. Damien turned around and nodded. I've heard it. Now what we need is a plan to eliminate those demons and regain control of the supply line with the border fortresses. It was hard to tell if the news was true or false. 
To stabilize the emotions of the soldiers and civilians, 7th Squadron Vanguard leader Luther called all the main officers of the castle who were currently stationed here. When Damien, Owen, and other officers arrived, Luther said very directly, I just received news that the passage between Castle Harden and Fortress Group A has been cut off. The wounded soldiers who retreated were massacred by the demons. Only three people managed to escape, and thanks to that, we know. I sent scouts in the morning, but they haven't returned yet. They were probably killed by demons on the way. In the past few days, the war on the borders seems to have changed a lot. If we don't regain that supply line, it's only a matter of time before the fortresses are taken by the enemy, and that also means the fall of Baron Harden. Luther chose not to hide all the information he knew and told it as he received it. In such a critical moment, hiding it is not necessarily a good thing and also serves no purpose. Squadron Captain, if the front line changes, we must make plans in advance. The location of Castle Harden is very important. Relying solely on one of our troops to protect it may not withstand the demon attacks if they decide to attack us. The soldiers were being massacred, and Owen behaved very surprised his face turned pale at first, then a little angry. He had eyes full of a desire for revenge, as if there was nothing else in his plans. The 7th Squadron, which merged with what was left of the 6th, had just made a very important contribution and had rested for a few days unexpectedly, now they might be in danger again. I've sent a messenger to pass the news to Flame Castle, requesting reinforcements from the main legion. Damien looked at the map on the table and, looking at the terrain, understood that the route was more than important it was vital, so he said, since the demons and orcs have blocked the mountain path, I'm afraid they intercepted and killed the messengers. Then we will continue sending people to find out if we can pass through the enemy's network. Luther had no other choice he knew this was the only way to hold out and collect the supply route. How can we fight this battle if we can't decipher the enemy's location? The person who spoke was a squadron leader from the city defense army named Dash. He was once the deputy leader of one of the fortress squadrons on the front line and had lived long enough to be admired only he joined the defense of this fortress in the rear after retiring from the front line. It's complicated to understand. But we don't have many options either Hardin's cavalry is on the front line, so abandoning that war would put the fortresses currently in battle against the demons at risk. How do we intend to exterminate the enemies and regain the supply route? Damien thought for a moment and said, Our squadron has some very fast war horses. If you allow me, I will lead the decoy team. If we are not discovered, then we will do a reconnaissance mission. While we do that, the cavalry that left Baron Hardin should leave a few hours later in a hurry to share this information with the rear armies. What would be the mission of those who stay in this place? Take care of Baron Hardin's family and protect the walls if this outpost is taken, it will be the end of the fortresses on the front line, and that means we would be pushed into the main cities. Baron Hardin's family was in this place they were committed to the duty of a warrior family, and it would not be a tragedy to die here. It was known that Baron Hardin had two territories, one in the south and one in the north. The southern territories were not only rich but also did not need to face war. Furthermore, he had accumulated deep meritorious service, so everyone knew there was nothing more he could prove at his age. Although it hadn't been long since Damien entered the Baron's castle, he had already heard some rumors. Damien could tell many were doubting, and that was okay. No one would be willing to die, but there's something called duty, and that's not something everyone should necessarily have. The Baron is fighting on the front line, and the only member of the Hardin family left in the castle is his family. Luther looked at everyone with his cold eyes. According to the law, nobles cannot leave the territory otherwise, they will forfeit inheritance rights to the territory. Although Baron's family, at least the children, should not count in this kind of treaty, they would never decide to leave this place, much less now. Everyone in your positions has taken the route to follow, so prepare for the worst. The military order given to us by the Baron is to protect this place no matter what happens. Neither you nor we are qualified to ignore an order. Luther continued to speak but still did not convince Baron Hardin's cavalry. In the end, everyone could only leave unhappy. While there was no one around, Damien quietly said to Luther, the task of opening the passage must be done with or without them have some men gather old armor and worn out weapons. What will you do? 
Luther knew Damien was a second-class friend, but his demonstrated power was undoubtedly first-class, so he didn't know his possibilities. Damien looked at his hand and said, I will create a small army that will be my vanguard. I'll do what I can. This was the first time Damien would try to create an army of undead this would be less graphic because there were no bodies, but the armor would move by itself, so it would be fine. Many may believe that dark magic has been banned, but that does not apply to Damien because he was a mage studying that magic long before that regulation was issued, and he couldn't change his knowledge right now that he's at war. When he left the meeting, he looked at Luke, who was cleaning his staff, and said, Gather the mages under my command we will leave tonight. Shall I tell them that? Tell them we are going on a reconnaissance mission. A few hours later, the night sky was completely dark, and the moon peeked through the clouds, emitting a pale light. It's already April, early summer, and the forest was anything but quiet. In the end, Damien left a team that would serve as their backup in case they encountered problems, and accompanied by three others. They walked on foot through the mountain, a few pairs of eyes carefully watching the movement of the mountain pass through the cover of logs and tree branches. Is there a demon or orc camp at the entrance to the canyon? Luther agilely jumped from the treetops. After a period of recovery, he had regained his mobility, and, of all his wounds, he decided to accompany Damien. It was known that he was good at climbing and falling from trees without making a sound. Although he had no talent beyond a common people, he had studied investigative skills with his second uncle for a long time and was a qualified scout. Can you determine the number of enemies? I just counted. There is a squadron of orcs stationed the Reno more than 500. There are two very powerful demons among them, and more demons serve as guards. Continue observing we need to know everything in that camp before making a move. Orcs are not good at using enchanted weapons, but they have a wide range of high-level weapons. They also have incomparable strength, which would give them countless troubles if they were to face them. Luther observed the orc camp for two hours and whispered, there is no other discovery. There shouldn't be any other weapons. Chapter 29 Damien reflected on the information he had just received, thought about the countermeasures, went over them hundreds of times in his mind, and felt that there could be nothing wrong with the enemy's position. The enemies are aware that there is no army in the rear that can confront them, at least not until they receive support, and that is unlikely knowing that the messengers have been killed. Furthermore, they have so few soldiers in the rear because it is a double-edged trap. If the forward bases attack from behind, they will receive an attack from the front to take all allied fortresses in a single blow. Hardin must have considered this very well, and that is precisely why he has not attacked the rear. If he is aware of it, he expects reinforcements to be sent from the rear, having that last measure to get out of this situation without losing the fortresses. Damien knew that everything was in his hands, so after thinking it over carefully, he said, Luther, after a while, you must expose yourself and lead some demons into the forest. Luke, you will stay in this tree to prepare an ambush on high ground. I will take care of eliminating the enemies from a favorable position. We are few this plan may be suicide. Can it be completed successfully? Although Damien's face still showed traces of immaturity, his expression was firm and his gaze was brave especially after a battle where he killed monsters, he felt confident in his abilities and trusted his plan. At that moment, Damien was no longer the cowardly blind wizard but a superior wizard capable of giving orders and eliminating demons on his own. Looking into Damien's determined eyes, Luther responded seriously, Squad leader, do not worry I will definitely be able to complete the task of attracting the enemy. Stay safe and come back alive. Luther nodded and quickly headed towards the enemy zone to lure them. But before that, he removed his heavy armor, boots, and anything that could slow down his movements when running. Damien knew that among those gathered here, Luther could move freely in the forest and was the one who knew the surroundings best because he had been here for many years of his life. So he must have mastered many movements that would allow him to complete this mission without dying. Before dawn, he was lurking near the orc camp. Damien used the short bow he had with him and quickly shot an arrow. Although Damien's archery skills were average, roughly at the level of an unremarkable soldier, his target was no more than 30 meters away, so he was confident he could hit it. 
At such a close distance, despite his archery skills being much lower than those of other soldiers, he still accurately hit the orc. Ordinary scouts find it uncomfortable to carry long-range bows and cannot afford expensive enchanted bows. That's why, to increase lethality, poison is applied to the arrows, which can even kill demons. The poisoned arrow reached the orc's throat, and it fell to the ground before it could howl. The orc camp was laid out very formally, not only with visible guards but also with hidden sentries. As soon as the soldier at the outpost died, the orc at the secret outpost immediately shouted. We are under attack. The camp suddenly became chaotic, and Luther immediately fled into the forest, taking advantage of the chaos. The two sleeping orcs woke up one after another to locate the guard, who had been killed by an arrow. Being a different species from warrior orcs, the one who had just died was a kind of tracker. This orc's individual strength was not as high as the others, but it was certainly superior to strong humans in melee combat. However, they were very intelligent, excellent builders, and especially skilled blacksmiths capable of creating good quality armor at a low cost. Along with their super fertility, most orc legions would incorporate a large number of easily replaceable soldiers, and Damien knew this because he had seen these ugly green creatures frequently in many places in his past life. The status of orc races is very confusing they should exist in tribes, but it doesn't matter if they are united under a single leader because they wouldn't gain anything from knowing this. I have seen arrows like this they were shot by human scouts. A demon approached the besieging orc and pulled the arrow from its throat. An angry orc grabbed its battle axe and shouted angrily, Cowardly humans, I will take a group of soldiers to kill the scout. It might be a trap humans often send scouts before launching a large-scale attack. A demon said these words while looking around with much confusion. There are not many elite soldiers in that annoying humans castle you yourself told us that. I don't understand why you don't want to kill them, but at least we must eliminate those annoying rats in the forest. You know that even if there is a trap, the enemy's strength is not something that would cause us trouble to eliminate. You can accompany us, to be sure. There are demons scouting in the sky, and human soldiers cannot escape our eyes now that they have attacked us. If you insist, those humans should be asleep now, so they wouldn't cause us problems. The pale-skinned demon showed no emotion to tell the truth, he was very interested in killing humans. Soon, a group of orcs mounted monstrous wolves, formed an advance formation, and entered the forest at full speed. Following Luther's tracks, the orcs advanced about two kilometers and vaguely discovered traces of Luther on the way. The orc warrior was very excited and loudly ordered the soldiers to surround Luther immediately after finding him. In fact, this mission was to investigate the enemy's situation. This battle could be avoided, but Damien wanted to hunt down the orc sent to hunt Luther precisely for that reason, he asked for it personally. Upon discovering that the enemy had entered his range, Damien hid in the ambush location, held his breath, and shot an inconspicuous electricity arrow that glowed faintly through the air. Damien's spellcasting skills had improved to a level where it was impossible for him to miss his target, so by compressing his magic, the spell was not flashy but had enough strength to kill an orc. With his strength and the amount of mana he had been using, the shooting range reached 800 meters. Shooting a target in the forest is not easy, even for an expert archer. The dense tree trunks will block the view, and the complex environment will also affect the archer's perception. But Damien was a wizard he could sense his enemies in the darkness because he had incredibly important spells to do these kinds of things. A kilometer was easy for Damien to master. The arrow carried powerful energy and fiercely pierced the trunk of a tree as thick as a bowl, subtly piercing the stomach of an orc and killing its wolf in turn. Struck by a magic arrow, the orc did not die instantly. The pain that filled its body made it roar in agony. The orc was about to touch the magic arrow, but the next second, it had been hit by another arrow in its head. To cover. An orc raised its thick metal shield, but with powerful force, the arrow burst through the shield and pierced the orc's arm. Second Damien was surrounded by darkness and shot a third arrow. Luke shot magic arrows he had asked Damien for the same spell, and after learning it, he began to use it with greater difficulty but using the same tactic as the others. Seeing the fierce arrows coming out of the darkness, the orcs were frightened and looked to the demon who had come with them for answers. 
As he was not familiar with the terrain and the enemy's situation, Damien did not dare to chase them, so he walked to a more open space and rapidly shot a dozen more arrows at great speed. The orcs' heads can be exchanged for military merit. Damien walked towards the orcs' bodies and took their weapons and valuable items, putting them in the shadow over his back. Seeing Damien hand over the battle achievements, Luther's face suddenly seemed a bit surprised. Take it exchange it for good armor when you get the chance. Luther took the bag somewhat anxiously and followed with a complicated humor. Getting orc heads is equivalent to achieving military feats after exchanging these achievements, he could obtain good weapons and high-value armor. At that moment, Luther was very happy. I thought that demon would stay to fight. Luke looked at how everyone had fled and didn't understand how they decided to leave from here, despite how proud they are. Maybe it was because of my magic he must have sensed something. Damien knew that his current magic levels were something that a first-class human wizard had, but if there was a problem with this, it was that he was hiding one-ninth of his power. He couldn't hide more because it would make battles very difficult for him right now, and it was also unnecessary to be so humble. Luke looked at the magic surrounding Damien and felt an even greater hidden power from him. Now, if anyone else could perceive his magic, they would stop calling him a coward. Chapter 30 The defeated orcs returned to the camp and reported the situation in the forest to the orc commander. Upon learning that the ambushers were only three, the orc commander named Orgrim was surprised by the boldness of his enemy. Were the human scouts who attacked you all skilled mages? The enemy's spells were very silent we didn't know where they were attacking from until the end. Only one human used an enchanted bow, but the other two were mages. Listening to the story of defeat, Commander Orgrim showed a fierce expression. He raised his fist and struck one of the orcs on the head, killing him instantly. Combining the intelligence provided by the defeated orcs, the commander had roughly figured out the details of the battlefield. He wanted to send men to hunt down Damien and the others, but he was also somewhat worried about the enemy's silent skills. Furthermore, the squad stationed here was not too large because they were currently under constant attack from the front, so they had to hold out here. However, they couldn't be the ones to retreat because they had to cut off the enemy's supplies until they were finished. Humans are very cunning. If I leave the camp and go into the forest to pursue the attackers, and the enemy attacks the camp at that moment, what should I do then? The sun is about to rise, so we can't do much now. It's better to leave this problem to the demon leading the front attack. Orgrim muttered these words while sending some orcs to collect the corpses and find any useful supplies for later. About an hour and a half later, a black spot appeared in the sky in the distance. Seeing that the demon mages had arrived, the orcs stationed in the camp finally felt relieved. How is the enemy situation? A demon who seemed to be a very ill-tempered demon king's general directly asked upon seeing all the decapitated orcs on one side. Last night, human scouts came to attack. Before dawn, I sent a team of soldiers into the forest to capture the enemy. They suffered heavy losses. The deputy leader of the squad died, and six soldiers died together. According to the reports of the defeated troops, the humans who attacked had enchanted bows and arrows, and others were very skilled mages whom even the demons you left stationed here didn't dare to face. Orgrim used his troops very cautiously. Although he suffered losses, he explained last night's situation in detail. Why don't you send troops to pursue the enemy? Are you afraid of the humans' cold arrows? Seeing the demon ask bluntly, Orgrim explained, Of course, I'm not afraid of humans. Our group's main task is to block the passage, so I didn't want to weaken the forces stationed here. You know better than us humans are very cunning. Last night, they sent scouts to attack the night guards. Our intention was to eliminate the scouts late at night, but we were ambushed by humans and suffered significant losses. The enemy situation is unknown. What if I go in search of those mages, and the humans attack the camp? I wouldn't be able to maintain the camp as it's my task and we would all be killed by Great Durodin if we didn't die at the hands of the enemy first. Orgrim was not a common orc his body was larger, and he carried two one-handed axes on his back. Considering his work and that he was risking his soldiers' lives, he looked at the demon and said, now that the humans have obtained intelligence about the camp, our already dangerous situation will become deadly. 
If you send demons to this place to attack the rear post, we could solve all the problems. The demon named Ghoul frowned and said somewhat annoyedly, the humans in the defense line are very tenacious. Although we captured four castles and broke through half of the defense line, it will be very complicated to break through the rear defense line. Moreover, Baron Hardin's cavalry is still roaming the periphery, holding off our wolf cavalry. My lord Durodin sent a group of demons to attack the human baron a few days ago, but his assassination has not yet been successful. Saying this, Ghoul paused and moved his hand to float on the ground, murmuring, I will go straight to Baron Hardin's castle and take a look. If I encounter humans on the way, I will brutally kill them all. Upon hearing this, Orgrim immediately said, it's better to be careful. The troops stationed at Baron Hardin's castle have a squad of the same level as the front it won't be easy to break through their defenses either. You're very afraid of humans, Orgrim. I thought your kind feared nothing in this world, including us demons. Ghoul didn't bother about this and said, the human cavalry is good I haven't seen monstrous wolf riders emerge victorious when facing them. They have powerful enchanted bows and arrows in their equipment. I'm just cautious humans in this war seem to have no honor. The demon ghoul disregarded Orgrim's warnings while floating in the air and shot up into the air without saying another word. Leaving the canyon, ghoul could see the dense forests on both sides of the road. Although Ghoul's vision is several times better than that of humans, it's hard to clearly see what's happening beneath his feet. Damien was not a native of the north, nor was Luke, but Luther was like a man moving through his ivy. He had experienced this war his whole life and was more than willing to die for it if necessary. His family, like many soldiers who die every day, were massacred by demons, so he pledged to kill as many demons as possible. As for the demons, they are natural mages and far superior to humans they are recognized as the only ones who have figured out how to fly through magic and currently dominate the air in the war. These enemy mages are the demon scouts in the north they fly very high above cities without being detected and are responsible for sending everything they see to other demons to serve them in battles. If they are in an open area, common scouts will hardly save their lives when they encounter a harpy. Even in the mountains and forests, many scouts die each year at the hands of demons. While Damien fled with the rest, the demon was very fast, and somehow, he found Damien and the others on the way they were rushing towards the castle that had been turned into a fortress. Upon seeing the demon appear, Luther reacted immediately by shooting arrows, and Luke created magical shields to cover them all. Right now, if the demon dares to approach, they are all sure of their victory. Demons may be stronger, but Damien was confident of winning battles against them because he had the advantage of hiding his mana and all his hidden cards to win any battle that presented itself. In every battle in the north, many demons were killed by human mages, so there was no reason to fear them. When the demon looked at numerous archers on the castle walls, the demon didn't want to approach, and upon seeing clearly the mage leading the group, he returned to the mountains to report the current situation of Baron Hardin's castle to the orcs. After receiving information about the surroundings of the castle, orc officers were summoned for a pre-battle meeting. Gathering intelligence from all aspects, demons on the front captured three human fortresses yesterday, managing to kill a captain leading one of them. Human scouts attacked Orgrim's squad, blocking the canyon, ambushing them, and easily eliminating numerous orcs without them being able to do anything. The main human force is stationed with Baron Hardin. The castle in the rear, where human supplies are kept, only has one squad. The city's defense is relatively strict, and there should be more than ten mages among them. We managed to kill that woman named Sally if we keep pushing, we will slaughter the humans on the border before they send more annoying troops. Two days ago, Baron Hardin's cavalry attacked our logistics transport team and killed orc soldiers, managing to kill great leaders. The monstrous wolf cavalry brigade was stealthily attacked by Baron Hardin last night. More than 130 riders died, and 500 were injured. The orc intelligence officer continued recounting the battle history from the past day, giving the present orc officers a general idea. After the intelligence officer recounted all the information received, Orgrim raised his head and asked, Can our cavalry continue fighting? The human resistance was very fierce. By the end of the battle, the monstrous wolf cavalry had suffered more than half of its losses. 
If it was necessary to destroy the castle in the rear, they should do it and make a final attack when the human troops in the remaining three fortresses come out to counterattack. If they miss the opportunity to regroup and connect with supplies, they will gain ground in the mountains before they send more soldiers. This was the plan elaborated by the demons of course, it could fail like any other plan. But now they had the humans cornered, so they wouldn't allow any mistakes to escape them. Chapter 31 He's gone. Damien thought as he watched the demon walk away, wondering why those demons hesitated so much. What are they running from if they are superior? Something truly incredible must be happening for those demons not to attack. What exactly do they want to achieve on this battlefield, using orcs more than themselves to advance? When Damien and the others returned to the castle, now turned into a great fortress, Luther handed over the orc heads to the person in charge of recording casualties. Although military merit cannot be negotiated after registration, there is still room for manipulation before registration. Noble officers often exchange merit for gold coins, lands, or other resources they may need. Many times, ten gold coins were given for one merit point. A soldier's dream is to retire after years of service and live a peaceful life in the South, where that gold would be of great use. However, most soldiers basically do not give up their merits to advance in the army and become nobles. For example, many families on the northern border acquired lands and, when they had the opportunity, became nobles, whose descendants now bravely fight on the battlefield. Damien wonders if his parents had any title he could claim, but he doesn't care now that he has a mission, which is to fight against demons. Entering the command room, Damien told the strategists what he had seen. Upon learning that the orcs blocking the passage were not strong enough, one of the captains said excitedly, after they left, two squads of scouts stationed nearby arrived, so our forces have increased. This cavalry is a reconnaissance brigade directly under the legion's command, and the officer leading these soldiers was Captain Marvin. Captain Marvin is a lieutenant colonel officer and a very powerful warrior who has participated in many battlefields. Knowing that reinforcements had arrived early, Damien, knowing that things were much more favorable, asked, so. Can we now attack with a much greater chance of success in regaining the route the enemy has taken and send a message to the main legion to send reinforcements? What is the situation on the field? The orc successfully blocked the route we used to send resources and move the wounded. They must have seen it for some time, so they knew the best time to attack us. After hearing these explanations, the strategists realized something very important. What we must do is open the way and recover the route to the canyon. Before, our strength would have been insufficient. But now that Captain Marvin is with us, this battle could be very straightforward. Damien knew many other things, but in the end, he agreed with all of them and said, then we must immediately inform Captain Marvin about the enemy and the situation we are in so that we are all in agreement with the situation he wants to address. The two went together to Lieutenant Colonel Marvin's quarters, and Damien detailed the enemy situation detected this time. Marvin listened attentively and asked for details from time to time. Every time he asked about something that he needed to know precisely, he seemed like a man with rich experience and attention to detail. After hearing the intelligence, Marvin thought for a moment and said decisively, the attack must be swift. If it is delayed too long, the orcs could have reinforcements and completely enclose Baron Harden. As Marvin said, Damien agreed on many points, especially that they could be attacked by more enemies if they delayed. I think we can act immediately and use the cavalry directly to attack the enemy camp. All right, how many people can your squad send? Luther, who was in charge of the vanguard, asked curiously, just to have the numbers in mind. Our squad has fifteen horses, four carriages, and three catapults. If we count the less capable horses for our maneuvers, we could triple the numbers. Marvin had been analyzing this since he arrived at this fortress, so his numbers were directly exposed. After breakfast, we will depart immediately. If we win this battle, everyone will get more than just credit. Especially the officers responsible for detecting the enemy situation will be the first contributors to the victory of this battle. Damien said nothing about this he didn't care about credits because, in a way, he didn't feel like he belonged to the army even though he fought in it. As they were about to leave, Marvin asked, Mage, how powerful are you? 
I'm not sure I haven't found out until now. Marvin looked at Damien and asked, can you handle the demons? Sure, I can as long as they show up, I'll take care of them. Damien wasn't sure how confident he should be about this, but he would surely take care of the demons. The only reason he hadn't gone alone to eliminate all those enemies was caution. He might be strong now, but even strong people are killed, and he wasn't sure of his survival, especially when he had no spells to escape the combat in case things got really bad. At the canyon exit where humans used the route to bring resources to the fortresses, about nine kilometers from Hardin's castle, all soldiers began to mobilize. This nine-kilometer path is in the forest, and the enemy can easily set an ambush, so their advance must first be granted to the scouts. Overall, the speed of passing through these nine kilometers of forest paths will be very slow. When they reach the canyon entrance, the orcs will discover them, so they must find a way not to lose the element of surprise. Lieutenant Colonel Marvin was a decisive person he trusted Damien's research intelligence and did not send a large number of scouts into the forest. Instead, they used a silent formation that moved very quickly, and soon they arrived at the orc camps. Upon discovering the enemy's arrival, the orc camp immediately panicked. Commander Orgrim shouted loudly and raised his horns to defend against the cavalry charge. Marvin quickly organized the cavalry formation and, taking advantage of the panic in the orc camp, personally led the team to charge towards the enemy. Damien was mounted on a horse next to Marvin his job now was to take care of this man's life to ensure the orders given to the soldiers. The cavalry formation was in the shape of an arrow, with the most experienced knights riding very large warhorses with steel armor that protected them from many wounds, giving them monstrous advancing capabilities even against demons. With heavy armor, the speed of the mount is not slow at all, surpassing that of ordinary light cavalry. Most importantly, the iron mounts have spells, are effective in combat, are equivalent to a monstrous wolf of the enemy, and are horses that are aware of participating in a battle. Damien took the lead, panting heavily, and the fierce wind blew against his face, causing his cheeks to ache slightly. Damien's pupils suddenly shrank he raised his hand, and numerous lightning bolts shot out from his fingers towards the enemy. In an instant, there were numerous blue lightning bolts moving through the enemy camp, chairing the bodies of the orcs who were moving hastily towards them. Orgrim ignored the magical attacks and took a step forward so that all his soldiers would form a formation, but at the same time, numerous lightning bolts pierced through his soldiers, knocking them down. At that moment, magical arrows, catapult impacts, and dozens of spells were launched against them, being very precise in each of these attacks, killing a dozen orcs who were taking up arms. A round of feathered arrows cost them a tenth of their soldiers. Seeing that the enemy was preparing their bows and arrows again, Orgrim's eyes almost burst into flames. He drew his sword, roared savagely, and ran out of the camp, trying to kill the enemy. Damien had visualized the demons attacking other mages, but his mind told him to take care of the orc, so moving his hand, he launched a lance covered with lightning bolts. Orgrim extended his hand to lift a shield his fighting spirit illuminated his hand, and the shield shone white, blocking him in front of him. The lance violently hit the shield, and the powerful impulse made Orgrim take a step back. Before he could react, Damien had already used other attacks, impacting against the shield. Although it's not easy to use magical spells while riding something that moves, none of his spells failed to hit their targets. Boom! 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 At that moment, when they clashed against the scattered orcs, the horse Damien was riding was hit by an enemy arrow, piercing through its armor and killing it with a single shot. Damien, who was not tied to the horse, had jumped forward, and without looking back, he used a spell that covered his entire body with electric rays to increase his speed. They won't escape death. Damien looked at Orgrim, but without looking aside, he aimed at a figure in the sky that was casting spells towards their allies, and at that moment, a powerful violet lightning struck his shield bearers, destroying them in a single strike. Damien perceived how the lightning had hit the demon's chest, so as he fell, he formed an electric arc, and in fractions of seconds, he turned around, shooting an Indra arrow much more powerful than others launched before. I'll take care of those in front don't let any orc escape because nothing must leave here. Damien shouted as he unsheathed his sword and disappeared from where he was initially. At the same time, the sky seemed to darken, 
and at that moment, violet thunder struck the trees in the distance where some orcs were trying to flee. In just a few seconds, a circle of persistent lightning bolts made this entire camp enclosed, humans against demons, a battle of life or death where only one side would remain alive. Chapter 32 Arg. A beam of light fell from the sky at a terrifying speed, massacring numerous orcs who were preparing to join the battle and leaving them lying on the ground. Not everyone died Damien's attacks meant that some would die directly, while others would lie on the ground agonizing. Some mages from the enemy side could be seen being attacked by allied mages all of them had very good skills, but few could match Damien in precision. Many demons were not very intelligent they were all evil by nature and could not understand human judgments made in each of the situations they found themselves in. Fortunately, Damien had adapted his body to all conditions and knew that if magic was not the solution, he could use other methods, like wielding his sword without any problem. Also, he did not want to use too much of his power because in situations like this, large-scale spells could inadvertently harm allies. Damien had discovered that facing enemies in a war was different from facing them one-on-one. -on -one. When Damien eliminated a mage, he shot a lightning bolt that pierced the earth, gravely and accurately damaging the orc in front of him. Orgrim tried to get up from the ground after the lightning bolt hit him, but Damien had approached him with great speed and swung his sword, cutting off the fingers of his left hand. I saw. Bloodied with blue blood, Damien swung his sword again, ruthlessly piercing the heart of the orc who couldn't understand how a human could be so strong. By allowing enemies time to react, Damien knew he was giving them a chance to strike back. So, plunging his hand into the ground, he released numerous lightning bolts that split the earth and made the monstrous wolves stop advancing. In just one day, Damien had gained a lot of combat experience, so much so that now it didn't feel strange to take an enemy's life. He had passed that first phase and now he was aware that if he had trained to take lives, he could also die at any moment. Unfortunately, living with that awareness didn't affect someone as passionate as Damien, and knowing that this was the best he could do at a moment like this, he would live without regrets. Damien, who had killed the orc commander, looked around and saw how humans were being slaughtered by the enemy and vice versa. The feeling of being in a situation like this was not at all pleasant. Damien, we need to support the cavalry. Knowing that the battle was not over yet, Damien waved his hand and numerous magical runes appeared on the ground where magically controlled soldiers emerged and began to fight against the orcs. Are you alright? Luther took the shield that the orc was holding, and although it was damaged, it could still be used. Damien continued to generate magical circles around him that shot some lightning bolts, which moved like serpents, at his enemies. Then he moved his hands towards the camp and a huge fireball shot out like a meteor towards the cabins in the distance. Before the orcs in the camp could organize an effective formation, they saw numerous lightning bolts moving towards them, and seconds later a huge fireball fell on them, incinerating the surroundings. Immediately, they were filled with despair, screaming one after another, and opted to flee to save their lives, consumed by panic. But when they realized that the surroundings were covered by a barrier of lightning bolts that roared loudly, they all knew it was too late. Damien mounted a warhorse that had no one riding it and advanced towards the orcs who were getting closer with increasing urgency. Clang! Clang! The scouting cavalry followed Damien and hurried into the camp, cutting and killing them all. In less than half an hour, all the orcs in the camp were massacred. War is always a matter of life or death. Especially the Northern War involves the racial survival rights of humans and demons. The war between the two sides is crueler, even soldiers with lower combat effectiveness generally do not surrender but fight to the last breath. Damien cleaned up the battlefield and wiped out the entire enemy squadron today, only capturing some wounded orc soldiers. After the battle, Lt. Col. Marvin dismounted his horse and asked Luther, How are your casualties? I lost a third of my soldiers, and many more were injured. Although they are an infantry squad, they need to learn the basics of horse riding. I noticed that most of the casualties were caused because they fell off their horses. Seeing Lt. Col. Marvin's careful observation, Luther smiled bitterly and said, We are infantry we are not prepared to fight these battles with drastic changes in formation. What Luther said was true his brigade was not trained to carry out the formations that Marvin demanded to defeat the enemy, 
which is why many died at the beginning of the battle. The horses are the problem they are not trained to fight these types of wars and carry those armors. Marvin, who had seen the demons flying away, looked at the rising dust. We need to move. Damien's seventh squadron had not directly participated in this confrontation right now, they were carrying supplies that the fortresses and they themselves needed. Especially the war supplies that were needed day by day. But it is true that without an order from Baron himself, it is impossible to take many liberties right now. Luther only has the rank of brigade captain, and the army rank is similar to Damien's. If the two parties do not have direct affiliation and do not control each other, their forces cannot integrate properly. But after Lt. Col. Marvin arrived at the fortress in the rear lines, the situation changed immediately. With his higher rank and having Baron Hardin's confidence, everyone could mobilize. Unlike Damien, who was a young mage with no authority beyond his squadron, Luther also did not help much, but the situation with Marvin was different because he could legally kill anyone who disobeyed orders. After winning the battle, Commander Marvin seemed very happy. He waved his hand and said, Today we fought well everyone will receive a good reward. According to convention, the total annihilation of the Orc squadron should be worth a high-grade credit. However, there were many soldiers and officers participating in the battle. After more than a dozen officers were divided, only a small part was given to the lower-ranking soldiers. According to the regulations of the squadron that Damien led, the merit report documents must be made public and subject to supervision by base soldiers and officers. The merit report documents of Lt. Col. Marvin have been released. In this battle, Damien obtained four major merits in total and a considerable amount of gold. Not only was his research of utmost importance, but also killing numerous mages. The surprise attack mission was a complete success, and many rewards were obtained for killing numerous soldiers, eliminating the orc commander, and freeing numerous soldiers controlled by magic. Including all these merits, Damien had many gold coins and dozens of magical books that were given to him, not to mention those merits that he had not used since he began fighting in this part of the north. Once a war breaks out, outstanding officers can easily accumulate meritorious services. Other officers of the 7th Squadron also achieved some accomplishments Luke received a small merit, and Luther also received a good reward in addition to their participation in the reconnaissance mission. Marvin also issued orders to strengthen the walls and clean up the battlefield, ordered the destruction of farmlands and wells, the burning of houses, and the migration of people living in nearby villages that had not been attacked. The way they had won did not convince Damien he was very impatient, but when he received information a few days later, he understood what had happened. The barons in the first half to the east were massacred by demons they could not withstand the continuous attacks and have been killed in battle. It was reported that several more villages have been massacred, messengers reported seeing a demon king general. The demons have been mobilizing more intensely elsewhere here on all sides, it seems they have ignored the fact of having this outpost and destroyed other fortresses outside of this battlefield. The deaths are estimated in the thousands there are no survivors, and other cities have retreated their armies to magical barriers. Chapter 33 Durotin, the demon who was in command of the attack, had momentarily ceased the massacre of all humans and decided to target other areas where resistance should be weaker than here. Surprise attacks served as his strategy, which is what he was doing. At the same time this decision was made, Damien had been leading around 30 targets, following Colonel Martin towards the mountains. Lieutenant Colonel Marvin is a scout directly subordinate to the main legion and can receive military information in all aspects. As news was gathered, Damien received more and more information and gradually discovered the overall situation of the war. In this war, demons had launched a massive attack across the entire north in the five possible directions to attack. The war was spreading everywhere, and it was unclear what the objectives of these enemies were. The demon's attack range is very large, covering a very wide area with a length of 3,000 kilometers, and demons could be found everywhere. Almost every city in the north had been attacked by demons. The demon army that entered the northern kingdom split into three directions and formed three front armies. The northwest front invaded demon lands and covered them from the mountains beyond the mountain range, massacring more than a dozen fortresses and killing five barons who were extremely powerful. The main human first legion headed towards that battlefront, 
and nearby dukes had already sent their main forces to assist in the battle. Over 45,000 deaths were confirmed on the northwest battlefield. To the northwest, several legions of orcs crossed the forests and entered human territories, but so far they had not broken through the human defense lines, and the battle was at a stalemate. The Bear Warriors Baron's Legion was stationed not far from the battle zone, thus managing to repel demon attacks but with monstrous casualties to the point where human territory was steadily lost. The human coalition armies in the east formed a strong front facing the demons that had deployed to that area all the areas covering up to the southwest tried to repel demon attacks. But the demons had made great strides towards the main cities. After breaking through the defense line at the foot of the southwest mountain range, a river was serving as a channel to repel the enemies. But the dragons were currently causing a lot of trouble these monsters attacked human fortresses due to the movement of nearby areas, and the humans suffered greatly from this. The kingdom's night academy in the north had mobilized completely to train recruits, launching a great battle against the demons that left hundreds of thousands dead across the territory. The human legion, in this case, the third main army in the north, was fighting in the east, preventing the demons from entering by sea into unprotected human territories. This time the battle had been divided into three major directions, covering the entire north the battle was not just in the north, where Damien was fighting against a large demon force that kept advancing. From what was known, the enemy army was divided into three major groups, demons, orcs, and wild monsters who had been forced to fight in this war. In the direction of the Etwas Mountains, the demon advance group had underestimated the humans' counterattack, and when they cut off the resource path, both Damien in the rear as well as Baron Hardin launched a counterattack, thus repelling the demons. In the ensuing siege, the orc army that had been practically abandoned by the demons managed to kill more than 25,000 orcs and numerous demons. Numerous important demons were killed with powerful spells lessons had been learned from numerous lost battles, and at least they were able to hold out until reinforcements arrived. When the breaking point was reached, supplies arrived, and more than 2,000 warriors changed the course of the battle. At the critical moment when Hardin continued his efforts, the demons had prepared a counterattack to exterminate the 8th Brigade. But unexpectedly, Erwin led a cavalry unit called the Demon Exterminators, and together with Hardin, they exterminated the remaining demons. The 7th Brigade had arrived to provide support they were responsible for evacuating all villages to the main cities and arrived from another surprise attack point, thus surprising the enemy. But at this point, the demons arrived and exterminated more than half of Hardin's cavalry. Erwin gave the signal to retreat, and as everyone retreated, defenses were deployed. By the time Damien arrived on the battlefield, he unleashed powerful chain spells that restrained the enemy, killing a few, and at that moment, a powerful counterattack occurred. I need more reinforcements in this area. Damien focused on casting high stakes spells to damage the enemy in their rear ranks. He achieved very good attacks, but human casualties were also disastrous. Watch out! When Damien felt a great magical energy approaching from the sky, he looked into the distance and saw a figure floating, and at that moment, he frowned when he saw numerous ice spears. Previously, he had found many of his spells among the demon's belongings, which he could decipher, and discovered half of a flying spell, so now he could levitate in the air. Rising in the air, Damien knew that those powerful enemy attacks were aimed at the cavalry in that case, he needed to repel the attack. He had to cause double the required damage. But just when everything was going well, he felt that many arrows were directed in his direction. Looking down and looking at Luke, he ordered, cover me I'll take care of the aerial attack. Damien had no time to lose, so immediately a huge rune began to release thunder that completely surrounded him. This time, he had removed the black bandage from his eyes and could freely see the type of magic descending from the sky. After knowing how many attacks were descending, the amount of magical power flowing in and out of his body was constant, and his runes reached a strange balance. At this moment, as long as Damien operated magical power according to the established magical runes and did not release it quickly, he could overcome the impending attack. But now, magical power is automatically transmitted to Damien's head, as if there were some extreme power to attract magical power there. When the lightning struck against the numerous attacks descending from the sky, everything else disappeared for Damien, and his eyes shone with an intense color of magic. 
Even Damien himself tried to stop this abnormal transfer of power but failed. After freeing himself from the mysterious sensation of barely opening the door of his body, Damien discovered that suddenly his magic seemed to have evolved. I'll finish you off before I retreat. Damien whispered this as lightning and thunder roared powerfully over the skies. The lightning moved like hybrids across the sky surrounding that demon, who waved his hand to get rid of the thunder, but this was impossible. In an instant, a large amount of magical power, wrapped in lightning, caused several thunders to descend from the sky like destructive lords hitting forcefully on the demon. Suddenly, he saw the color of the world in front of him fade away, turning into a sepulchral silence of black and white. He can't take it anymore. Luke was diverting attacks that were headed towards Damien, but at that moment, one hit him. Damien staggered in the air, but his hands clasping the air caused the lightning to surround the demon's body. Ah! Chapter 34 Damien fell heavily to the ground, his body sinking into the mud. He wanted to get up to create a shield of lightning, but immediately a group of squires formed around him. Sir, how are you feeling? Damien was about to respond, but immediately a priest approached. He placed a bandage over the open wound on Damien's right shoulder and began treating it. The wound was deep, but Damien had numbed the pain in that part of his body, so there weren't many reactions. Also, although he wasn't skilled in healing magic, he had started to heal part of his wound but stopped when he saw it being treated. Was the demon killed? The priest looked at Damien and said, the demon fell to the ground. Since it absorbed all its attacks, the troops are advancing, so we will find out later. Damien sat in the mud, looking at the dismembered corpses strewn around him, and his eyes widened in shock. It's not that he felt anything at the moment what really shocked him was that five years later, he was here fighting a war that he never thought would be so extreme. He knew that if he didn't fight for humans, they would be crushed by the demons. There was no alternative but to fight. But now that he had expended a great deal of mana, he thought it wouldn't be necessary to clean up this battlefield, leaving the job to others. Your magic has decreased significantly. You should rest a bit. The priest finished treating Damien's wound and advised him as he stood up from the ground. Damien stood up, watching as the war cries continued further ahead. Get me a horse. I can still kill a few demons. After losing troops and generals continuously, the orcs reacted quickly and gathered their main force at the rear, where everyone was fleeing. At this moment, only a quarter of the soldiers who had come to attack remained, totaling over three thousand orcs and no more than a thousand demons. The 7th Brigade, directly under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Irwin, suffered very few losses, it participated in two consecutive battles and annihilated more than fifteen thousand orcs, with only about forty casualties. Including the mounted infantry commanded by Marvin, Along with the soldiers and mages under Damien's command, there were over 5,000 soldiers under his command. Additionally, more than 60 auxiliary soldiers were sent to escort the resources. Seeing that the orc soldiers were hiding in the fortresses they had taken, Lt. Col. Marvin could only station himself to divert and eliminate more orcs and see what was happening in other unexplored areas. The orcs avoided fighting, and Lt. Col. Marvin chose not to attack the fortresses. They had rations for ten days and were relatively close to the rear grain storage area, so there was no shortage of food at the moment. Furthermore, about five kilometers away were the troops of the 7th Brigade currently in combat, while other legions of demon hunters were moving through the forests trying to clear the paths. Although the combat power of the human legions was not like that of the main army, they were a considerable force because they had good weapons and considerable magical equipment. The addition of the 7th Brigade, led by Erwin, as a new force was enough to change the situation on the battlefield and repel the orc attack. If the other demons concentrated on attacking other places and did not come here, it would be impossible for them to enter directly from the north because there were hundreds of thousands of warriors and tens of thousands of mages. Like in previous wars, this only consumed part of the national power of the northern kingdoms. If all the national power is mobilized for the invasion, other human forces on the continent would not remain idle, seeing how the demons mobilized to attack humans, and they would definitely send troops to support the North in the war. Even though there has been a battle between demons and humans right now, it is known that as long as the demon king is not killed, there will be no peace. 
There were powerful beings capable of killing the demon king, but they were not interested in going to kill someone who practically posed no problem to them. Even if there were thousands of orcs wanting to enter between human cities, they would first have to kill the humans, who were tough men and women due to their battles. There are many intelligent people in the human kingdoms the demons were now adapting to humans because they knew they were the ones who could cause them the most trouble, even though the elves were natural magic beings and could easily live for thousands of years. The high officials of the northern kingdoms are also aware of this situation. This kind of tacit understanding among high-level officials was unknown to low-ranking officers like Damien. What everyone could see was that this war would last at least a thousand years, a war where each race would have to improve its magic, weaponry, and combat tactics. But it was also well known that humans were not equal to demons demon magic evolved by leaps and bounds, something that humans would hardly surpass. After returning to the camp, Damien took off his upper garment, which was burned by the impact he had received. He tossed it aside, and quickly a teenager arrived with new garments. Considering Damien's rank, he already has four guards with him these matters can be left to the guards. It's just that Damien is a modern-day boy in a magical medieval era he didn't like being the center of attention, but with what he had done in battle, it would be impossible to go unnoticed. Unlike Damien, perhaps due to the clear hierarchy in this world, officers like Luke and Luther almost completely delegated trivial matters to the guards. The guards need help not only to maintain their armor but also to be well fed this alone gives an idea of the resources an army continuously spends. A week had passed without the demons making any significant moves, giving the human army the opportunity to move the wounded and keep new fortresses united to prevent them from being invaded. The fortresses that had been taken by orcs and demons remained untouched with everything that had happened, they were not of interest to the human army. Lieutenant Colonel Marvin's men were all cavalry and were not familiar with how to attack a city. Damien commanded half a squadron of soldiers considered mounted infantry and mastered siege tactics, but the number was too small, and there was no siege equipment to use. Manufacturing siege equipment takes a long time and requires skilled craftsmen. The conditions for a siege in a short time are not ripe. After careful consideration, Lieutenant Colonel Marvin decided to lead his troops to depart, cross the mountains, cooperate with Baron Hardin in the fight, and attack the enemy from behind. Chapter 35 Are we going to retake the fortresses that are now occupied by orcs? Damien stepped out of his tent, where he was currently resting and learning some practical spells. It's Commander Irwin's orders they are currently facing more enemies at the other end of the north, so this mission is in our hands. Despite being very young, Damien had gained a lot of combat experience. He was recognized as the best mage currently in the army, at least in the north, and many felt safe fighting alongside someone like him. Damien mounted a warhorse and followed Lieutenant Colonel Martin in formation to attack the demon army. His appearance on the battlefield was very sudden and unprepared, catching the orcs completely off guard. Commander Irwin quickly employed detachment tactics, ordering the two rear squadrons through flags to turn around and change formation to block the cavalry in a dense square formation. Before the battle, Marvin and his cavalry fired three rounds of feathered arrows in succession, bringing down fifty or sixty orc soldiers. Observing the battlefield, Damien instructed the messenger to order Luther-led infantry to fire crossbows, but their numbers were limited, so they didn't have much impact on the battlefield. The ground in front of the monstrous wolf cavalry was shattered. Damien had ordered this for the mages, taking advantage of the enemy's fixation and preparing to attack. In just moments, a lightning bow formed in Damien's hands, and he launched several Indra arrows directly at the prominent enemies. Each arrow that hit killed more than a dozen enemies, and soon the casualties on the battlefield increased to 500. Getting closer to the orc formation, Damien mounted his warhorse and violently charged into the enemy formation while unsheathing his sword. The horse he rode was very strong, and when it collided with a few orcs, they were fiercely trampled to death. Damien took advantage of this moment to immobilize many targets with numerous dark abilities. They can't see us attack. Slash. At the same time, a sound of air being cut was heard, and Damien didn't turn around, but he could feel something cold pass through his clothes. Damien didn't need to look down to know that a lance had grazed his abdomen probably some enemies who hadn't been eliminated yet attacked him with the sword, and that was a real problem. 
Not being as effective in close combat for now, when Damien felt danger, he decisively chose to retreat and suddenly jumped off his horse to the other end of the field. The lance that had grazed Damien's body pierced the horse's back, and Damien knew that if that lance had gone through his back, he would be dead. Looking back, Damien discovered that the attacker was a demon. I wonder what I'm doing at the front line, Damien thought as he stabilized his body, but this time, when he saw that the demon intended to attack him again, he had distanced himself. We've got this. A pair of twin soldiers who had seen Damien being attacked moved between the enemies and attacked that demon. Damien knew they would take care of it because he had also cast a stunning spell on them, so this shouldn't be a problem for them. Roar. Upon hearing that annoying noise, Damien turned around and saw a huge orc massacring the soldiers in the front. Keep pushing forward. Lieutenant Colonel Marvin mounted his warhorse, which was very intelligent because it attacked nearby orcs with its hind legs. Boom! Boom! In just a few seconds, several fireballs shot up into the sky and, as if controlled by the air, hit farther areas, killing dozens of enemies. At the same time, Damien used his long sword to, with great speed, strike the head of a nearby orc, easily killing it. Arg! Although the great generals took all the credit, Damien was sweeping through everyone after arriving on the battlefield, demonstrating his amazing mastery of spells used to exterminate demons. Although this battle was not over yet, Damien had wiped out thousands of targets of various types. Damien wiped the blood and mud from his eyes this battlefield was a disaster at extended across all areas. Corpses and blood could be seen everywhere. This is a damn mess. The passion in Damien's eyes had faded due to nervousness, but fortunately, he could suppress his emotions through magic because he believed he could mediate this battle better that way. Of all his abilities, Thunderclass spells were the most used and for which he was becoming known. Combat skills were mostly weapon skills, and in this aspect, they could only play a small role in war. Unless Damien fell off his horse, engaged in close combat, or wanted to fight a powerful demon, he would use more dangerous methods that would affect many others around him. Overall, Damien's combat skills were efficient because he also combined the magic that surrounded his body, enhancing his physical capabilities. He was the first mage to fight in close combat, earning him quite a fearsome title on the battlefield. On the contrary, mages usually stayed away from the battlefield or where they were close to the enemy, but Damien decided to fight at the forefront because he believed it would give him much more experience. This world was cruel if Damien wanted to live many years here, he needed to endure the worst situations to survive the future of this world. If he wanted to be immortal, he first needed to be worthy of living this life he had promised this to the owner of this body as a tribute to his wishes before disappearing. That map he had in his possession was probably fake, but with the few things he could do in this world, he wouldn't lose anything by doing them. So many dead, so much blood, and it seems like we haven't achieved anything. Damien calmed himself, held the long sword in reverse, and focused on taking down the orc soldiers blocking his path. He looked at the cavalry and found that the cavalry had broken through. The obstruction of the two orc squadrons disappeared, and they killed more than 180 soldiers. Only about 50 or 60 orc soldiers survived this charge they were already scared and fled into the forest in panic. In the end, everyone is afraid of death, even those who have lived a lot. Damien had died in an unknown way, and it was terrifying. There were many sensations he had never felt before, and to be honest, he was still confused. Luther led dozens of soldiers and continued to shoot arrows to hunt down these defeated deserters. After defeating two demon squadrons at the other end, Lieutenant Colonel Marvin turned around and attacked the left flank of the orcs. The orcs on the left wing were very close to the fortresses their formation was scattered, and they did not form a dense formation the orcs couldn't stop the cavalry charge at all. Lieutenant Colonel Marvin fought consecutively, concentrating his forces to attack the scattered enemies and continuously charging, defeating five orc soldier squadrons. In the subsequent battle, Damien once again took the opportunity and cast dozens of powerful spells. The lightning moved erratically but accurately. Damien at this point had mastered his magic most precisely, and this was helping him at this point. Ah! Damien might never forget these screams, but this war could not be prevented. There. There were no exits he was not a hero, 
but he knew that the least he could do was this. For humanity. There were soldiers trapped in isolated areas of the battlefield, but the cavalry that continued to advance massacred hundreds of enemy soldiers. Attacked by human soldiers both from inside and outside, the orc soldiers immediately retreated. The demons in the fortresses had been compressed by catapults, and the surrounding areas were filled with fire. The orc siege troops were attacked by the cavalry three times during the siege and suffered heavy losses each time. Damien knew he didn't need to keep advancing it wasn't necessary to bring out his divine general, so he just looked at the battlefield. We need help here quickly, make a tourniquet for that soldier. I need a doctor here. Where are the priests? As soon as Damien realized this, he saw hundreds of people lying on the ground, crying and bleeding profusely. At that moment, his movements kicked in, and he quickly ran to where the wounded were. All right, let me help you. Do you know what you're doing? A long time ago, my mother was a nurse, so I remember exactly how to stop bleeding. Chapter 36 The demonic army suffered a disastrous defeat today as the first-level mages arrived on the battlefield. Additionally, with the fortresses reclaimed and Commander Irwin's attacks on other fronts, they were able to repel the enemy once again. After defeating the orcs, Lieutenant Colonel Marvin did not enter the castle to join the 8th Brigade but took the time to gather the remains of the fallen soldiers and treat the wounded. Damien led the troops to the 7th Fortress and met with the remnants of soldiers from other squads. After more than a month of not seeing each other, everyone was thrilled to reunite with their comrades. After the brutal battles, everyone now felt they had survived the battle of the century. Especially the main squads from the last three fortresses, which had been holding the defense line for over a month, had suffered very heavy losses. Except for the sixth squad, there were fewer than 400 soldiers left, including over 100 wounded. How's the situation with the seventh squad? Seeing Damien, everyone who had ever seen him on the battlefield recognized him. Many faces that had lost the will to live regained the flame they needed to keep going. It seemed that the war for more than a month had pushed their spirits to the limit. After replenishing the fallen soldiers, the seventh squad has not experienced tough battles during this recovery time. But they have fought several victorious battles with Lieutenant Colonel Marvin. This time, there are over a thousand soldiers helping with the evacuation of the wounded. After hearing Damien's report, Captain Dante said in a serious tone, among all the remaining squads in the fortresses, you are the ones holding the front line the best. We need to reinforce some defenses and replenish the defense line. He knew this man had stayed on this battlefield for a long time. Damien had no possibility of refusing, much less criticizing him, because many humans had died at this warfront defending the fortresses. If, for some reason, the fortresses were taken by the enemy, Damien was aware that humans would be pushed back to the cities with magical shields. That would not only cause them to lose many resources but also prove them inferior to the demons they were tasked with eliminating. Now, with the appearance of the orcs, this problem could become even more complicated. However, in these battles, they had not been overpowered, which was important as it showed how strong the human army had become in the north. Captain Dante, rest assured that we will keep these fortresses strong, but we have to transfer the thousands of wounded from these battles. What should we do according to these ideas? So many have been injured. Even the priests cannot do much with such injuries. It would be wise to consider that those soldiers will not return to the battlefield. Damien had seen many severed limbs and soldiers dead in a pool of blood those images still lingered in his mind. When Dante learned of this, both began to devise a plan according to their main needs. Damien was left with the task of keeping the fortresses safe, but now the most important thing was to count the casualties. Marvin had returned with his army, and in the strategy chamber, he asked, what are the casualties? The first reconnaissance squadron suffered 15 casualties 35 were severely wounded, and 9 were lightly wounded. Among the allied fortresses, enemy attacks resulted in over 1,500 dead, 2,300 severely wounded, and 500 lightly wounded. The combined attack with Allied forces resulted in a total of 5,600 casualties, 7,283 severely wounded, and 12,733 lightly wounded. We lost a total of 1,300 warhorses, and the reconnaissance squadrons have been wiped out. 
Damien closed his eyes as he listened to the report. Only now did he know how many people had died, and that was a terrifying number. After several battles, the casualties exceeded 10,000. Especially in this battle, although the results were brilliant, aiming to exterminate the enemy resulted in very disastrous and unproductive losses. But considering they were going to be wiped out, what greatly improved the battlefield was the appearance of the 8th Brigade, led by Commander Irwin. Now, including Damien's half-squad of mounted infantry, the total number of soldiers able to fight was only about 240. As for the mages, fortunately, none of them had died. Everyone knew that the most important resource currently was the mages they had kept the battlefield in line, so no mage should die. Additionally, considering the wounded, who must be immediately removed from the battlefield, everyone was aware that they should be evacuated immediately or they would be questioned by everyone, which was not favorable at all. After crossing the mountain range, Marvin's detachment fought without reinforcements. Once morale collapsed, there was no possibility of continuing to fight. Lieutenant Colonel Marvin thought for a moment and decided to send the wounded soldiers back to Harden Castle, as it was the most prudent thing to do at this time. Damien, you will lead two small teams of soldiers to carry out the mission of transporting wounded soldiers. The others will follow me on the main road to cooperate with Baron Harden in an attempt to ambush the demons. Although Damien still wanted to keep fighting, since an order had been issued, he could not refuse, especially when thousands of lives would be in his hands. Lieutenant Colonel Marvin left all the carriages with Damien and then mobilized some packhorses for the 8th Brigade. The severely wounded were crowded into the carriage, and the lightly wounded clung to their horses and returned to the rear with Damien leading the way. Half of the soldiers stayed behind to rebuild the fortresses and clear the battlefield. The demons in the mountain range did not want to fight now, but at that moment, they discovered Damien's squad. But fearing that something like this might happen, Dante sent a squad of reinforcements from the rear. The convoy of wounded soldiers boldly crossed the canyon pass and returned to Harden Castle. The mission went smoothly, but unfortunately, six of the severely wounded died. Soldiers severely injured in battle could basically save their lives if they survived three days afterward. However, many wounded soldiers did not survive for three days, and the most important factor in the deaths of wounded soldiers was poison that even priests could not cure. Furthermore, although the priest had healing abilities, he would prioritize treating officers. The soldiers would die in the next two days. The waiting process for death was undoubtedly very distressing. Especially for the surviving soldiers, seeing the tragic deaths of their brothers filled many people's eyes with tears, which was very sad. How is the situation on the defensive line? Have they seen Baron Harden? Many of the soldiers who stayed behind to protect this castle were glad to see Damien return with many wounded, which meant only one thing, they had won the battle. We have regained lost ground. Right now, the Baron is in battle, but many of his men have fallen. Captains of all levels are waiting for medical help, so it would be better to send requests for help to the main city. Damien, hidden under his hood, looked at the soldiers and ordered, You may not know me, but I am in charge. Everyone go to rest, and let the wounded enter the rest tents they will be attended to immediately. I will take care of protecting this place, so don't worry. Seeing that everyone had arrived without any problems, Damien manipulated some magically created soldiers around the castle to serve as censors. Being in such a dangerous place, it was the least he could do. Even sleeping should not be a problem in this place, so staying focused should at least help him survive. Bringing out my divine general would cause a lot of chaos I think he should not be introduced to the battlefield yet. Damien thought as he dressed after bathing. Conditions in the north were so torturous that he should stay focused magic could at least make life easier in many ways. Chapter 37 A few days later, Baron Harden issued one final military order. Damien's squadron was required to pass through a specific passage in the mountains and, along with the fortress forces and Baron's cavalry regiment, seek out a particular demon for assassination. Accompanying the Baron's messengers, who returned roughly at the same time, were over 900 wounded soldiers. Last month, the 7th Squadron had been quite active, Baron Hardin and Lieutenant Colonel Marvin led the cavalry and participated in several battles. The Outer Cavalry and the Brigade of Monstrous Wolf Cavalry were engaged in fierce combat, 
and casualties began to exceed severe levels. Even powerful knights and prominent mages perished, with deaths continuing to accumulate to the point where bodies could not be retrieved. After two months of continuous fighting outside, Baron Hardin's cavalry was on the verge of collapse, necessitating a rest period. Although the Baron had retired from active service, the King still appointed him as the supreme commander of the mountains, requiring all high-ranking officers to obey his orders. The Baron issued the order, and the 7th Squadron took immediate action. After more than two months of combat, over 5,000 wounded soldiers were gathered in the castle. Some of the soldiers here were not in bad condition and were expected to return to the battlefield after recovery. The wounded soldiers who participated in the initial battles, mainly from the 7th Brigade, had mostly recovered and were ready to fight again. They cooperated well with the reorganization of the 7th Squadron, forming a temporary squadron under Damien's leadership as a prominent mage. Damien knew that his parents had been recognized by Erwin and Hardin, giving him the courage to lead soldiers despite being just a mage. Once again, leader. Damien murmured, looking at the order in his hands. There were also many soldiers from the old 7th Squadron in the temporary squadron. With the help of these familiar faces, although it was his first time independently commanding such a large squadron, Damien adapted quickly. The two squadrons left Hardin's castle and entered the halfway canyon passage, where they saw Luther riding a warhorse in a panicked state. Luther was a good soldier, in a similar situation to Hardin but still fighting demons despite his age, which was admirable. He might be promoted soon, at least receiving that as a minimum reward. Unfortunately, communication was inconvenient during the war, so he couldn't report to the brigade headquarters for a military rank or official position promotion. Currently, Damien's group has a shortage of officers, and the group headquarters would not allow veterans to serve as basic soldiers. Luther was expected to be transferred to other squadrons after some time to serve as an officer and replenish battlefield losses. Now Luther was temporarily in charge of two scout squadrons. The demon army appeared at the canyon entrance. The flags indicate soldiers from a demon general that's what we know so far. After hearing Luther's report, Damien summoned the key officers and calmly said, they're just remnants of a defeated army I don't think they'll be a problem for us. It seemed like Hardin sensed the danger and gave up on conquering the southwest defense line, preparing to gather his troops and retreat. Damien, upon hearing this, asked, did you alert the demons during your reconnaissance? They didn't see me, Luther thought for a moment but didn't recall being spotted, so he said, we didn't encounter anyone during our reconnaissance we just observed some distant flags and estimated the enemy numbers before returning. While Damien believed encountering powerful enemies was unwise, there was no need to mention it as it would scare the soldiers. Damien, lead the temporary squadron to ambush the enemy from both sides of the canyon. I'll take a group and stay on the sidelines, waiting for any developments without drawing much attention. With too many in motion, it was understandable for their numbers to decrease now. Damien led the temporary squadron to scale the cliffs on both sides of the canyon and, once in a favorable position, ordered the soldiers to set up camp. As soon as preparations were complete, the demon squadron attacked them. Damien was surprised to see the demons riding boars. Although boars had thick skin and strong defenses, they were not very intelligent. Letting a squadron dominated by boar spines act as the vanguard could easily fall into the enemy's trap. But now the demon brigade had no available troops. The boar squadron had the fewest deaths and the most soldiers. Whoever was leading them thought it was the best option. Sir, there are orcs too. Upon discovering the enemy camp, Damien immediately ordered the soldiers to attack the camp, regardless of the enemy's obstruction. The first archer group is ready, fire. As the orders were issued, more than a hundred arrows flew violently. The few boars that rushed to the front were instantly turned into pincushions by the barrage of arrows. The temporary squadron under Damien's command, although not equipped with enchanted bows and arrows, consisted mostly of veterans. Many were skilled archers, and in the first round of arrow rain, they killed seven or eight boars. I want continuous attacks now, second group, fire. Fire now. The lower-ranking officers orderly commanded, continuously launching a rain of arrows that filled the sky, killing demon soldiers and orcs in the enemy group. 
Within just a hundred meters of entering the firing range, the Boers threw more than 30 orc corpses. Although casualties were numerous, they still couldn't halt the enemy's charging momentum. While this species was stupid, their will was strong, allowing them to endure significant losses. In normal circumstances, they wouldn't attack like this, but there was no choice. If the enemy retreated, they would continue facing deadly arrow attacks. Desperate, the demons wanted to end this once they reached the enemy. Raise spears. The enemies fiercely broke into the camp, and Luther calmly ordered the seven squadron soldiers to attack once the enemy was in range. Damien led a temporary squadron of soldiers and continuously shot arrows at the cliffs on both sides of the road to suppress the second wave of orcs and reduce the pressure on the camp. Damien continuously attacked with powerful, concentrated thunderbolts that exploded forcefully in the distance. Being at a distance was Damien's best aptitude he knew there was nothing better than giving it his all from afar. He also kept his eyes on the sky, searching for any other unknown enemy types. Chapter 38 the powerful spells of Damien struck his enemies mercilessly dozens of demons were crushed by his spells that interconnected, increasing the power of his magic. It's not enough this time no enemy will remain alive. Damien extended his right hand, his fingers came together, and he shot dozens of lightning bolts that burst out of numerous magical runes. Only those who have reached a point in magic where only imagination can stop them know how powerful they have become. Damien felt the potency of his spells each lightning bolt pierced through the demons' bodies and spread like infectious viruses through the air. When Damien saw that the enemy couldn't break through the allied lines, he immediately sent the remaining direct forces forward the spear throwers took a step forward combined with sword techniques that complemented each other. But at the same time, a dozen strong demons broke through the front lines, sweeping away numerous warriors who defended against every unleashed attack. Seeing that the war was becoming tense, Damien was secretly worried about the cliff. He continued manipulating the lightning, thereby eliminating numerous demoniacs that raged with fury. Realizing that Damien was too great a threat, a demon floated in the air and prepared to descend from a great height to kill Damien and eliminate this threat. But before he even descended, several mages moved their staffs, casting spells to stop him. The other mages were first class and were precise in each of their attacks. The other demons couldn't resist all the attacks aimed at their discretion the value of humans had increased at that moment, something that had never happened before. A normal orc army consisted of 5,000 regular soldiers, 3,000 riding monstrous wolves, and some demons, who were the mages controlling everything from behind. But no matter how many their numbers were, whenever an orc or demon clashed against a human army, there would always be a power difference. Many die. But when it comes to sophisticated equipment, human soldiers far surpass demons. Numerous teams from orcs, who are a relatively new race that has appeared in the north, have not been seen, but they excel in their strength. Generally, in wars, humans have better tactics than demons, and their combat equipment is more precise. The key factor is that humans have a unified continental writing system, and the linguistic differences are relatively small, making mutual learning and understanding of shared information easier. Because orcs and demons are different races, it is very difficult to learn each other's languages. To understand them, one needs to learn seven or eight conventional orc languages. Because of this factor, communication among orcs on the battlefield is not very convenient. According to previous border war experiences, with the same amount of troops, the main army can often defeat orcs. In more than two months of war, orcs suffered great losses, especially when they attacked the seven great fortresses most orcs were either dead or wounded. This will be simple. Damien saw no complications in this battle they had the high ground, so there should be no major problems. Arg. The blows that demons managed to land left limbs on the ground of soldiers who did their best to eliminate their enemies. A battle for survival. We need to establish another line of defense, so prepare yourselves. This defense line is not very strong just a few rows of wooden fences to repel cavalry but it is still a major problem for the advancing demons. It takes time to break through this fence, and the temporary squad on the cliff continues shooting arrows downward. In every minute of delay, several rounds of feathered arrows were fired from the mountain, killing and injuring dozens more soldiers. 
Advancing on such an unfavorable battlefield was very negative for orcs because each time they took a step forward, many were killed. Danian safely continued casting spells each attack he unleashed disrupted the enemy lines, which favored his soldiers on the battlefield, who were doing everything to survive. Furthermore, the soldiers' arrows, although normal, were poisoned capable of knocking down a polar bear within seconds. A simple scratch from an arrow would be enough to leave many demons immobilized on the ground. Keep shooting arrows. This battle was far from over. Using powerful spells from a high area on the mountain, Damien had managed to eliminate many enemies. Damien observed the battlefield and initially judged that demon and orc casualties had exceeded 40%. If it were a normal army, they would have retreated long ago with 40% casualties. Orcs have a special culture, and their ability to endure casualties surpasses that of humans. Additionally, the major casualties occurred spontaneously, which would not give them any exaggerated feelings. But as the arrows continued to fall, orc soldiers kept falling, and blood splattered everywhere, which also made them think. Fear spread among the orcs, but their bloodthirsty nature and cruel military laws still made them fight instinctively. One demon who knew about their imminent defeat stepped forward, held a long sword bathed in his blood, and muttered, I will not live to see my lord dishonored by my poor command skills. Damien became more serious this time he formed a bow of electric rays and shot a furious Rafa arrow. The demon named Lars blocked that arrow with his sword. Lars was no ordinary demon his combat skills seemed to match those of all the soldiers on the battlefield relatively easily. Seeing that he couldn't do much more because it would harm other human soldiers on the battlefield, Damien first took care of eliminating other soldiers. Lars fiercely entered the forming camp, and the camp leader, Luther, also knew that this would not be an easy battle, so he first ordered his men not to leave any humans alive. The remaining orcs rushed down this path of death and entered the camp one after another, fighting hand to hand with soldiers who outnumbered them and were formed in a unique battle style that gave them an advantage. For a brief period, the camp descended into chaotic fighting they were afraid of harming their own people, and not even Damien dared to cast spells. Concerned about his friends in the camp, Damien immediately ordered the soldiers to release the ropes, use them to slide down the mountain, and then hurry into the camp with the soldiers of the temporary squad. Whoever doesn't die will get a rich reward. All the soldiers roared in the midst of battle. Holding a sword in their right hand, Damien entered the battlefield. His sword skill may not be the best, but it was meant to challenge any enemy and not be at a disadvantage against anyone. Human. Damien looked at this demon who dared to stand in front of him and smiled in a somewhat contemptuous way towards his enemies. The demon Lars, who originally wanted to eliminate Luther, heard many humans arriving from the rear and then looked at Damien flying towards them. I will take care of him. Damien opened his eyes slightly as he felt a strong sense of danger and, in just a few moments, raised his sword when he saw Lars taking the initiative to attack him. The two heavy weapons collided with the intention of seeking each other's life, producing a thunderous collision sound. Damien's hand trembled slightly, and he felt intense pain coursing through his body. What terrifying strength! I fear no warrior on this battlefield could withstand a single blow from this demon. Luther originally planned to close his eyes and await death. Seeing the powerful demon turn. Around and fight. Damien, who had only received one blow, struggled to stand up. The other warriors tried to approach, but they were all repelled by the strong impacts being generated. You are a strong human I don't understand your insistence on fighting hand to hand when you are actually a mage and still have plenty of magic left. Lars held his sword high, looking at Damien with disdain. Damien smiled awkwardly, not knowing that fights involve talking, but seeing that this demon wanted to catch his breath, he replied, I just wanted to learn, but now that you're interested in dying, I can show you something. Just as he said that, Damien snapped his fingers, and a black spot formed from his shadow. In a few brief moments, a figure over two meters tall formed and roared furiously as it saw Lars it disappeared from Damien's back in just a few seconds. Chapter 39 The earth trembled as the Divine General was unleashed, and everyone felt the air shatter as Damien's summoning appeared before Lars, attacking him with a powerful punch in the blink of an eye. 
Lars only had time to raise his hands, but his expression changed as the devastating force pushed him backward like a meteorite crashing into the earth. The mountain where Lars impacted was split in two by the Divine General, and Damien felt his magic draining at a terrifying speed, but knowing all the reserves he had, he did not stop. The battle had shifted at this point Lars couldn't even defend himself against the Divine General's attacks, and soon he was covered in blood. What kind of magic is this? Lars looked as all the cuts he had made on the Divine General healed at an impressive speed, so he looked to Damien for answers. Damien, who had his eyes blindfolded, smiled. He looked at all the demons around, who seemed to be waiting for his response, and said, the world has a balance, a beginning, and an end. My Divine General of the Eight Divergent Leaves, better known as the Demon Maharaga, is unique in its appearance and took me more than three years to create. To give life to his creation, Damien used Brian's soul, who now controlled his Divine General, and, to be more precise, his will to kill demons was what gave life to its movements. You would need an immense amount of mana to keep it in battle are you suppressing your mana? Lars looked at Damien with horror, as if he had discovered something. Damien smiled, snapped his fingers, and his divine general appeared beside Lars, forcefully attacking his head. Feeling that brute force, Lars, who wanted to do something, felt powerless as he watched those enormous fists crush him completely. Incredible creation, a human made an artificial demon. Roar. In just a few moments, Lars had been completely defeated his head was torn from his body, and the divine demon once again killed him, walking toward Damien, awaiting further instructions. Once Lars died, the orc soldiers finally lost the will to fight. What are you waiting for? Kill them all. Damien shouted as he watched the demons flee in different ways. The divine general disappeared, killing hundreds of orcs and demons in just a few minutes. Only a few powerful orcs killed the soldiers blocking the way and fled to the mountains, where they were later killed. Taking advantage of the panic and the retreat of the orcs, Damien walked toward Lars to take that escape route that seemed to be made of better material. Help the wounded don't just stand there. Damien shouted as he saw everyone standing still. Everyone froze upon seeing that monster over three meters tall, with wings on the sides of its face that were practically its eyes to many, and a long tail behind its head. Additionally, the thing floating above its head moved a few times when it was fighting the demon. Luke shivered upon seeing Damien summoning now he understood many things when Dom said that the best student he had wasn't him. No matter what I do, you're always one step ahead. When all the demons were exterminated in the vicinity, Damien returned his divine general to his shadow so that everyone could concentrate. He didn't know if these were the actions Baron Hardin wanted to take, but now that they had eliminated a high-level demon in combat, things had become very complicated to continue advancing. It seems that this demon was the one we needed to eliminate, so our mission is finished, but now we will station ourselves and recover. Damien walked toward Luther and was surprised to see him in bad shape. Don't look at me like that every day I'm in worse condition. Luther had been healed by the priests, and he stood up to talk to Damien. The battlefield was now very active the wounded were being treated, and those who could move were cutting the heads off all the demons lying dead on the ground. Everyone knew that sometimes there were certain demons who pretended to be dead to attack distracted humans cleaning the battlefield. The demon heads were being cut off, and the corpses were being stacked to be burned later. The enemy had no right to a dignified burial they were pigs that needed to be eliminated. Damien felt Luther's gaze, so he asked, do you have something to say? That demon. It's not a demon symbolically, it's a demon, but it's just a monster made with the magic my master taught me. It took me more than three years to shape it, mainly comprising all my qualities maximized to be lethal against powerful enemies. Damien didn't want to say much about his divine general. This, too, Luther understood. Sir, we have the resources that were moving these demons. Even the materials seized had not had time to be burned by the demons, and they all fell into Damien's hands. The baggage escorted by the demons was very rich, including not only food and iron items but also a large amount of fabric and gold coins. There were many soldiers, which meant many eyes, so Damien only took a quick look over them. Take the coins, food, and fabric. I will keep the magical materials, books, and other things that only mages can use. 
This war has lasted more than two months, and the soldiers have suffered numerous losses. This was the least that could be done for them, and Damien was more than willing. Now that he had found this opportunity for an unexpected gain, Damien naturally didn't want to keep it all to himself. As long as everyone exercised discretion, Damien was willing to help them so that the soldiers could gain a little. This is what everyone left for you. Luther grabbed a handful of gold coins, about twenty, and handed them to Damien. Damien had given a lot for this battle practically, everyone here was still alive because of him, so they wouldn't be so brazen as to only leave him with the books. More than twenty gold coins equate to a year's salary at the Magic Tower. After seeing the gold coins, Damien naturally felt tempted. However, his desire for money is relatively small he has been undergoing rigorous training and living in a closed environment all this time since coming to this world. Take the money divided among those who can't fight anymore. Damien gave the coins to Luther to handle. Seeing that only magical things were left, Damien threw them all into his shadow and ordered a retreat after seeing that they weren't as bad as he initially thought. Late at night, after the soldiers fell asleep, Damien quietly walked along the walls of this fortress. Only a few guards remained who occasionally greeted him Damien returned the greeting and walked to a secluded area. Damien would leave after a few more weeks he had been here for a long time, so he would only stay a few more days before embarking on his own adventure. I won't win this war if I only kill the demon king those who cause more havoc are the demons scattered all over the world, so we should first exterminate all of them. Damien thought as he looked at the stars in the cloudy sky. Chapter 40 a few weeks ago, Damien had passed by the fortresses and taken all the books, whether magical or not. The collection he had now exceeded a thousand books, so for now, there were few things he could look into. There were also many villages that had been abandoned by the villagers all of them, prisoners of panic, were taken to the main cities because they would have been killed if not for that. Demons were beings without feelings they wouldn't change no matter how much one knew about them. It was known for certain that they were adaptable beings to humans to eliminate them, learning customs and preparing simply to kill. World Domination It was impossible for something like that to happen, so maybe their goal was different. The circuitous journey between these villages lasted approximately three hours. Damien took quick rounds to obtain useful items and eliminate demons in the vicinity. Damien had learned a spell to fly, obtained from demons, but even though it wasn't a very complete spell, he could only fly for a few hours. Many villages of hunters and warriors had fled whether they liked it or not, they would have to evacuate because in the north, they were in a brutal war, and the worst part was that they were losing. There were many ghostly places, so Damien didn't stay long in these places. He wasn't brave at all things like these were especially terrifying, so learning to live in solitude was something Damien had to master. Should I burn down the houses? Damien immediately dismissed those ideas probably humans would return to these houses later if the war calmed down a bit. Damien carefully searched each house and soon discovered a library in an abandoned castle. These castles belonged to barons, people who had been in power for a long time, so during that time, each person collected history books, magical books, or general information. The Knowledge of Priest Anton it should be the inheritance of a good cleric with notable healing magic. Damien, without much thought, began to throw all the books into his shadow. This ability somehow gave him a certain amount of storage that hadn't been filled until now. There are more than 300 books in the library, most of which are about history, geography, and the humanities. Damien opened the books one by one and discovered that there was very little content inside. Each book was bound with only a few parchment sheets, which were not very well done, and each page was extremely thick. When he started looking for information about this world, Damien discovered that there shouldn't be very advanced papermaking technology. Almost all the books Damien had seen were made from skin. The recorded history of the continent dates back at least 500 years. There are intelligent people in every generation. The reason why papermaking hasn't appeared now is probably that there is no social demand. Parchment is expensive to produce and doesn't favor cultural diffusion. But, seen inversely, it is useful for the nobility to monopolize knowledge and maintain class solidification. The aristocratic class was not willing to allow common citizens to learn knowledge, so naturally, 
they were not interested in inventing paper and studying book printing for everyone. In addition to books on history, geography, and the humanities, Damien also found more than a dozen night novels, which should be recreational reading. Additionally, Damien also discovered a cult Bible, which recorded a mysterious legend called the God of Slaughter. Damien looked at the book, and when he saw the name of the God of Slaughter, he felt a bit anxious about the feelings it was giving him. In addition to this strange book, the most precious books are the notebooks and memoirs of nobles from all generations. Damien looked carefully and discovered that they contained many secrets about the upper class of nobles, such as the marriage between the royal family and that noble. There is a special notebook that records many craftsmanship techniques. Damien leaned over, sorted these books separately, found several wooden boxes, and packed them, preparing to read them slowly later. Damien carefully searched the mansion, and when he didn't find anything else, he thought to himself, in general, barons should have magical books. But they wouldn't be in plain sight, so Damien searched this place and finally discovered a secret passage in a warehouse. The secret passage was only about 20 meters long, and inside were several people who had died of starvation. At the end of the secret passage was a secret room of less than 10 square meters. There were very few things in the secret room. Apart from a blue insignia, there was only a scroll and a beautifully crafted book. The outer layer of the book has copper inlays, and the inner paper is delicate and smooth it should be made from a special magical beast skin. Damien opened it and was astonished, this exquisite book with copper cover inlays turned out to be a very rare and precious magical book. Normal magic books are common, but there are ancient ones that have lost magic written in them. There are only a few magical towers in the north, and each magical tower is controlled by a great mage. To join the magic tower, you must serve the great mages and sign a long contract. The vast majority of mages are active in various kingdoms throughout the central continent, but there are also many unaffiliated mages here. Damien wrapped the magical book in layers and placed it at the bottom of the suitcase they used to store more valuable things. Then he glanced at the scroll and discovered that it was indeed a strange method of magic. When he wanted to leave, he heard a distant cry that was as annoying as it was anxious. Are there still people in this place? Upon leaving the castle, he looked into the distance and saw a curtain of smoke rising. Knowing that things could be somewhat complex, Damien headed towards that site. When he arrived, he was able to take over a village. There were numerous corpses on the ground, and the wounds on their bodies were as tiny as if they hadn't been attacked. At that moment, the ground trembled. Damien saw a girl running out from a wooden house, and when she looked at where he was, her eyes seemed to show surprise, fear, and anxiety. Come here. Damien gestured with his hand, but at that moment, a black figure appeared on the path to this village. Feeling the hostility from the other party being oppressive, Damien stood in front of the people while holding his sword with his left hand. At last, someone with certain abilities I'm going to have a lot of fun. Chapter 41 Damien looked towards where a group of children had gathered, waved his hand, and they all came running up behind him. Stay calm I will take care of protecting you. The children were terrified but still had a strong desire to live, something Damien had noticed, so he smiled confidently. Sir, are you a mage? Of course, I will take care of killing that demon. Damien felt two other figures approaching from both sides as he said these words, and deep down, his heart raced at the immense amounts of mana he sensed. Taking a step forward, Damien took off his jacket and said, run all the way to the trees, run without looking back, and no matter what happens, never stop. Sir, won't you come with us? Run. Damien removed the black bandages from his eyes, giving the children a fierce look, although they seemed unaware of the imminent danger they were in. It was then that the children ran, surprising Damien. Surprised? We'll kill them once we bother to deal with him isn't that fascinating? Damien's eyes focused on the light-haired demon hidden beneath the hood. It had two long horns curving inward from the back of its head, black scara, and white eyes, unlike most demons. This demon wore a mask below its nose, concealing its mouth. It wore a long, flowing cape with two metal shoulder pads. Under the outer cape, it wore a darker coat with a hood, accommodating its horns through holes. 
It was dressed in a light-colored tunic with a series of symbols resembling eyes on its chest. It also wore a necklace with an oval pendant. My name is Schlacht. Sorry for visiting you a thousand years earlier than I should, but I must try to kill you now while you're not as strong. I fear that if I don't kill you now, you'll be even harder to kill in the future. Schlacht was clear in his words, directed at Damien, who remained composed. You seem to know me. Damien was internally surprised the demon's words indicated that it knew him a thousand years in the future, implying many things that had not yet happened. Schlacht's eyes moved towards Damien, who remained expressionless. Damien was the strongest in the north, something that should be taken into account to advance in human territories and take a large part of the north now that it was under heavy attack. But Damien didn't know this right now, there were two more powerful demons besides Schlacht, and he couldn't help but ask, the seven sages of destruction. If it's them, it seems in very poor taste to see three of you wanting to kill a fifteen-year-old mage. Damien wouldn't take this lightly, so in just a few seconds, his divine general and two more figures appeared behind him, roaring powerfully and shaking the earth. Have you mastered it so soon? Well, it's not surprising knowing who you are. Schlacht was surprised for a moment before regaining composure in the face of what he was seeing. A thousand years in the future, how is it that a human has lived so long? Well, that doesn't matter because you'll die, so it's better to do it now than in the future. Damien didn't know what the demon was talking about, but he understood perfectly that it was here to kill him because a thousand years in the future, he would be more powerful than he is now. Upon hearing these words, he immediately knew that, if that were the case, he would definitely find the source of eternal youth. For this answer, Damien didn't know how to feel about it, but one thing was certain, he needed to get out of this battlefield. To do that, he needed to kill at least two demons who were at his sides. Damien always felt that this demon hadn't come to leave empty-handed. Schlacht stared at Damien and then smiled slightly. He raised his hand slightly towards where Damien was, and in a few seconds, a powerful gust of cold wind stirred, and a sword shot out from a shadow. Knowing there was no turning back, Damien disappeared from his location while his divine general took care of the vanguard. The ground where the sword struck split in two and continued for at least a kilometer away. By then, Damien had appeared behind the demon to Schlack's right, fiercely swinging his sword at his target's stomach. I've got you. Damien thought, but at that moment, a rune appeared on the ground, and in less time than he could count, a figure teleported to the side, unleashing a powerful explosive spell. But seeing that the situation was not good, Damien immediately turned into a burst of electric rays and disappeared from the central area of the explosion, only to appear a hundred meters away, but this time with a horrible wound on his right hand. Schlack's hand waved moments later, not giving Damien a chance to check the damage he had received. This time, three powerful attacks were directed at Damien, but with superior speed, he managed to dodge them without any problems. The Divine General at this moment had entered battle with the nearby demons, showing a fierce look, then opening its mouth and letting out a powerful roar that made everyone on the battlefield tremble and feel dizzy for a moment. Schlacht was in a very bad mood at not being able to kill Damien, who should have been an easy prey, so this time, using more force than before, he raised his hand towards Damien again. The speed of the enemy spells was so fast that Damien barely had time to dodge for a few seconds. But at the last moment, a sword pierced Damien's right shoulder as he moved like lightning in all directions. When Schlacht saw Damien in that state, he smiled with satisfaction now, he felt very excited, something that hadn't happened in years. It hurts a bit. Damien looked at his horrible wound on his shoulder but didn't panic his gaze was directed towards the demon, waiting for his next move. The next moment, his divine general reappeared in front of him, preventing other swords from piercing his body, thus defending his main priorities. The swords pierced the body of the divine general, but at the same time, the wheel above its head turned once and ended up pulling out the swords without any apparent damage. Schlacht walked towards where Damien was, looked at the blood flowing from his right hand and shoulder, but still showed no surprise. Are you the same Thunder Lord from a thousand years in the future? You look pitiful now. It is so pitiful that you were afraid to face me a thousand years later I wonder what kind of coward you must be to come a thousand years early to face me. You've given up your pride what a disappointment you must be to the demons. 
A smile appeared on Damien's lips his gaze was not at all defeated at this moment. Schlacht waved his hand, and dozens of dark swords appeared in a clear sky, releasing a powerful magical power. I'll kill you with this next attack this is your bad luck for associating with that woman. But at that moment, hundreds of magical circles appeared around and at that time the earth trembled with an uncommon fury. Giant thunderstorms, like ancestral beasts, descended from the sky with a shocking whistle, crushing the earth where Damien was a few seconds ago, exploding everything, casting the burning debris around and killing hundreds of demons hiding around. Storm of Divine Thunderstorms, one of my three most powerful spells. Damien murmured as his divine general covered him with his body. Impossible. Schlacht couldn't believe what he was looking at so he immediately created a magic shield to protect him. The thunderstorms treaded the earth with a supernatural force, causing the soil and mountains to tremble equally. Each impact is like the blow of a giant hammer, causing everything around him to collapse into an infernal frenetic. As they advance, a wave of destruction spreads around them, ravaging everything on their way within a ten-kilometer radius. Trees are unrooted, the houses of the village where he was found have collapsed and the ground has been shattered equally. The sky darkened with stormy clouds and lightning danced on the horizon, briefly illuminating the scene to death. I must kill them all. Damien murmured knowing that if he didn't, he might not be able to do it later. Chapter 42 a few kilometers away from where the fight between Damien and the Seven Sages of Destruction was unfolding, two children were running with all their might along the path they had been told to follow. We need to hurry, Liam. Those demons might catch up to us. A boy named Luca ran through some bushes while holding hands with his best friend, Lucian. The surroundings were dark, so they couldn't run very fast without stumbling a few times, but their will to live and the desire to escape the demons were too strong for them to stop. They knew that Hardin's castle was nearby, which is why they were running as if nothing else mattered in this world. We have to be careful of the monsters they could eat us before we reach a safe place. No place is safe, so we can keep running without making much noise. Crack. But at that moment, a figure in the darkness suddenly appeared, and upon seeing these two children, who were easy prey, the creature hiding in the darkness came running, bearing its fangs. Liam stood in front of Lucian he wanted to stop that monster, which was about to attack them, and made no sound, simply waiting for his death. But at that moment, the cry of an animal was heard, and when Liam opened his eyes, he saw a tall man with pointed ears. This man, who seemed to be a priest, looked at the monster that had fallen far away and then turned around to see the two terrified children. You must have been through a lot, but now you're safe. The priest bent down slightly, and with a wave of his hands, the children's wounds were completely healed. Who are you? Lucian couldn't trust just anyone because they could be a demon, but when he saw the pointed ears of the man instead of horns, he breathed a sigh of relief. I am Priest Kraft. Are there more people escaping from the demons? Kraft had come to this place to make sure no more innocent people would be affected by the demons in this battle. Liam's eyes lit up as he remembered something and shouted, Priest, you must save the mage who helped us. A mage? Kraft could sense great waves of mana in the distance and giant explosions coming from afar, so maybe the battle was still ongoing. Yes, he is fighting against many powerful demons. He's not very big and looks a lot like an older brother I had before he was killed by demons. I don't think he should be more than twenty years old. Kraft was about to ask what kind of demons they had seen, but at that moment, everything around them fell silent, and a powerful lightning explosion hit the ground where they stood. Everyone, take cover. Kraft took out a grimoire and muttered some mysterious words a circle formed around him, covering him and the children around him. The waves that were stirred up swept over everything trees disappeared, and this fertile land turned into a hell in just a few minutes after those enormous lightning bolts struck the ground. What incredible magical power! Kraft's eyes showed incredible emotion, knowing that this magic could well have reached a holy level. But there was no time to rejoice he had to focus on keeping this shield active and regenerating long enough for everyone to emerge and scathe from this devastating attack. The lightning split the sky, dancing among the clouds before falling furiously to the ground, creating huge craters that burned due to the high temperatures of the lightning. After a few seconds, things began to calm down. 
Kraft looked around at the surroundings, which were filled with darkness, but he did not remove his barrier for fear that there might still be more attacks that could affect them. When he knew that everything was fine, Kraft leaned towards the group of children and said, Listen carefully you must run in that direction after I remove this shield both of you must hold hands and never look back. Will you be okay? Lucian didn't know how strong this man was, but what he had just done was truly something only a priest could survive on their own. Kraft smiled kindly and said reassuringly, Run the goddess will protect you on the way, so do not fear. By the time he said these words, Kraft turned towards where there were still large traces of mana and furrowed his brows. I hope it doesn't lead to such a complicated place to handle. I need to see the results. Damien stood up after unleashing that powerful spell that ended up taking a third of his mana, which was a terrifying amount. Looking around, he noticed the corpses of many demons but couldn't find Schlacht, who had at one point vanished underground. To think that you will master your best spells, you are truly a terrifying being. Damien furrowed his brows, raised the edge of his sword towards Schlacht, and, seeing other demons appearing in the air, he knew things wouldn't be as simple as he had hoped. But he didn't lose heart suppressing the pain in his body, Damien spent more mana to heal his divine general and, regardless of anything else, threw himself into battle. If you come to kill me, wait for me to kill you too. The sky filled with an orange fire, and in an instant, hundreds of fireballs headed towards Damien, who had launched himself forward. Chapter 43 I must reach him. Damien blinked on the battlefield even now, he wasn't hindered by the horrible wounds on his skin, so there was no problem for him to move through the sky. The Divine General attacked a demon at least twice his size with force, sending it crashing to the ground and creating a huge crater. The gusts of wind from the blows on that demon momentarily left it out of the fight. When it appeared again on the ground, its long dagger that came out of its right arm pierced the demon's chest, lifting it off the ground and throwing it hundreds of meters away. It's not dead yet destroy its body and then come to support my battle. Damien issued a mental command that directed the demon's movements. The cold wind now carried the scent of blood, making those present aware of much of what was happening in this battle. In the distance, flames falling from the sky like a meteorite were returned with a spell that reflected magic, as long as it was a spell Damien controlled or had knowledge of. Schlacht lowered his gaze, seeing Damien getting farther away from the battlefield with dissatisfaction. He remembered this battle perfectly after seeing it in each of the possibilities that could have happened. He wasn't here to kill Damien out of whim but because he would be a very big problem for the future, where everything had to be controlled for his lord to succeed. I won't allow you to become a nuisance to my lord. Schlacht raised his hand and numerous maniac runes appeared around him, launching large ice spears at Damien at a fearsome speed. The huge bodies of those flying spears occupied a large area of the sky, and if it weren't for Damien flying, he wouldn't have noticed the angles he had to escape. Damien noticed the spells heading in his direction and knew from experience that this attack wasn't being manipulated but simply being launched without consideration. This will work. Huge walls of fire sprang from the ground, and through a manipulation spell of these pillars, numerous compressed fireballs shot out, exploding with the ice attacks. With a bang, Schlack's body landed in front of Damien, who had stopped to mark the battlefield. When Damien saw this, darkness surged from his body he blinked and attacked the demon with force, who hadn't made any moves. Incredible strength. Damien was surprised that this demon was also very strong despite being a mage, but that surprise quickly turned into a focus on exchanging more precise blows. Damien's sword clashed against Schlack's claws he was sure he could advance, but at that moment, he felt a presence approaching from afar. When he saw that it was a man with two horns on his head, he decided to retreat. But the proximity to that demon was reduced, which made him change position and launch a lightning bolt aimed at him with his right hand's finger. The explosion wasn't short at all, but, taking advantage of what he heard and knowing that he was close to his enemies, he used an explosion that triggered a new pillar of fire. Retreating, Damien breathed heavily, and his gaze fell on his right arm, which kept dripping blood from the open wounds. Now he wasn't as well as he would like, but what comforted him was that this demon also had received several cuts. I'm running out of mana I'll have to focus more on my attacks. Damien thought this as he dodged the attacks that the other demon who had appeared began to hunt him down. 
But in the next moment, the Divine General appeared beside Damien, dragging that demon along the ground. The ground trembled, and Damien took the opportunity to impact the demon's body with two electric balls. Boom! Boom! The lightning burned the demon's body, but at the same time, Damien frowned when he felt that he was losing mobility in his left arm. Now things weren't as good as taking liberties. From the sky, Schlack looked at Damien, and, waving his hand, a powerful pressure fell from the sky. Being sensitive to the surroundings, Damien moved hundreds of meters away from this place while breathing heavily. Impressive magic, but it's not yet as developed as you could make it. Damien broke out in a cold sweat as he felt his body weigh more and more, but at the moment he was about to move, the black book that marked his spells moved. Era calendar of the great mage flam, unknown moon year, you have survived for four years and 223 days. Right now, you are in a terrible situation, facing a demon who came to kill you because you caused him problems in the future. If you attack him now, you will surely die, but if you wait defensively, maybe you can survive. Damien, who was about to move, froze in place and, without thinking, created a powerful lightning barrier that repelled powerful spells heading towards him. Chapter 44 A strong magical power emerged from the surroundings, like a stream spreading throughout the area. At that moment, cracks emerged on the ground as electric lightning spread out like a barrier around Damien, causing the swords directed at him to disappear from the impacts. The ground was filled with an intense blue color making the entire North able to see what was happening on this battlefield and causing everyone to pay attention at the same time. A human mage would never surrender to a demon even in death, it is preferable to die fighting than to surrender to these demons, who are obligated to exterminate from the face of the earth. I won't be able to move now with a cut on my leg. Damien looked at that wound, extended his hand, and burned the cut to prevent it from bleeding more quickly. But as time passed, his mana was running out. He didn't understand who he was facing, but it was obvious that he was a few steps below the Demon King, so Damien didn't feel uneasy at all. Even in this battle, with his little combat experience, he had killed incredibly powerful mages. There was no reason at all to be ashamed of his current body condition. I'm just fighting for what they can't do. Damien remembered his words of not calling himself a hero and held on to them, but now that he had been on this battlefield for months, he realized that the front needed powerful mages. Watching as the sky filled with powerful spells, a glimmer shone in Damien's eyes before he extended his hand. Immediately, thunder-filled clouds came from all directions and gathered in the sky above him. After which, a rumbling sound echoed through the skies moments before a lightning dragon spanning tens of hundreds of meters pierced through the clouds. Finally, Damien rose from the ground, and this western-style dragon began to surround him. The electric arcs shimmered as the lightning dragon began to surround him. A moment later, a huge thunder arc appeared in Damien's hand. First, I'll take care of the one creating the illusions. With a cold expression on his face, Damien looked at Schlacht, who was in the sky. Then he used his hands to aim the bow at him until the mana was so capable of parting the sky. In an instant, the deep blue light merged with the dragon, compressing it so much that it formed an arrow that didn't look like a dragon. Kraka. Boom. Part of Damien's clothes had disappeared, revealing the horrible wounds on his body that credited the bloody battle he was going through with these demons, who had been seeking his life since they arrived. Looking at his target, the lightning on the arrow lit up with an intense blue, showing signs of instability in Damien's hands. In the sky, Schlack's pupils dilated when he saw Damien's actions. The mockery in his eyes was very evident all the wisdom he had acquired with the knowledge of the future and all the timelines he had memorized so far flew over his mind. Incredible to have mastered the Indra's bow, the famous and ancient god-killing spell that disappeared in ancient times. That bow-shaped spell is extremely powerful. However, in your hands, that concentrated power is unstable, so regardless of the outcome, you won't kill me. I'm not trying to kill you. A faint smile appeared on Damien's face when he heard this. Inhaling a deep breath of air, the next moment, a chaotic light shone in his hands. The uncontrollable lightning struck the ground, creating large trenches on the ground the sky roared loudly, and the air mercilessly whipped around, raising large gusts of dirt. 
the devastating power in Damien's hands began to diminish. After which, this arrow became more subtle as time dared to pass. A faint black color appeared on Damien's face. After which, Schlack smiled upon seeing that his conjectures were true. However, his smile lacked emotion, making it cruel. But Damien, knowing that he was losing control, released the arrow, which was hooked to Indra's bow. Instantly. His eyes became extremely sharp under that devastating attack. Boom! That long arrow turned into a monstrous dragon, formed by pure lightning. Meanwhile, in the sky, Schlack's pupils shrank at that moment. That lightning dragon disappeared the instant it was fired. The next moment, Schlack summoned his demonic armor that emerged from his body, covered in a black glow. As the demonic aura grew larger and larger, it looked like evil filled the surroundings. For those who were far away, it was a visual spectacle. Suddenly, the space behind Schlacht seemed to become heavy before those lightning bolts reached him. However, before even his armor was summoned, that attack had reached him. Schlacht's body was violently sent backward with force. After which, it penetrated his body and came out through his back. Finally, without a clear fall, he disappeared with that burst of light. The lightning flooded the sky, making everyone mistakenly believe it was the end of the world. Those demons who remained fighting against the divine general paled at seeing their leader sent flying. Many black figures disappeared and reappeared in front of Schlack a dark barrier formed in front of them, trying to prevent him from dying. This spell was known as one that killed gods. Immediately upon receiving a few impacts, everyone felt suffocated and spat blood. Everyone was surprised and moved aside to avoid that electric arrow that continued forward without stopping. Chapter 45 Damien had been thrown back by the shockwave his divine general appeared to cover his body, taking charge at all times to protect him as per his instructions. The barrier created by the demons that had emerged from the darkness failed to hold. Immediately, a crunchy sound appeared before the magical barrier disappeared. The explosion afterward was like the sun had exploded. All the demons couldn't believe what they were seeing at this moment. Lord Schlacht. The demons looked as though this attack seemed to have ended the life of the demon who had attacked Damien, using half of the remaining mana in his reserves. Schlacht's aura fluctuated in the huge crater that impacted the ground. Many had looked at the bloody hole in his chest. Blood gushed from that wound that spell that had been used against him, even though it was incomplete, had destroyed half of his armor. No one could believe that the armor bestowed by the demon king himself was broken. How is this possible? Schlacht in the crater used his hand to touch the blood flowing from his wound before murmuring some incomprehensible words. Suddenly, upon remembering every timeline he had been investigating, his eyes turned fierce as he realized that the one in which Damien survived was becoming real. He's just a human child how is it possible that he has so much mana? At that moment, the demonic aura surged from Schlack's body. Additionally, a fierce glow reflected the bloodlust in his eyes. Clearly, he had been gravely injured by Damien's god-killing arrow, the famous Indra's bow. Damien, who was motionless in the sky, looked at Schlack with no emotions on his face. His right hand, which had unleashed a powerful spell, was now bathed in blood. Moreover, it seemed that part of his arm had been severely burned. I will kill you. Schlacht was about to boast when his pupils dilated. Damien, who had not said anything, formed a new bow with electric lightning and raised it with difficulty, aiming it at Schlacht, who had stood up with difficulty. Schlacht shuddered at the sight of that lightning bolt. After all, he didn't understand why Damien's attacks had suddenly become so reserved. The demons who had been watching him only saw a magical amount enough to be a first-class mage but not that strong, but even so, this demonstrated strength was nothing like the reports. At this moment, after many wounds, how was it possible that Damien was still willing to fight? Fresh blood flowed constantly from Schlack's chest. His eyes were grim as he waved his hand. Immediately, the blood on the ground sprouted like blades and enveloped him, hiding his body. Human, you should stop creating this spectacle. Although that previous attack was extremely powerful, you are on the verge of collapse, and this time I'm sure you won't be able to use it continuously. Therefore, regardless of what you do today, I will kill you and then kill all the humans in the north. 
Floating lightly, Schlack left the crater as his sinister voice spread throughout the battlefield. As such, Damien, seeing all that darkness, could not identify the location of his enemy. Clearly, this enemy was very powerful, but his greatest attribute was how intelligent he was. After being effectively attacked, he didn't dare to be careless. The seven sages of destruction, attack with me, and let's eliminate this human. A fierce cry was emitted from the curtain of darkness. To kill Damien, it seemed that Schlacht had no choice but to ask for help from the other demons. The Divine General arrived in front of Damien, and two other figures that had regenerated stood in the air on both sides of him. With long swords, powerful battle auras, and sinister auras, everyone looked at the demons with clear desires to eliminate them. Damien waved his hand before the demons moved. Meanwhile, his eyes blinked rapidly. Schlacht was right. That previous assault was very exhausting and also damaged his right arm a lot. Initially, he thought he could use that attack to kill Schlacht, but that was not the case. It seemed that he had underestimated that demon. Furthermore, with his current control over magic, there was no way he could continuously unleash the full power of the god-killing bow. Even if he couldn't unleash all his power, he couldn't use it freely. All he could do now was have his puppets fight, by time, and see how much he could heal his wounds to use that attack again. However, during that time, he wouldn't know if his puppets would be able to stop the demons. Kill them. As Damien thought about this, explosive sounds filled with killing intent sounded from the other end of the darkness. After which, several light attacks impacted them. Damien was about to move, but at that moment, a calm voice was heard behind him, you should rest first. Who? Kraft suddenly appeared in the middle of the battlefield holding a book in his left hand, muttered some words, and then a golden light that repelled the demonic aura burst into this place. But even without stopping, he moved his hand, and Damien's exhausted body began to heal. How strong are you? Damien realized that this elf was not at all an ordinary man, so trusting him immediately meant that this was the opportunity mentioned in the book. Kraft looked at Damien and said, I see that you still have a lot of magic, but facing them won't be a path where we can come out alive. Just entertain them until I can fight again, giving it my all my puppets will support you. Damien sat on the ground and closed his eyes, concentrating his mana to accelerate his healing. When Damien looked at those demons joining the battle, he felt a little anxious. Although he had managed to damage a powerful demon, he didn't believe he would come out alive from here, but fortunately, someone came to support him. Kraft looked at Damien's wounds those horrible burns, cuts, curses, and stabs were something that no one could withstand. Damned demons, how dare you cross our borders expecting to kill whoever you please. But at the same time, a voice emerged from behind them. Chapter 46 The sky felt as if large waves of mana were being released, and at that moment, one of the most powerful mages in the north appeared, followed by numerous first-class mages who showed up for the fight. Damien. Luke looked at Damien next to the priest who was healing him and approached him immediately, only to see those horrific wounds. How is he? Damien opened his eyes and said, not as bad as those demons, but we must not let them escape under any circumstances. For some reason, I believe that the demon can see the future he came after me personally. Damien's words surprised everyone Kraft even looked up to see that demon flying overhead, and his brows furrowed as he saw how everything was becoming more disastrous. Damien stood up without much concern now that first-class mages had appeared on this battlefield. With the arrival of reinforcements, there were very few things that could happen to force him to fight again. Standing in the sky, amidst darkness and demons, Schlacht and the others stopped. Then, they looked at the group of mages who were raising their magic staffs, charging powerful spells that could attack them at any moment. Initially, the mission was to kill Damien, but they had all suffered severe injuries with that last attack facing humans now would not be very intelligent. Schlacht, what should we do? A demon quickly asked for guidance. With a brutal gleam in his eyes, Schlacht held his chest as his expression turned fierce, and he asked, since they are here, let's kill them all. How is it possible that these humble humans force us to retreat? Attack. Understood. When everyone realized that the demon's voice was full of murderous intent, they all unleashed powerful spells that headed towards the sky. 
Damien didn't know what the intentions of these demons were, but definitely many would die in this battle, so he made sure his divine general served as a vanguard for all the mages on this battlefield. The battle started in an instant, and powerful spells were cast. However, just as the battle was reaching a critical point, an extremely loud thunder suddenly resounded throughout the sky. Then, everyone raised their heads and looked into the distance. At the edge of the dark clouds, everyone could see a bloodied figure had appeared, holding a lightning bolt in the shape of a spear in their hands. Fear finally appeared on Schlack's dark face when he saw that figure, and memories brought an unforgettable scene to him his own death. You will die too with that attack. Damien couldn't afford to let more mages die in a battle for which he felt responsible, so as soon as he regained mobility in his body, he began his final attack before retreating from the battlefield. What is that? No one understood the words coming out of Schlack's mouth. But when they saw a lightning bolt being held by Damien's hand, they would never forget what they saw today in their lives. A figure of a young teenager rose above the skies, surrounded by lightning. Merging with the lightning, the figure disappeared in an instant. Damien was extremely fast just a second ago, he was a thousand meters away when thunder rumbled through the skies, and the next second, he appeared no more than fifty meters from Schlacht. Regardless of anything else, he knew that demon had to die. Humans wouldn't win the war if there was a demon who could see the future. Schlacht had to die in this battle. You will die, even if it's the last thing I do. Damien didn't know where he got the strength to speak those words, but combined with the lightning, his figure grew, and regardless of anything else, he attacked. The lightning bolts around Damien became more and more numerous, concentrating in his hands, which Sikons later attacked Schlacht. Kill him and retreat. All the demons moved, attacking Damien, but the lightning bolts were so powerful that many received serious injuries before fleeing. Damien looked at Schlacht, his eyes flashing with a fixed intent to kill him, and that's what he would do. Followed by the lightning bolts, he launched them from his hands, and they shot towards the heart of Schlacht, who paled at that attack. But Damien had taken many risks a gravity spell sent him flying towards a mountain, impacting with such force that it split in half. Still, the thunder spear had been launched, piercing and tearing apart Schlack's body, which let out a fierce roar. The skies roared with furious lightning all the mages on the ground were covered in magical shields, but one in particular shot out at great speed with wind spells towards where Damien had fallen. Kraft, who was healing a mage, saw this but couldn't move, not without healing the other mages in the surroundings first, so after taking care of them, he ran in the same direction. I will die this way. Damien didn't know the current state of his body, but since he couldn't move, that meant many things when analyzing a medical condition. Damien's view was tired he couldn't see clearly around him, but he knew that his divine general was still fighting in the sky while other demons had fled. You are terribly persistent, human I will kill you now before you become more powerful. But before Damien fell asleep, he closed his eyes, and the next moment, a demon appeared in front of him. Damien wanted to stand up and closed his eyes, and the next moment, he heard a fierce battle. When he opened his eyes, he saw Luke fighting that demon. He knew this was dangerous, especially when that demon was using magic that broke shields. Don't fight, flee. Damien's words got stuck in his throat he couldn't utter any words, but when he saw a spell heading towards him at that moment, he thought he would die. I won't allow it. Luke stood in front of Damien, creating a powerful shield using all his mana, but even so, that demon spell pierced through his shield and struck his body. Luke. Damien, it won't be your time to die on this battlefield. An extraordinary mage like you must live longer. Luke dropped his magic staff before his body turned into black particles and disappeared. Damien couldn't help but feel his heart beating strongly when he saw Luke's death. Why would he do something so stupid? You should have fled. It wasn't a smart death Damien would die the next moment, and only two more would die instead of just one. But suddenly, several injured mages appeared on the battlefield they surrounded the demon and attacked him. Priest, get Lord Damien out of here and make sure to take him to the city with magical shields. He will be the future of humans, our salvation, and the one who will kill the demon king. Kraft looked into the eyes of the mage who had spoken to him and nodded. 
He knew what would happen next, so he ran towards where Damien was while the other mages attacked that demon with all they had. No, everyone must flee. Those were Damien's last thoughts as he saw how all the mages were slaughtered, just like Luke. But unable to mourn their deaths, Damien lost consciousness. Chapter 47 No matter how many years pass, Damien will never understand people who let their emotions guide them. In general, Damien managed to figure out that humans can include the search for meaning and purpose in life, questioning reality and knowledge, reflecting on morality and ethics, as well as exploring concepts like truth, justice, and happiness. It's a process of self-discovery and understanding the world that can guide a person's actions and decisions. Luke had made the decision to die it took only a few seconds for him to step forward and save Damien's life at the cost of his own. But he wasn't the only one to die saving Damien over a hundred mages had died in combat fighting against that demon of killer magic. The demon armies led by numerous powerful enemies attacked the northern borders many soldiers died, and it was estimated that the deaths by the end of the year would amount to a hundred thousand. A terrifying number considering it would only be the casualties of one year, so in a few years if things continue like this, children and women would be sent to die. This is war there was no compassion in the north, and to some extent, everyone understood that. A week after the deaths of all those powerful mages, many bid farewell to them with a ceremony in which everyone in the city participated. Most of what was talked about here was a powerful mage who manipulated thunder and lightning and was surrounded by electricity. Soon everyone called him the Thunder Master, a very simple nickname that reflected Damien's magic. Thunder represents strength and power lightning implies speed and brilliance, while electricity suggests dynamic and sparkling energy. Together, they could describe someone with a striking presence, which can be exciting but also intimidating or volatile. In a quite comfortable room, Damien sat on a bed while looking at his hands full of horrible scars that couldn't be healed due to the great magical damage they had suffered. Kraft looked at Damien, who had remained silent for at least an hour, and said, you managed to kill three generals of the Demon King even that demon you spoke of being special is also estimated to be dead. Estimated? Damien looked up at the priest, wanting to demand more about what was really known. Well, we withdrew from the battlefield, so we couldn't accurately see the notable deaths that were done with the demons. Kraft could see the resentment in Damien's eyes he knew he blamed himself for what happened, and that was normal given the situation. Knowing this, he walked to the corner of the room where there was a black staff that was curved at the top and straight at the bottom, giving it a quite simple yet unique appearance given its size. Damien recognized that staff because it was Luke's he didn't know why Kraft had taken it, but for some reason, he took it when he approached him. The demons are looking for you for some reason if that demon sees the future, as you said, it would be better for you to take a safer path before you return to the battlefield. Kraft placed the staff on Damien's bed. Upon hearing these words and looking at Kraft and knowing he was lying, he asked, how strong do I need to become? A few minutes later, without waiting for an answer, Damien muttered, exactly. I have been training for many years just to not die so easily. I was just the son of murdered mages, a servant who took the step to apprentice mage, and someone who has been seeking strength because he felt fearful knowing that anything could kill him. You shouldn't blame yourself. Kraft smiled slightly at Damien, who had taken Luke's staff. Many mages have died to save me do they really believe it would be worth it, or did they die for something futile? I wonder if they regretted it. Damien squeezed the staff in his hands, feeling ashamed for not being able to do more. But who is he trying to fool? He knows he did a good job, he knows he tried his best, and he is aware that he is a better mage than many of those who died. You know what's worse. I feel happy to have survived only then can I avenge the deaths of all those mages. I will exterminate the demons and kill them all one by one until I reach the demon king. Kraft listened to Damien in silence this was his job after all, so in the end, he said, you should take a break you are still too young to understand war. I too have lost loved ones at the hands of demons I understand your goals, but it's not yet time. You don't know my age. Damien looked at his hands, still seeing that dried blood. It doesn't matter if you're a hundred or two hundred years old you would still be young to me. Take a break, search for what you want to find, and only then, when you think you're ready, return to combat. 
People like Damien wouldn't leave the battlefield after experiencing Warcraft knew this, so he didn't waste energy persuading Damien otherwise. Damien then lay back on his bed, closed his eyes, and fell asleep. Chapter 48 With Kraft's help, Damien had recovered more than he had expected now he could walk, and all his mana had fully recovered. So, where are you going? Damien stood before the graves of all the deceased mages, his gaze fixed on them for the past thirty minutes. When he heard the question, he pondered for a moment and said, I'm going in search of something that is mine. Once I obtain it, I can ensure that I become stronger to continue eliminating demons. Kraft, who was standing next to Damien, couldn't comment on this but still said, that's the best. Demons will keep coming to kill you, so the best idea is for you to disappear for a few years. The reason those powerful demons appeared was because they were looking for Damien. This gave him a signal to immediately go in search of that so-called immortality that others had claimed he had achieved. There was no reason for a demon to attack him a thousand years before their encounter that only made him understand that he did indeed achieve that illusory eternal life. Well, the battlefronts have been quiet recently, so I'll retire. If I succeed in my search, we'll see each other in a few hundred years. Damien waved his hand to the priest, Kraft, who smiled. When Kraft was left alone in front of the graves of all the deceased, he joined his hands and murmured, May the goddess reward all their sacrifices, and may it not all be in vain in the end. In an unknown place to the north, a caravan passed through a cobbled path in the twilight. It was said that demons didn't come to this place due to its little importance in the ongoing strategic war in the main cities of the north, which were fighting hard against those who tried to cross their borders. Ten months had passed since Damien had killed some of the most important envoys of the demon king this alone had earned him the title of Storm Mage. But that didn't matter now, not since he began his journey in search of the Fountain of Youth. The journey that should have been quick was delayed because he had passed through villages, not retreating until he had eliminated the monsters in the area and demons that roamed nearby. At this moment, Damien was at the back of the caravan, watching the colorful rays of the illuminated evening grass, the flowers, and the forests with orange trees. This place was so peaceful that it brought him many distant emotions. The caravan he was traveling in entered the village, which was completely defenseless. Damien looked at this with furrowed brows, knowing that any moderately strong demon could massacre these people easily. Come and have a look the fresh venison they just sacrificed today is for sale. Buttermilk, sweet buttermilk. It's a clearance sale, a clearance sale. Everything costs only two bronze coins the food is of the best quality, so you can rest assured you're buying the best and ripest in the market. This wasn't a large village Damien could estimate there were at least a thousand inhabitants, but the data couldn't be precise due to the constant movement within the caravan. According to the map in his hands, he was located northeast, in a huge forest called the Mythical Forest of Fairies. The data stated that there were millions of trees in this forest where fairies lived, and this village was the closest to those locations. In the distance, mountains with light snow caps could be seen the forests were damp, and during this springtime, it wasn't too cold. The environment was unpredictable, inhabited by a large number of fierce beasts or mysterious and terrifying spirits. For the villagers of this place, the only way to survive was to not venture out of the village at night the rules were simple, but as long as they were followed, there would be no victims. What Damien had noticed was that generally, the economy of the villages in the northeast remained very similar to the big cities, so the money he carried with him was enough for many trips without any problems. We have arrived, travelers. I hope my advice to not venture beyond the established zones within the forest serves you well for what you are about to do. The man driving the caravan looked at the mage, who had traveled in silence, and advised him. Damien waved his hand in acknowledgement, then got off the caravan, holding his black magical staff that now kept his sword suspended in the air at the center but connected at the same time. Let's first grab a bite to eat. Damien entered a bar, where he estimated they sold food. But as soon as he entered this wine store, a young man showed his temper. Wine, where's the wine? Bring it quickly. Are you afraid I won't be able to pay for it, sir? The man vigorously pounded the mushroom-shaped table, acting like a drunkard and shouting loudly. Adventurer, sir, your wine. Your wine is here. 
the waiter quickly brought the wine. The adventurer nicknamed Hound immediately grabbed the wine glass, raised it, and drank it all in one gulp. Good wine. Very good wine. The hound laughed with an impotent and hoarse voice. With a thump, he placed the wine glass on the table and shouted again, Give me another glass, quickly, you damn incompetence. The waiters in this establishment didn't dare offend him, as he was an adventurer hired to defeat a demon that had been attacking them for some time. They naturally had to do as he said. Fortunately, the bar was already crowded with people, not just the people seated around the mushroom-shaped tables and stools. Even the surrounding corridors were packed. The hound was drunk and shouting, but he didn't stand out in this crowded tavern. The ill-tempered youth wore golden armor with a luxurious metal belt around his waist, with a square piece of bright crystal embedded in the middle of the belt. Many began to leave when they saw that things were becoming more unbearable, but everyone fell silent when they saw a hooded figure enter the tavern holding a mage's staff. Who is that? Were there mages in this village? No, he comes from elsewhere. Whispers began to spread around, and countless gazes turned towards Damien, who had been scanning the surroundings for a place to sit. Bring me some food and something to drink preferably, I don't want to drink alcohol. Damien walked towards the hound's table, which was empty, extended his hand to pull out the chair, and sat down without any problems. Everyone held their breath this could immediately cause discontent between the hound and the mage, so everyone wanted to know what would happen next. Damien, of course, hadn't paid attention to this. He was now sixteen years old, on his way to seventeen, and had entered an optimal age for marriage. But that wasn't in his plans not until he defeated all the demons in this world. As the old grandparents of a friend once told him, don't have children in a world where death, famine, and suffering are commonplace. In this world, the crude death rate is incredibly high, leaving many thousands of children orphaned and families abandoned, needing to fend for themselves in this complicated world. I'm close. Damien looked at the map pointing him towards the route to the magical forest, but just as he was about to check it again, a hand reached for the map and snatched it away. Who the hell are you? The hound looked at Damien with a serious expression on his face. Everyone was stunned by the hound's abrupt movement some even left the tavern out of fear that they might be harmed by a spell that this mage might cast abruptly. Damien raised his gaze. There were many foolish people around the world, and this was one of them. I'm nobody who are you? Chapter 49 Are you trying to play with me? The sage looked at Damien with penetrating eyes, but then lowered his gaze to the map and mocked when he saw the area that was marked on the map. Do you want to go to the fairy forest? Ha ha ha, that's the greatest stupidity I've heard in a long time. Any problem? Damien controlled his emotions because these acts of a drunkard were not something to alter. The savage smiled and said, There is no fairy forest many idiots in this village and distant adventurers who know history have come with the sole aim of finding the source of sick youth in this demon forest. Everyone wanted to approve these words, but seeing that Damien was a magician who gave a feeling of suffocating oppression, no one said anything. But these words did not affect Damien he knew perfectly well how much they had not sought in the right place. For now, what I would do was rest and start his search. All of this was necessary and not a simple wish, so what I had assumed during all this time of travel was that I would not kill the devil king in the next thirty years and stick to the idea of protecting the people from the demons that torment them. When Damien had that resolution in his mind, he found that it would be necessary to increase his life and thus exterminate a demon by demon until none of them remained alive. During this journey, that idea within him had grown to such an extent that there was no return. What does an adventurer do here when he should be doing his job of eliminating monsters? If you're done, then I congratulate you, but wasting time this way is an insult to all the other adventurers who work day and night helping in the far north. Damien looked at the dish of food that had been served to him very carefully and began to eat. The savage felt offended and could not allow anyone to address him that way, so he put his sword on the table and asked instead, if you want to play that way, what are you doing here? I see nothing more than a waste of time looking for something that doesn't exist. What makes you think it doesn't exist? Damien took a hard piece of bread and ground it with the onion soup that had been served to him. What makes you think it exists? Look, beginner, I don't know what the hell you're doing here, 
but if you are looking for something fantastic, I'm afraid that the one who's wasting time is you. The Sabo had taken missions to get away from the far north many of his companions had died, so his idea was never to step on that battlefield. I've been at the front, fighting demons and killing many more than all of you will see alive. For curious ears, Damien said these words to be heard. What was his intention? Obviously everyone felt safe that was what they used to do in villages abandoned by soldiers and living in constant agony. Ha ha ha, I myself will kill the devil king if that is true. The savior obviously didn't believe these words. But when Damien lifted up his left hand, the wise man remained silent when he saw that bone-shaped hand falling from his back. Did you get cursed? Inherited from battle, don't you know the consequences of confronting demons? Damien made fun of this adventurer. Everyone felt struck, but when they looked at the medals on Damien's arm, they were surprised to recognize the army's medals. A condecorate of war, if anyone here has validity in his words, is he? At that moment, an old man entered the tavern, held a rod, and walked toward where the Subweso was. Head of the people. If you're not going to drink, then get out there's a lot of work to do, like losing it here drinking. The old man named Theo looked at everyone with authority, and at that moment they went away to work. Now with the war against the demons, each people must send their ministers abundantly to the front so that the soldiers can fight with total peace and replenish their forces with high-quality food. Theo looked at the Subweso coldly and asked, have you solved the problem? If so, then take your reward and let go if you plan to be causing trouble. Cursed old man. Damien looked at the savior coming out of the tavern and asked, are they afraid of you? I see you have made great contributions in the far north what are you doing here? Theo was a former high-ranking soldier who had abandoned his service for injuries that would prevent him from returning to the battlefield. He sought the source of youth. Do you think you'll find her? Damien smiled and said, it's my destiny. Is that a curse? Who wants to be immortal in a world like this? Those words left Damien silent, but right now, there was nothing else he could do but look for that fountain of youth to avoid worrying about getting older. About the history. You will die for the fairy who guards the forest if you try to harm it. Chapter 50 Is the story really real? Damien thought he was chasing a fairy tale that shouldn't be as real as described in words. The reason many knew about the Fountain of Youth was from a simple fairy tale no one ever returned to tell of their experience in seeking that mythical sacred water. The world was vast, and tales, just like stories, are written by people who can easily change the actual events to suit their desires, so trusting them would be a serious mistake for anyone venturing into magical and deadly adventures. Huh, who really knows what awaits us out there? It's all based only on our thoughts and desires. A friend tried to find that fountain in the end, I found him agonizing when he was hunting, and the last thing he said to me was that he wasn't worthy. Theo didn't feel upset remembering this he was glad his friend went doing what he always wanted, and he knew that a man's faith is hard to kill. Damien had more or less understood the situation here. He stood up after eating and said, I will take charge of protecting this village during my stay here I will only kill monsters and demons. If you have any other requests, that doesn't fall under my list of jobs and interests. For how long? At least three years. That was the time needed to increase his strength at least that's what he had planned. Damien also needed time to process his losses and understand what sacrifice meant. Moreover, he didn't know how long it would take him to find the Fountain of Youth, but he wouldn't give up so easily on his quest. On the other hand, he also needed to learn a few spells that he hadn't mastered yet so that he could have the chance to create new attacks that would help him kill the Demon King. He had to be strong, both for those who came for his life and to seek the lives of other demons. The war, after all, hadn't ended yet, even after fighting for so long and killing so many demons. He didn't know what destiny had prepared for him, but at least he would make every second of his life worthwhile, and those who had given their lives for him would never be disappointed watching him from beyond. The elder Theo looked at Damien's back and murmured, another one embarking on that adventure, eternal life. Ha ha ha, there must be a reason why we're humans and long life is reserved for the elves. Just a little more. Five long years had passed in search during this time, 
Damien had been eliminating monsters around the village and ensuring that there were no demons nearby so that the village where he was staying remained peaceful. But now he was not in the village he hadn't returned to a place with civilization for years because he had finally found the path to the fountain of youth. In the depths of a forest that many considered magical, Damien was walking with a big smile on his face. Now he was twenty-one years old and in his golden age, where he was both powerful and quite an attractive man. But if there was something he had been doing non-stop during all these years, it was maintaining his focus on magic. He had learned numerous powerful attack spells and had even further mastered his magical power, which was becoming quite large compared to others. In that direction, Damien looked at a huge tree that could be seen a few kilometers away and hurried towards it. So many years of searching, learning, and fighting had given him a somewhat passionate character. After all, he never felt fear of death again after becoming quite powerful. There were few things that threatened his life, and he never had the need to hide or beg for something. It is said that if you use magic in this place, you will gain a lot of bad luck within the forest, so I suppose I must abide by those rules. Damien looked at some magical mushrooms that were seemingly watching him and thought that those rules for traveling through this magical forest were true. This forest has an isolated zone from the outside world, so I suppose that's why these magical creatures can live without being noticed by hunters. When he said this, Damien had disappeared from his position, and with a huge leap, he appeared on a thin layer of magical flowers. Unlike other trees, Damien could see that this one in particular was thicker, surpassing by far all the largest trees he had ever seen before. Also, the leaves of this tree were all pink, which gave it a great resemblance to the Sakura trees he knew. A single lick will give me ten more years of life. A sip will give me one hundred more years of life. And if I drink it all, I will live forever. Whispering this with some happiness, Damien began to climb the tree without using magic. Now his height was apparently over six feet, his body had been trained in a very tortuous way to improve his stats in close combat, and Damien couldn't find weaknesses even if he didn't have magic. The situation on the battlefield was too critical, but Damien had focused on eliminating demons near villages and exterminating them completely until reaching their youngest members. Human cities would not fall, at least for now, and this seemed to continue given the great magical barriers that had kept demons at bay all this time. That's why the war hasn't had a winner yet. Damien, for now, would leave that in the background what mattered right now was what he had in front of him, and he couldn't deny that he was filled with happiness at finding something he had been searching for a long time. Taking one last breath, Damien climbed the pink tree completely, and when he looked at what was at the top, he noticed a lake where, in the center, there was a silver cup that released a magical liquid. I found it, so this is the fountain of youth. The famous hidden treasure of the sacred woman, so if I drink that water waiting in that silver cup, will I get the famous eternal life of that old fairy tale? Damien put aside his magic staff, touched his chin curiously, and looked very concentrated at that cup. In his eternal life, Damien had never dreamed of anything like that. What sense does it make for a human to achieve immortality? For someone who comes from a world without magic, the possibility of something like that was reserved for the most impossible dreams to fulfill. But now he was here, in front of a cup that promised to give him immortality if he drank from it. Ha, huh, I will be as old as the elves anyway do I have to face some kind of guardian. Legend says that there is a magical fairy guarding that cup where is it now? Damien looked ahead suspiciously, but at the moment he fixed his gaze to his side, he found a girl looking at him with eyes full of curiosity. Where did this girl come from? He couldn't feel her she didn't have any trace of magic in her body, which made Damien a little scared, but when he saw that the girl didn't attack him, he secretly breathed a sigh of relief. Don't tell me you're also here to drink the water of eternal youth. Hmm, I understand that magic can't be used, so girl, let me tell you that you've cheated, and that will be punished by the trials of this place. Also, why do you seek immortality young? At your age, all I wanted was to reach the moon with my grandfather's wooden stairs there's no doubt that the kids here have very wild thoughts. Damien didn't want to fight with a girl that was absurd given her age, so he was about to take out some chocolates along with some gold coins when suddenly he thought of something. Damien lowered his gaze again. This girl of small appearance had straight, shiny blonde hair that reached above shoulder level. Besides, her golden eyes, along with her white dress, 
gave her a certain dignity. That manna. Damien muttered as he realized something. Chapter 51 I protect the source. Are you the fairy from the story? It can't be. You should find an adult and stay away because I'm about to begin the trial to obtain the fountain of eternal youth, Damien said, his gaze devoid of hostility as he didn't want to harm a girl. But this fairy was no ordinary girl her age surpassed a thousand years, giving her vast knowledge that Damien had yet to grasp, and perhaps no one else would either. This place will remain free of bandits like you that is my mission, inherited from the other guardians. As the fairy spoke these words, she flew in a controlled manner, as if the wind and she were one. Shortly after, she extended her hand delicately, which didn't raise any danger signals for Damien. However, at that moment, a powerful gust of wind sent him flying. How did she use magic without casting it in a magic circle? Damien hadn't seen anyone else do it besides himself. This belief had made him think he was the only one capable of such feats. But now he had witnessed a magical fairy expel him with a powerful gust of wind. I'll be back I always come back. Damien shouted as he fell down the precipice. The fairy in the white dress watched as the magician, unable to fly, fell. She sighed in relief. He he he, so she's the fairy. Damien, who had landed on some trees, smiled nervously. How long had it been since he talked to someone? At least two years, and it had affected him in some way, drastically changing his personality and making him unrecognizable from his past self. But that was all right he changed like wine does. Never mind, I suppose I must defeat that fairy to drink that water. Hmm, will simply drinking the water be enough? Damien smiled slightly as he contemplated his plans. He knew there was no need to harm the fairy guarding the fountain of youth she was just a guardian who didn't deserve to be hurt. Minutes passed, and the fairy named Elaine walked back to the fountain where the silver cup with the sacred water rested, as Damien had shown no signs of surviving. No problem anymore the blind bandit is gone. Elaine murmured these words in front of the fountain. But at that moment, she turned around when she felt a presence stepping on the tree surface again. Damien had jumped into a strange pose without looking up, he murmured, I told you, I always come back. Ah. Elaine looked blankly at Damien she didn't think much of this persistent magician who refused to use his magic and kept climbing back up the tree, even though he had proven it was futile. Damien, who had fallen again onto a huge mushroom, saw this as training. It was the first time he had encountered a fairy, so it was fair to learn from her and know everything she could do. Once more. Damien murmured as he brushed dirt off his clothes and ran across the tree trunk at an unmatched speed. Again and again. Damien was forcefully thrown out of the tree's crown. He discovered that there was no way to pass through those huge air currents without using magic. It surprised him that his physical strength was not enough, but each time he tried to pass, he felt as if all the forest's air concentrated on the fairy's attack. When Damien climbed up for the fourth time, he looked at the fairy in front of him and shouted with some anger, Hey girl, enough. I think the same will you never give up. Elaine asked, quite annoyed to see Damien had no intention of giving in. Well, I didn't want to use magic. Damien waved his hand, and in an instant, he appeared at the fountain, took the cup, and instinctively smiled, seeing how everything was easier using magic. It smells like roses. Incredible. He thought he had passed some sort of test, something that would only make him worthy of drinking this water and becoming immortal. However, as soon as he looked at Elaine's face, Damien paused for a few seconds. Stop now. Tree roots began to sprout from the surroundings, and at an impressive speed, they entwined around Damien, immobilizing him. Hey, it's okay I failed the test. Damien didn't want to use high-powered magic because it would damage not only the tree but also the test area, possibly causing the fountain of youth to be lost. Elaine walked toward Damien and murmured, I don't expect humans to understand me, let alone you. Actually, I don't understand. What is a magician like you seeking immortality for when all you want is to fight demons? I can feel the resentment in your soul I wonder why you're running away. Damien's gaze changed he smiled a bit and asked sarcastically, who doesn't want to be immortal? Damien was surprised that this fairy perceived his thoughts. 
he had been avoiding real battlefields because he feared more would die protecting him. He wanted to become strong enough so that nobody would need to protect him and die for it. Even now, he couldn't forget the people who died that night protecting him. And the fairy's next words threw him off balance again. You don't know, but if this fountain of youth is drunk, all the trees in this forest will wither and die. Elaine placed her hands on her waist and said, Give up and leave once and for all humans with intentions to harm this forest are not welcome. All right, I agree. Damien loved this forest he had spent not only five years here but had also tasted every fruit it offered. It would be selfish of him to let everything die just to obtain immortality, something he had believed unlikely from the start. Even if he did, guilt would torment him for the rest of eternity, something Damien didn't want to witness. Upon seeing Damien's silence, Elaine thought, this foolish magician doesn't know I can read human minds. Using this ability, Elaine heard everything Damien was thinking, what a waste of time if I had known the trees would die, I would never have come here in the first place. The fruits are so good what bad luck. I had always dreamed of being immortal I never thought that when this opportunity was so close, it would vanish like this. Damien showed a downcast expression, but after a few moments, he recovered and thought of an optimal way to escape without harming the surroundings. But at that moment, Elaine removed the roots that had imprisoned Damien. Who are you? Explain I'm intrigued. Elaine flew around Damien, full of curiosity about this magician. Isn't it obvious? I'm a magician who sought immortality. Damien sat on the ground as he rubbed his stiff shoulders that had been tightly squeezed by the tree roots around him. The mere possibility of mentioning why he wanted to live longer was unnecessary in the end, he wasn't begging for immortality as if he somehow deserved it. Dwarves lived long, elves even longer, and humans, for some special reason, had shorter lives. In situations like this, Damien had long given up on something like immortality. Elaine was greatly surprised to hear Damien's thoughts. In all her years of life, she. I had never heard of someone giving up on immortality without even fighting for it. Moreover, from what she could sense, Damien had very powerful magic. How was it possible for a human like him to exist? I'm not a child my name is Elaine. You can call me Damien. Damien went to pick up his magical staff that he had left aside, then he looked around curiously to see what he could find. He had to at least give some value to the time lost in this place. His gaze could only observe nature, so after a few seconds, he asked, Do you have any magical books? You know, we can make a trade I have good things we can exchange. I suppose you don't know about carrot cake, french fries, or hamburgers. I think you'll love chocolate you can't imagine how many cocoa trees I came across on the way. Elaine couldn't believe that Damien had suddenly changed his mind about obtaining the Fountain of Youth. He wasn't lying, given his lie-detecting abilities. Without a doubt, she was intrigued to know more about this human. Chapter 52 The five years spent searching for the Fountain of Youth had somewhat distanced Damien from the battlefield, along with the hopes of many warriors who died protecting him. They all saw him as the mage who would defeat the demon king and bring peace to the human world. Everyone wanted that for their families and knew that by dying for Damien, they could achieve it someday. Although many spoke of the Thunder Mage, Damien wanted to return more directly. Damien wanted to return to the front lines of battle the news of the fights against the demons was becoming increasingly worrying. Not only was human territory being lost, but the losses were also becoming quite noticeable. Everyone said that a human couldn't be compared to a demon they might have been right in those aspects, but Damien knew that as long as they created tactics together, they could eliminate their enemies. Do fairies not fight against demons? Damien looked at Elaine, somewhat curious about it. He had never heard of fairies before, let alone that they lived for thousands of years easily, like the elves. Elaine, sitting beside Damien, didn't hesitate and said, Our race was mostly exterminated by the ancient demons long before your current race has records. The ancient era was one where wars for world dominance were too frequent until one erupted that left no winning side. The ancient era was the great era of gods and demons. Very little is known about it it's only known that the goddess everyone has heard of emerged in that era along with a few other powerful beings who died long ago. 
What's surprising about all this is that Elaine projected a magical image of what her people used to be, their home, and how her parents were betrayed when the fairy king of that time joined the demons. For her, her only purpose was to guard the fountain of youth and ensure it wasn't obtained by a demon only then would everything else be worthwhile. Aren't you tired? Damien asked Elaine, who had been here alone for over 500 years. Elaine smiled slightly and said, that's the difference between humans who feel every second of their lives and fairies who don't dwell on pastime. Each race has its own way of feeling things, giving them emotions and meaning. For me, spending 500 years here is natural and insignificant why pay attention to it when I'll be here for eternity? So, you don't have the right to live as you please. You've protected this place for so many years, and no one has come here for that fountain. As far as I can see, no one else will seek something that may have already been forgotten. Damien had never had a sister, but now it seemed like he looked at this little fairy as someone very close to him. Tell me, Damien, why do you care so much? Elaine wanted an answer to Damien's interest in her life here. Damien fell silent for a few seconds, then, coming up with a less embarrassing answer, he said, because life is beautiful when you live it, and besides, you remind me of a sister I never had. I would very much like you to accompany me in defeating the demon king. A brother. Damien felt a bit uncomfortable and said, I can try to create a forest with thousands of powerful guardians, so when you want to leave, you won't have to worry about the security of the Fountain of Youth. You're very strong, and I believe we would be unstoppable together. What do you think? You've only known me for a few days. Do you feel sorry for me? Elaine asked a question without feeling hurt at all. Absolutely not. I just saw some of my reflection in you. If you ever want a brother or just someone to talk to, I'll be here for a while, learning more about the forest and creating more puppets that can be your companions. Damien knew that heroes were forgotten in history, and if he truly died in an attempt to kill the demon king, then at least he wanted Elaine to remember him. The lovely and lonely fairy, Damien, really needed to stop getting attached to people so easily. That was his only flaw the same thing happened when he met Ada, so he supposed it was a unique trait of his. Days had passed, and soon, months later, the puppets of all kinds that Damien had created now roamed the top of the pink tree. There were small birds and miniature fairies dressed in their combat armor, the closest thing to something conscious that Damien had been able to create. Additionally, there were statues similar to his divine general with enough magic to fight once defending this place. These little fairies won't be able to defend me against an ancient demon if they attack. Elaine approached Damien and smiled at those little fairies, who had serious expressions, moving back and forth. Damien smiled and said, Don't underestimate these little fairies they are much stronger than you imagine. Besides, their biggest factor is emotional support. Are you going to go fight? Elaine changed the subject of the conversation. Yes, many expect me to. I see. By the way, do you know a mage named Siri? Elaine thought for a moment and said, I haven't heard of a mage by that name. Damien had heard that some years ago, Siri, a great mage, surpassed human magic and established a magical organization. He had been called to be evaluated by her, but he had put it off for many years because he wanted to find the fountain of youth. Comparable to the goddess herself. Damien looked at Elaine and asked, what do you think is the right way to rule over a common race? Religion has a special effect on all living beings, but I fear that none of the existing religions are there to give value to life and evolution. Elaine, without hesitation, said, Religion is something supernatural that has been part of the creation and destruction of species. If you plan on creating a religion, you must take into account every detail. The religion created by Damien could be the key to making everything worthwhile that could be the path, especially focused on establishing a military force and the worship of a being called the Magical Emperor that he wanted to bring to life. Damien thought about this for multiple purposes, given that he couldn't obtain immortality now. One of the main purposes was to control and manipulate the masses, using faith as a tool to maintain political and social power. It also served to explore deep philosophical themes, such as the meaning of magic, the path to death, and the purpose of living beings. If he weren't immortal, he should at least give meaning to all his efforts. When Elaine read Damien's mind, she fell silent. 
what he was thinking was extremely serious and could have many consequences, especially for human development. But she wouldn't interfere whatever Damien decided with his life would be for growth and learning for humans. A few days later, Damien's relationship with Elaine became closer, to the point of considering themselves friends. I would like to try that beer from the nearby village. Maybe if I ask Damien. Elaine had read many books that the forest found for her on many occasions some were personal narratives, and other times novels that told the story of warriors. Alcohol was always present in such stories. Do you really want to try that bitter thing? If you get drunk, I might steal the fountain of youth and run away. Damien, who had appreciated finding some fruits to eat, heard what this fairy had said. Elaine, embarrassed, looked at Damien with a slight blush on her face and said, I know you wouldn't do something like that. How are you so sure? Damien smiled teasingly, trying to provoke this fairy with more years than his ancestors. Elaine looked at Damien and heard his thoughts, I remember once getting so drunk that I was left in just my underwear. Damn it, who steals socks and shoes? Forget it it was just a thought out loud. Elaine turned around, feeling a bit guilty for hearing Damien's personal thoughts. But Damien didn't know he had given himself away, and seeing that it was getting dark, he muttered, Wait here I'll be back before midnight with good human food and drinks to kill us. Wait. Elaine reached out to stop Damien, but by then, he had already left. This time, Damien used his magic to fly there weren't many things that mattered to him now that he couldn't obtain immortality. Well, one last drink, and this would be a farewell. The time had come to say goodbye to this place he had been preparing for this for months, and today he believed the moment had come. Chapter 53 After arriving at the nearest village to the magical forest, Damien purchased many things along the way, gifted gold coins to people who seemed to be struggling due to the war, and then walked towards the tavern. This place looked very similar to many years ago. As he walked through the streets of this village, Damien wore a hood, no longer giving others the chance to see his face to prevent rumors of a mage who had gained immortality from spreading, a tale from an old book. But now that he wasn't someone who could live for many years, the opportunity for immortality was gone, yet he had grown accustomed to wearing the hood. Thinking about all the comments people made when they saw him, Damien felt a bit embarrassed hearing them call him the old thunder mage who never married. Now that such criticisms had become uncommon for Damien, he simply quickened his pace, wanting to leave this place as soon as possible. Hey friend, do you have any of those cherry beers? Damien asked a man outside the tavern directly. I think the one who made it has passed away, but you can go in and ask. Died? Damien was surprised, remembering that the man who had the recipe for cherry beer was very young, and the machine that made them seemed to be operated by several people. But once again, one cannot change things in the future even younger people can die from anything. When Damien asked about this beer, they didn't have it, but there were some similar ones that he decided to buy, along with many wines of different qualities. He even bought wines from many years ago without any problem, storing everything in his shadow. The required magic is increasing. Damien looked at the shadow beneath his feet, and after buying all the wine, he went to a bakery. All the money he had obtained was stolen all the demons he had killed collected it, and many of the dragons he had hunted down had immense wealth. That's why Damien didn't have to worry about his purchases at least they would serve to boost the economy of this village. You're the protector of the town, right? As Damien was about to leave the dried meat store, he heard an aged voice to his left and curiously looked down, only to meet a middle-aged woman. Are you? I'm not a protector I'm just doing some things around this town, so you can always count on my help. You're very lucky that demons aren't focused on this place, but you know that without a magical shield around the town to protect you, you'll always be vulnerable to attacks. Damien didn't know why he said all this. Have you ever thought about the meaning of everything happening around you? I'm in a hurry I don't have time to meet any of your nieces. Damien didn't want to continue this conversation, but for some reason, he felt a great threat from this old woman. Unconsciously, Damien released a large part of his magical power, causing the business he was in to crack. Tell me, who sent you? I can see some things of the future, and I've come only to warn you. You've done what you wanted you're young and strong enough to defeat the demon king. 
The path you've created is illuminated I hope your efforts are worth it. The old woman said this as she walked away. Tell me who you are. The crystals of the houses shattered, and Damien was ready to attack this old woman, who seemed to be able to see the future. The old woman turned around and said, Your time is running out, Thunder Mage. Will you wake up or remain asleep forever? Those dormant demons were awakened by you when you used magic in the magical forest, and they are on their way to eliminate the last ancient fairy. Damien wasn't one for words he was about to attack this old woman when suddenly he realized that many people around him had fainted. What happened? Dark Mage's Diary, Awakening of Lost Memories of the Dark Mage You have been touched by a herald of antiquity now you can read a bit about the life the Dark Mage used to have before dying and inherit it by mere coincidences of fate. Damien was petrified he looked at the illustrations in the book, reached in, and extended his hand to touch each of those words written below. I can't believe it. At some point, hours had passed without Damien realizing it. When he returned to reality, it was nighttime, and in the distance, there were dense waves of demonic energy. Everyone, go to the shelter and don't come out until the day after tomorrow. Damien rose into the sky and, waving his hand, a dense barrier of electric lightning surrounded the city where he was, and without saying anything more, he disappeared. That book that had accompanied him was actually a diary, and by the words of that herald of antiquity, he had received that inheritance. How and why did he receive that inheritance? The Dark Mage's Diary Roar Damien looked deep into the forest and saw an immense demon, as big as a hill, and his heart clenched with worry, knowing that Elaine was in that direction. The demons are coming for the fountain. Elaine held the fountain of youth in her left hand while creating an illusory barrier with her right hand to protect herself. The guardians Damien had created were destroyed, and the small fairies were around Elaine, protecting her. If I stay here, it's impossible for them to discover me. Elaine thought as she saw that demon with very large horns observing everything from the air. She saw a demon in particular, and she recognized him because he was described in the diaries of her ancestors. Demon Calmadios Calmadios had six arms and was approximately the same size as a giant. In his upper arms, correctly positioned, he wore a bracelet on each. He wore a mask with horns over his face and a dark loincloth held by a metal buckle. Kill them all! Calmadios shouted aggressively. Elaine, who was observing him, made eye contact with him for a moment, and this was enough to be noticed by that demon. I thought the fairies had been killed twenty thousand years ago. Calmadio smiled and, without hesitation, attacked Elaine with all his might. As if the world felt a powerful ancient magic blossoming in this part of the world, the clouds turned red, and a fierce body blew from the highest levels of the world. Elaine wasn't a fighter at most, she could defend herself from this attack but wouldn't last long. What a pity I wanted to try that beer. A powerful shield of roses formed around Elaine she was sure to stop that first attack, but somehow, her defensive magic had been easily destroyed. How is this possible? Ha ha ha, cursed fairy, we have destroyed most of this magical forest, so your power is obviously weaker. But at that moment, a few seconds before Elaine was hit by that black ray of light, a lightning bolt descended from the sky, spreading darkness throughout this part of the forest, accompanied by a roar in its descent. A third of the forest disappeared when those two powers collided, a gigantic magic dark as chaos clashed with one that seemed to have control over the same destruction. Who dares? Calmadios looked at a figure surrounded by reflections holding a sword, while several different weapons surrounded him. Damien, who had received the brunt of the impact, stood upright on the ground, looking at the gigantic demon. I should have known my mana brought this demon here. Damien. Elaine looked at Damien's left arm, which had disappeared, leaving a more than severe wound on his body. She immediately used the best healing magic she could unleash at the moment. But Damien didn't pay attention to this he looked at Elaine and said, Escape from this place with that cup fly without looking back. I'll deal with the demon and find you. At that moment, three huge figures emerged from a dark spot on his back and all moved towards Elaine with the intention of keeping her safe. Chapter 54 Damien, who had been in the village moments before, appeared in this place in a matter of seconds. For that, 
he not only had to expend half of his mana but also display his terrifying speed to the eyes of whatever was in this place. Suddenly, an unusual sound transmitted from the sky interrupted Damien's battle thoughts. Countless pairs of eyes turned towards the source of that unusual sound. Then, all the humans who looked up at the sky stiffened. Damien, flying and surrounded by lightning, looked at this enormous demon in front of him. A sharp expression began to build up in his dark eyes. Afterward, he completely removed the bandage that concealed his bright eyes, now displaying a vivid blue that extended to his forehead. Calmadios possessed six arms and was approximately the same size as a giant. In his upper arms, correctly positioned, he wore a bracelet on each. He wore a mask with horns over his face and a dark loincloth held by a metal buckle. More demons had appeared in the area, all descending from a rift in the sky and starting to flood what remained of the magical forest. The rifts in the sky slowly expanded, creating a barrier of darkness that covered all the stars in the sky. The faint sounds of the rifts made every creature in the magical forest flee in a hurry. Damien showed no fear on his face, waving his hands, and numerous summonings of all types appeared on the ground. His eyes were icy as he looked at all the demons appearing in this place. Shortly after, he took a deep breath of cold air. He raised his hand, and the lightning in the sky accumulated, completely halting the advance of darkness. If you dare to stay in this place, I won't rest until I've ended your miserable existence, demon. Damien's eyes counted all the demons around him as the lightning surrounding his body became more subtle. A commotion erupted over the land, opening hills and stirring the seas. The magic Damien had unleashed was enough to overwhelm a battlefield. You are not my enemy how dare you stand in my way, vile, miserable human. Calmadios shouted as his demonic aura swept away everything that remained of the magical forest. Hold him. Calmadios' command made all the demons around rush toward Damien, who in turn, with cold eyes, waved his hand for all his puppets to enter battle against these demons. I am one of the ten ancient demons of Calamity, and I am here to kill the last fairy alive. After that enormous figure spoke those words, Damien's expression immediately cooled before his whole body tensed up. Based on what he knew about the ten ancient demons of Calamity, that strange and gigantic demon was one of the strongest that had ever existed among the giants, one of the most terrifying known as exterminators. Just the way this demon appeared was a sign of danger, and now all that power emanating from his body was more concerning. This was the first face-to-face -face encounter with a truly terrifying demon. It could be said that the demons he had faced were powerful, but the one in front of him had no comparison to anything Damien had faced. I don't know where you come from, but I will eliminate you. Here and now, I will crush you. Are you so sure? The weapons in each of Calmadio's arms stirred, creating waves of air that raised gigantic dust curtains. After five black silhouettes appeared in the sky next to Calmadio's, a black light was instantly shot from one of them. Damien, run! When Elaine saw those demons in the air, she knew what was about to happen. They had done the same to her ancestors. So, she immediately wanted to take Damien and escape through teleportation. However, just as she was about to try to escape with Damien, a light violently distorted their surroundings. Anti-teleportation magic. Long roars emanated from the five black figures that had slowly appeared before the space became extremely turbulent. Then, a curtain of darkness enveloped them all, making them disappear from the place. Indeed, the thunder and the forest in flames were a clear sign that something bad had happened here for the other people. In the blink of an eye, that dark barrier made it so Elaine couldn't use her teleportation magic. Hee hee, now we can have some fun properly. I think you both should be very satisfied to die together and have this magical forest be your graveyard. The demon Calmadios let out a fake laugh as he looked at the duo of Elaine and Damien. After all, many unwanted visitors could come to disturb their battle, and he didn't really want to kill truly insignificant humans. Damien looked emotionless at the demons maintaining this demonic barrier. The demon Calmadios was huge his strength was such that it equaled the weight of a mountain, which was truly unimaginable power. Who would face a demon like this? Even Damien felt pressured. When the fight begins, I'll do everything I can to hold back the remaining demons. 
look for the opportunity to leave and find a way to hide. Damien turned his head toward Elaine and whispered to her. Elaine looked at him, shook her head, and said, don't play into his hands. The situation we're in is something even you can't solve alone. If I leave and you fight, you'll have slim chances of surviving. When he saw Elaine suddenly become very obstinate, Damien couldn't help but feel frustrated. However, he knew there wasn't much time, and the chances of escaping alive were diminishing with time. Besides, this isn't just his fight. It seems there will be great magical friction when we start fighting. To make sure no one comes, I'll have to make extra preparations. Calmadios laughed and looked at the duo in front of him. Then, suddenly, he raised his arms. After he raised his arms, an intense amount of demonic mana flowed from within the bodies of the five figures, maintaining the barrier. Then, it transformed into a huge curtain of demonic aura that enveloped the entire forest. By doing so, this prevented magical fluctuations from leaking out. Indeed, Calmadios was determined to kill Damien today. When Calmadios saw the dome of light from the demonic aura forming, he finally chuckled before nodding gently. Then he lowered his head and looked at Damien before saying, Apart from the human emperor ancestor of the UK, you are the first I have met who can control thunder and lightning in that way. Therefore, even though you haven't advanced to the final stage of magic yet, your position on my hit list has just been placed at the top. However, after today, maybe your name will be crossed off my list of effective deaths. After saying those words, the smile on Calmadio's face became even more insidious. After that, large amounts of a vicious demonic aura, which seemed to cover the sky, erupted from his body. Immediately, the whole forest began to wither. In fact, even the aura of nature began to scream in anguish at the power of darkness. With a big smile on his face, Calmadios struck the empty space with a finger. Immediately, a beam of light from the demonic aura, viscous like blood and almost liquid, shot out from his finger and crossed the empty space before flying towards Damien at lightning speed. When Damien saw Calmadios make his move, a strong killing intent violently surged in his eyes. Waving his sleeve, his magical aura surged before he swung his magical staff, releasing a fierce lightning bolt that collided with the approaching beam of demonic aura. Sparks flew in all directions as the surrounding space trembled. At that moment, the divine general appeared with his enormous dagger protruding from his hand and fiercely attacked Calmadios, who immediately ordered his minions to engage the divine general. This is incredible. Calmadios chuckled under his breath before slowly closing his eyes. Immediately, the sea of demonic aura behind him began to violently churn, before a terrifying pressure began to spread. Clearly, Calmadios was about to execute a terrifying killing move. Chapter 55 A terrifying pressure of demonic aura spread everywhere, causing the entire place to completely darken. This was the first time Damien personally witnessed the terrifying power of a member of the upper echelon of the ancient demon race. Moreover, if one was weak-willed, this fluctuation was so powerful that it would even diminish the courage to oppose that demon. Damien took a deep breath with a solemn expression on his face. With his current combat strength, he could gain an advantage in a longer battle, knowing that he was very good at enduring. Unfortunately, the demon standing in front of him possessed a terrifying strength equivalent to that of those who had fought countless wars. It wasn't going to be easy for him to survive this crisis if he wanted to kill that demon. Damien slowly clenched both hands tightly. Then, his black eyes stared intently at Calmadios, who now resembled a demon god thanks to the monstrous sea of demonic mana behind him. Finally, a brutal gleam gradually emerged from the depths of his eyes. Damien had experienced too many life-or-death battles over the years. Therefore, he had already been perfected to the point where he would not feel fear, no matter who his opponent was. Therefore, although his current opponent was extremely terrifying, if the latter thought he could easily end Damien, it would be too naive. Thunderclouds quickly gathered in the sky. After which, thunderous roars struck the ground. Damien's eyes gradually became strange at that moment. One of his eyes looked as deep as a black hole, while the other was as bright as lightning. One was black, while the other was silver. Meanwhile, in the midst of this peculiar sight, an extremely violent mana wave spread out. 
I see. With a slight smile, the demon Calmadios looked at Damien, who was in that peculiar state. However, his expression showed no emotion. Instead, there was only endless coldness present within them. In the next moment, he pressed his finger into the air. The powerful demonic sea behind him surged. Then, along with the blood manipulated by the other demons, they turned into a nine-headed salamander, large and of unimaginable power. After that, that salamander roared towards the sky before a large amount of contaminated mana spewed out, extinguishing every trace of light around. That nine-headed salamander rushed forward as the demonic aura increased. Under its assault, space itself began to collapse, inch by inch. The thunderclouds in the sky violently churned. Shortly after, a terrifying cascade of lightning, resembling a silver river, descended rapidly with terrifying momentum. Then it ruthlessly struck the body of that nine-headed salamander. The lightning's glow violently impacted the body of that nine-headed salamander. Although the demonic aura faded wherever the lightning passed, an even more terrifying demonic aura would appear. Finally, that cascade of lightning, containing the force of destruction itself, was completely eroded. That nine-headed salamander, with a large mouth full of endless demonic aura, had already pierced through space at that moment. Finally, it flew towards the area where Damien and Elaine were, attempting to bite him. Immediately, space itself collapsed. Damien looked at that nine-headed salamander, trying to bite them, before a lightning glow burst into his eyes. Raising his palm high, a great lightning bolt that connected heaven and earth descended rapidly before transforming into a great spear. Damien grabbed that lightning spear before emitting a low roar from his throat. A moment later, his body shot forward like lightning and charged directly towards the ferocious mouth of that nine-headed salamander. The bright lightning glow suddenly burst from the great mouth of that nine-headed salamander before it attacked with an energy beam from its throat. However, that lightning glow was faster and was like tens of thousands of lightning swords as it devastated the inside of its huge body before the attack shot out from within. That nine-headed salamander exploded with a loud glow. After that, the demonic aura expanded in all directions. Then, a ray of lightning shot out before Damien, enveloped in lightning, landed on the ground like the god of lightning. After Damien destroyed that nine-headed salamander, he suddenly launched an attack against the distant Calmedios. At that moment, orange flames danced on his fingers. After that, the space around this attack began to heat up before four huge fire vortexes appeared, forming a prison that trapped Calmedios inside. Finally, the devouring power emerged before the resulting tier force attempted to reform with Calmedios' mana. Ha! <laughs> However, against Damien's powerful attack, Calamdio simply laughed heartily. Furthermore, his laughter was full of contempt. After that, a monstrous demonic aura surged from his body like blood waves. The force of those four fire vortexes had just formed but was forcibly destroyed by the assault waves of the demonic aura. Clearly, Calmadios was much stronger than Damien. Great Devil's Hand Calmadios violently pressed his hand against the empty space before the entire place darkened. Then, a gigantic demonic hand, as if from another dimension, slowly appeared, erasing the darkness in the process. Meanwhile, there was actually a large black eye on that demon's hand. When that eye blinks, a force of annihilation shoots out. A demonic aura containing a force of annihilation suddenly shot out from inside that demon's hand. Immediately, Damien was enveloped in the demonic light in the blink of an eye. When that demonic light flew, Damien clenched his fist. Then, a large pillar of fire appeared in front of him. After that, it violently spun, impacting that descending hand. Bang bang bang. The explosive noises seemed to want to split the starry sky in two. Shortly after, that black hole distorted under that attack attempt before finally exploding with a loud bang that even cracked the magic barrier. Damien was immediately sent flying from the heights due to that terrifying assault wave immediately, he felt a sweet sensation run down his throat before bloodlines appeared at the corner of his lips. Calmadio's attack, in simple words, was too terrifying. Although he tried to use his devouring power to counter it, he still couldn't block it completely. You truly are someone worthy of possessing the talent of having more mana. 
Even the best mages beyond these lands cannot block these attacks. But you were actually able to handle them. Calmadios looked at Damien before saying these words with a smile. Damien's eyes were icy. He didn't lose his breath in unnecessary words. Suddenly, his ring and staff glowed before he pressed his hand down and shouted, great devastating impact. A charged ripple of unique energy surged into the ground. Subsequently, the entire mountain forest quickly turned barren at a terrifying rate. After that, immense amounts of energy rapidly circulated beneath the ground, finally converging towards Damien's location. A pillar of lightning broke through the ground at that moment. Finally, all that mana poured over the Divine General, seemingly shattering all those demons in the sky. After that terrifying amount of mana entered, it caused Damien's body to overload because it also took part of the mana from nature. After which, he suddenly roared toward the sky. Meanwhile, there was an ancient demon's roar mixed within his roar. With this treasure, I summon. Roar. When Damien spoke these words, it was as if a seal had been released from the Divine General, causing a great wave of white mana. The white light moved forward at that moment. After that, tattoos formed on Damien's face. As the line tattoos spread throughout his body, the ground collapsed due to the pressure. At the same time, the Divine General and the Second Great Puppet Invocation, a fusion of others, appeared behind him. A white light flowed over Damien's body's surface. Then he looked fiercely at Calmadios, who was standing in the sky. After which, his body shot forward, rushing directly towards Calmadios and throwing a punch. Immediately, his two puppets also threw a punch from other directions. Faced with Damien's fearsome attack alongside his puppets, Calmadios did not back down. Instead, a demonic aura began to surround his six hands. After which, he threw a punch and faced Damien and his puppets head on. Twelve fists clashed against each other before the empty space within tens of miles behind them shook. Damien's puppets were sent flying forcefully, while Damien's body managed to hold its ground. The glow in Damien's eyes gave him a fierce appearance. After which, several punches buzzed forward and actually clashed in all directions. Damien's white mana, accompanied by the fierce aura of his puppets, collided against the demonic mana. The sound of exploding space continuously reverberated in the sky. Wild winds rose, and a terrifying hurricane formed. It turned out that their terrifying clash had flattened the entire forest and mountains. This was another terrifying confrontation that couldn't be adequately described with words. From now on, Damien's fists were covered with fresh blood, and even his flesh was torn off, exposing his bones underneath. Fortunately, he had a good healing factor. Otherwise, his bones would likely have turned to dust after that clash. However, the blood within his body was moving violently. Although he seemed confident in that head-on confrontation, he had suffered severe injuries. Damien flew back while continuing to stare intensely at Calmadios, who was having a tough battle with his puppets. At that moment, black blood was also dripping from the hands of the latter. Along with the smile on his face, he looked somewhat sinister. He probably never expected to actually be injured in the process of dealing with someone like Damien. However, these wounds were barely worth mentioning to him. What an extraordinary fellow. However, this will only increase my desire to personally kill you. Once again, a smile appeared on Calmadio's sinister face. Shortly after, he opened his mouth. Immediately, he directly swallowed the viscous sea of blood behind him. Boom. His body began to violently tremble at this moment, while viscous black objects leaked from inside his body. Finally, they slowly wrapped around his body and formed an extremely fearsome, bloody black demon armor. That mana armor covered every inch of his body. Meanwhile, sharp metallic lines extended on that armor, each emitting a terrifying, brutal sensation. When the demonic armor appeared over Calmadio's body, a terrifying wave, which couldn't be described with words, emerged. That wave of power emerged in the blink of an eye. In fact, it felt like a meteorite capable of annihilating the world had descended on this world. When Damien saw this scene, his pupils quickly shrank, and he disappeared, letting his puppets take over. Great mage, do you know what this is? 
Calmadio smiled at Damien. His smile was full of murderous intent. Damien's body tensed. Meanwhile, he was doing his best to circulate mana within his body to recover from his internal injury. Therefore, he didn't respond. This is the highest combat technique of the ancient demons. This was personally given by our emperor, the demon god. Typically, we only use this when fighting against the most powerful of the human, elven, or dwarf races. However, today I used it for you. Therefore. The smile on Calmadio's face grew increasingly brutal. Therefore, there is nothing to regret, even if you die today by my hands. Damien slowly clenched his fists which were soaked in blood. His heart, which was originally beating violently, gradually calmed down. Today's fight had given him a taste of what true combat was like. However, regardless of who the other party was, one would have to pay a huge price to kill him. Damien suddenly closed his eyes before a wild and brutal aura slowly advanced through all his limbs and a lightning armor began to envelop him. 